Morning, everybody, and welcome to our eighth ever St. Lotus Vintage Rotisserie Draft. I am Eric Levine. I am Peter Kritzberger. And today we're going to be bringing you 46 fantastic rounds of Vintage Rotisserie Draft, followed by a full round robin uh, tournament gameplay, and then, if we're lucky, some sweet playoff games, too. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to have our eight players. They're going to draft their decks, limited decks, from the entire Vintage Legal card pool, and they are really excited to get started. So let's jump into the draft right now. All right. And this is happening right after Kamagawa Neon Dynasty, so we might actually see some interesting shakeup come through uh, on Monday. There was a discussion about some of the cards that we expect to see make an impact in this draft, and you have things like the Channel Lens, yep. which I believe we're going to see come in, and then we have, uh, there's been some talk about Mecha Titan Core, yeah. <laughs> so we might see the Megazord, we might not. Yeah, to talk about Mech Titan Core, mostly from our, our first pick player here, Brandon Curry, who is well known for his, uh, let's say, off-the-wall deck building. Let's, yeah. let's call it off-the-wall. <laughs> so... Lloyd is going early, as, as we expect, and we usually like to see there's Recall to follow up and Soul Ring, which are pretty much the, I'd say, s usual culprits in the top five, along with Sapphire, and I think Jet usually rounds out five. Yeah, Jet usually goes pretty early. Mason is often a proponent of an early Jet. He loves those one-mana discard spells. Sam, though, opting for mm -hmm. Pearl here. Which is interesting. Pearl usually goes somewhere, uh, from what I've seen, between seven and eight, because that's where White is usually open. Uh, previously in the eight spot, we've seen the artifact deck, and that could be anything from stats, stacks to aggro. Yep. So you like picking up Pearl there because it offers Stoneforge, and if you want to go with that package, it goes with Heliod combo. Uh, we see Jet in eight instead. Emerald in six is kind of interesting. Yeah, Alex getting Alec getting to wheel the the Jet and Ruby. Ruby. We'll see if he actually goes Rakdos with those, or if he opts to just use one one or more of them as fast mana. Uh, and Dan true. taking the first Planeswalker of the draft in Oko Thief of Crowns. A lot of the Planeswalkers have been going a lot, creeping up much and much earlier. Yes, uh, to quote Brandon, he showed us what real power was. <laughs> was it in seven? Drafting? Yes. Oh, yes, it was in seven. He showed me what real power was in the finals <laughs> with cards like uh, with, with Nyssa from War of the Spark. So I couldn't beat Nyssa, and uh, <laughs> Brandon took that one down. Yep. Uh, Andrew taking Thoughtseize after Emerald, which kind of poses the fair deck in that seat. So green, black, X, you could extend into Jund, which we don't really see. It's usually Soul Tide because you get Hull Breacher and you get Leovold, and you can play the kind of quote-unquote wheel deck with yep. Twister. Not necessarily Wheel of Fortune, but you still get the draw sevens. Exactly. Yeah, Twister, one of the pieces of the Power Nine, still remaining on the board. Of course, Time Walk as well. Though I wouldn't be surprised to see Walk go soon here. Blyden opting for Twister, though uh, Time Walk was part of uh, Dom Harvey's very successful um, uh, Blue-Red Spells deck in one of the recent Discord drafts that we did. Okay. Uh, usually when I think of Twister going early and something like this, it would be in the Wheels deck, so we could see uh, Jeff move in on uh, Hull Breacher, uh, Notion Thief, the, uh, the the card from Neon uh, Kamigawa, sorry, Kamigawa Neon Dynasty. I have it written down because I thought this card would make a hit, and it could be here. Uh, what is it? Pat not Patchwork Automaton. Containment construct. Ah, containment construct. Um, yes, yes, yes. Uh, I think that'll come up if we search. Yeah, it let's pull that up. Notice. Um, while you're doing that, I'm, I, my guess is that we're going to see a Narset from Blyden next pick. I, based on what we've heard, if it makes it to Blyden, I would be surprised. But this is containment construct, so it, it works well with Narset. It works well with Hull Breacher, yep. Ocean Thief. Op no, not op op opposite Is it Tiny Bones? Tiny bones, yeah. Uh, so you, you basically, <laughs> with a wheel, you discard your hand. You get to play back what you discarded, but with the aforementioned cards, your opponent draws nothing. Yep. So yeah, they just get locked out, um, which is fantastic. Tinker and Time Lock going, and Brandon picking up the Hull Breacher, <laughs> seeing Jeff taking the Time Twister, probably reacting to that. I'm hearing yeah, a big uh, laugh from the other room. <laughs> <absolutely>. <laughs> Fast bond over Narset here. Okay. Ooh, now fast bond being taken away from two other noted fast bond fans in this draft. Both Sam and Alec have drafted fast bond before, so I'm sure there's some uh, some feelings here in the draft <laughs> room right now, as we can hear coming from the other room. So Mason looks to be staying pretty open, just taking generically powerful interactive cards right now. These are the cards you want to fight over. You don't yeah. want to attempt to pick them up later. 
leaving the rest of their plan kind of open-ended in flux, basically, right? And this is a new look for Mason. I haven't seen Mason lean this heavily on blue this early in the draft recently, although I also haven't seen him in this high of a seat in quite a while. Mm -hmm. So it's it's very probable that I just don't wasn't in those drafts with Mason when he did that, but yeah, it's very cool to see. It's interesting to see Mason and Cody drafting back-to-back -back and what they picked because these almost look like the start of one deck. You would be playing this base. You would yes. love this base in your blue tempo deck or your blue control, any base blue deck in, in seats two and three we're seeing here. Yeah, I, 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 my guess is that we'll see Cody take more of an artifact direction out of the Tinker. But, of course, Tinker, you don't need to be an artifact deck to take advantage of that. You just need a couple of small artifacts and something like a Blightsteel Colossus to really go over the top. Well, we were talking about this last night, actually, um, was the way some of us view Tinker in this format is that people kind of are playing it in a singular role. They still see it as... The way it finishes a vintage game, which is exactly what you said. You tinkle, tinker for Blight Steel, or you tinker for Inkwell Leviathan Sphinx of the Steel one. But what if you tinker for value? Right. What if you tinker for Helm of Obedience, or you tinker for Painter Servant or Grindstone? Yeah, you can absolutely use that to set up an, a half of a, a two part combo, mm -hmm. or just tinker for something that's going to be generically good for you. Um, we could also see Cody move into a Time Vault related direction here. Oh, absolutely. Um, that's something the Time Vault itself, still on the board, has been falling later and later in the draft order these I days. I was just going to pull that up because I thought usually uh, Time Vault went pretty early, usually in round two. So this is where we would see Time. We would have seen Time Vault last round, and it looks pretty open. So, Andrew. Like, Still kind of showing that fair deck, green, black, X. Yeah, Swifty taking uh, taking the Mason role here in this draft, mm -hmm. going with the the the, uh, the green mocks. We've got the one mana discard spells, and Dan sticking with the Planeswalker plan here, going with Te Teferi Time Raveler, yep. one of the most just obnoxious cards in Magic the Gathering. Absolutely. I'm kind of surprised that nobody's taken Karn the Great Creator mm. off the board yet, because with what we've seen thus far, but no Time Vault, it does kind of speak to the ability to control a game. Yeah, if I'm Cody here, I'm 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 very excited about the fact that nobody's picked up Time Vault or Karn yet, and mm -hmm. I'm, I'd be very excited to try to grab both of those. Alec dashing the dreams of Blyden and potentially Brandon with that, that Narset, Narset Carter Veils yeah. pick here. Uh, do you remember the name of the, the new Tezzeret? Is it the Treyer of Flesh? Uh, yeah, Tez I think it's... it's yeah. Th is it SS? Or? T -E -Z -Z. Z -Z. Uh. <laughs> Tezzeret... Betrayer of I think life. that's right. That sounds right. Hmm. Well, we'll find it. We're going to find that. Yes. We've got a Scryfall. Oh, uh, there it goes. Open. There we are. It just took we a moment. It. Okay, yeah, and that's, of course, the one that has that, that first activated ability exactly. uh, discounting, which is a really, really interesting ability. I know Stephen Hagen was very interested in giving this card a try. Which is why I wanted to bring it up, because when I when I read this card, I see the activated ability plays the combo, but the minus ability plays towards this kind of aggressive strategy that both uh, Agent of Bolas and Tezzeret the Seeker play into as well. Right. Uh, animating your artifacts effectively and letting you play through. We see Mental Misstep, which is... Yes. Mental Misstep. Somebody yeah. has to play that card. Now, that's right. a very early Mental Misstep. I, I, I don't usually recall seeing Mental Misstep go, go as early as round four recently. Um, the Polluted Delta, I'm not too surprised about. Yeah, Misstep usually falling around round nine or ten. <laughs> um, but Delta, it's it's interesting to see the, the Fetch Land run potentially starting here. Uh, Sam Sam reacting to the fe fetch land run by picking up opposition agent, which I really like. Yeah, <laughs> what I've noticed uh, in the last two drafts is that the fetch land run hasn't been as aggressive as in years past, where you will see one or two go in an early round, but the rest of the draft won't follow suit and move immediately into their land picks because it seems like the valuation of fetch lands and dual lands have gone down a little bit versus core engine. Yeah, the the the, the fetches and duels they popped way up. People started picking very reactionary way. Yeah. I personally try not to do that. I try to just value the cards how I value them. And yes. it looks like Sam and Blyden agree we may not see that uh, that fear impact this draft. Yeah, and I think based on the four cards that we've seen from both of them, they have core strategy strategies in mind, and they do not want to lose those important cards by, exactly. by straying. And it's uh, a bit of self-control. Yeah, and it, with every set... 
the pool of available, you know, dual lands gets deeper and deeper. And even if, you know, some of these lands aren't perfect, even mm -hmm. if we prefer not to have to play a pathway yep. or, or a pain land or something like that, those cards are still available at the end of the draft, and you can still pick them up to make your mana better. Yeah, absolutely. Urza, uh, High Lord Artificer coming out of Cody, which does kind of signal an artifact-based strategy. Cody's going to look towards, I guess, picking up the card, possibly the Great Creator or... Uh, the four CMC card from Dominaria. Uh, the, uh, the 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 other card, the yeah. Scion of Urza. Scion of Urza. Card Scion of Urza has really surprised me. It, it was, it's performed much better in BRD than I initially thought it would. There it is. Not the Vanguard card, please. Yeah, usually coming up around round 21, that makes sense to me. Yeah, Karn with pants. Yeah. <laughs> so, we, you know, so we see Snapcaster Mage, which just speaks to kind of blue value, so Mason's still... Staying rather open. This could be a flex into Is It because Time Walk is just a great card. It could be anything from a two mana explore to a game ending spell. Absolutely. Snapcaster Mage speaks to value, and Brendan actually valuing, showing a value on his on his mana base. Makes sense when you're when you're playing fast mon. You want to make sure that you have the lands that you're interested in. Yes. And for Brandon, it looks like what he wants to do is make sure that he can flex into basically any color mm -hmm. at this point. One of the things I'm, I'm going to be interested to see coming up with new Caperna is the finish of the Triome cycle. Yes. Because those contain some very important Triomes. Those are the Alara Triomes, the, the Shards. So that, that's Esper, Grixis, Jund, Nea, and Bant. Yep. Right? And what we're seeing from Brendan, Brendan could be playing Bant. Yeah. And that Triome would be... Right in Brendan's wheelhouse, and that's yeah, that's not something that's uh, that's not something that would be new for Brandon, right? That is that is the direction that he took, uh, winning VRD seven, right? Yes. So so he'd be he'd be well within his uh, his winning ways here, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> much to my personal chagrin. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, if, if I I do not remember the names of most of the triumphs, uh, but I think if I did, I would look up the Sultai one. Ah, uh, that is Zagoth Triome. Z a g o t h. Yes. <laughs> I have I have a, a problem where I know the names of the tribe. I think Rogrin is the Teamer one or the Jeskai the Jeskai one, and the only reason I know it is because you play it in every Jeskai list in modern. Right. Times yeah. one. <laughs> <laughs> so Zagos Trium, uh round thirty one, so we have seen it picked much later in the draft because yes, who's going to be taking these triumphs besides the people in these wedges right you need to be in that wedge you ideally want to have a fetch land that can pick up one of those types otherwise the trium is not really something that you're going to mm -hmm. be interested in and with both the pick of delta and rainforest we, we could see two players fight for possibly this trium definitely i'm very interested to see what what uh, jeff blyden is doing here picking up that sensei's divining top what do you think about that so as an ancient magic player, there's a deck name that contains an expletive from Legacy. Ah, uh, yes. An expletive that played Helm of the Hosts and an another blue enchant uh, artifact creature that I cannot remember the top of my head from Alara that made your artifacts cost one less. Oh, the Ethereum Sculptor. The Ethereum sure, Sculptor. Yeah. So you would just spin your top to the top and draw it, play it, drop it, and build Infinite Storm, and then yep. there you go. You mill somebody out. So when I see top... In a list like this, I'm thinking both you're going to get value from Urza because you're going to be able to tap it for mana, and maybe some shenanigans. Yeah, Jeff with the with the Thoracal here, probably potentially looking to find a way to use to leverage a, a discounted top, potentially draw the whole deck, and that yes, and, and win the game that way. Yes, uh, I thought when when I saw Thor, uh, Thoracal of Vampiric Tutor that we might also see Demonic Consultation. I'm also thinking about Demonic Consultation. Uh, yeah, and I think it's both too early and not good enough to say we could see something like the Adnos combo mm. or spoils of the vault come out of this deck one two other ways to basically exile your deck at instant speed in response to the thoracal trigger yeah something like a tainted pact as well may yes. be useful here but that's that's what i expect we're going to be doing we're going to try and find a way even if we have to backdoor it with sdt yes to get rid of our deck yeah I, i'm i'm very interested to see how how blyden uh leverages those cards yeah. so far. I do like this land run that we see from Prismatic yes. Vista all the way to Flooded Strand, and the only break is SDT. But Cody <laughs> made sure to get to Larian Academy. Yes, Cody Cody, very disciplined picking picking a land. And even though even though that's a land that other players might not be as interested in, right? Yeah. It, there's, I think there's a potential that, uh, barring a hate pick, Cody could have floated that Academy a bit later. Mm -hmm. So we have a, a question, actually, for you, uh, Eric, in chat. How is Indy? I wasn't in Indy, so if you heard my voice over the PA in Indy, they were playing a recording without my permission. Uh, you know you know who you heard? Uh, you heard Elliot Raff, uh, the number one Eric Levine sound-alike in the world. 
Uh, that was that was almost certainly Elliot. We sound almost identical over the PA. I love Elliot very much. I I, I have had the pleasure to work alongside Elliot. Uh, Elliot actually gave me a promo when I judged regionals. He gave it to all judges. In the oh region. yeah, yeah. Uh, and it was Elliot. Elliot has been a, a stable in our conferences in the Greater New England area. And he's a pleasure to work with. Yeah, Elliot, Elliot Raff, Level 3 Judge, just an all-around fantastic person. I've known him for many, many years. Mm-hmm. Just one of my favorite people in the Judge program. Looks like Sam's picking up Luris of the Dream Den. I love this. Our first companion of the day. Do you think it'll actually be companion or just a part of the deck? It's So, so far, right, uh, how much does Opposition Agent cost? Because that's going to answer my I think question. I believe it is three. I think Two it's three, so we may just see Luris in the main deck. Yeah, that's a three-cost card. So it looks like we'll probably see Luris in the main deck here. Mm-hmm. But uh, oh, darn, then we'll probably only get Lutri as a companion today if Mason does indeed go the blue-red spells route. Because nobody is brave enough to play Zerda in this draft. Hey, hey. <laughs> and this I, one. That's because I'm not drafted. <laughs> what, so I've been, I've been working on my own list and refining things, and the first deck I started with was Jeskai Luris. Yes. Like, how do I just play all? That's that's what I realized. You can play... You can, Tinker and transmute artifact and fabricate for value. You don't have to just go for time vault or key yeah. or blight steal, right? You can actually flex for value in combo. Exactly, yeah. That th- playing that deck was a lot of fun. I, I had a ton of fun playing. That, it is, so. yeah. It, it is very competitive as a commander deck when you have access to Zerda as your commander, not just your companion. Yes. And so the rest of the deck is just redundant search pieces, and it kind of feels like you're you're drafting VRD because you have Imperial Tutor, Retruder of the Guard. Uh, Basalt Model, Staff of Domination, all these extremely... Uh, Umbral Mantle, these extremely... Yes, uh, Umbral Mantle. Yeah. By default, you only get uh, Enlightened Tutor. Mm-hmm. In your, and you can gamble, but that's for any card. Enlightened Tutor gets your package, but when you flex into VRD, you can bring in blue or black or green yes. and get all these other interesting pieces to go along with it. And now we continue to see our land run with some duels in Underground Sea and Volcanic Island. Yeah, Elliot was the head judge of the modern 5K. That's correct. Yeah. Mason picking up Gitaxi and Probe, again, just continuing to stay open after this uh, Underground Sea Volcanic Island pickups. Cody defending a little bit of his red mana from Mason, most likely. Oh, come on, Brendan. I want to see Crucible here. Oh. There's no way we see Zorb. It's too early for No, Zorb. Brandon, Brandon will take Zorb in, in the 30s or 40s, yeah. but he's very likely to lock in Strip Mine Crucible here and just, just start attacking people's lands. Yep. Azura Orb. I will just click this link because it is convenient. I love Azura Orb. I'm always happy to see... I mean, I'm never happy to see this card because I'm rarely playing it, but it's so sweet. Yeah, you know what's going to come next. Yeah. Are there, okay, there's Karn the Great Creator. Ooh, Brandon picking up the Karn and taking that away from Cody. I like this pick. I think that's very good because Brandon, Brandon is still going to be able to pick up plenty of artifacts to leverage Karn, you know, yes. from the traditional Mycosynth Lattice and Snaring Bridge on down to some of the, the, the more esoteric hate cards that you can pick up and shove in your sideboard for later. And there's really no competition for most of those aside from Pithing Needle. Whoever yeah. picks up Urza's Saga might look for Pithing Needle or Sorcerer's Spyglass costs too, so there's really no other option there besides Needle. Yeah, I think Cody is the most likely to try to pull uh, Saga and Needle into his deck, mm-hmm. but uh, my guess is that we may see Brandon try to pick up the Urza, the Urza's Saga. Uh, plays, plays okay with Black Lotus. Oh yeah, absolutely. Imagine <laughs> that, right? <laughs> I, I am, Sam looks to... No, sorry. Andrew Swifty looks to be still staying very fair with that Sylvan Library. I, I, I would be curious to see if that's where something... Like, uh, I can Leovold goes. Yeah, we may see we may see Leovold end up in that list. Cards like that, we may see Swifty move into into the you know Helm Leyline style of two card combos. Mm-hmm. That often happens in these green black lists. The uh, Chain of Smog Wither Bloom Apprentice combo also yeah. popular there. Yeah, I, I thought he we might not see that out of uh, Swifty because we have Dothy Voidwalker in round three for Sam, mm. kind of staking claim on that position. But you can still play fair in either way. Cody picking up the Ragavan after Mason picks up Brazen Borrower. Ragavan okay. is just that good. <laughs> it absolutely. It's, the monkey has dash. Yup. And that creates treasure, which play well with Urza. Treasure's like are pretty good with Urza. <laughs> and Telerian Academy, imagine that. Ooh, geez, yeah. Cody so the, building his own uh, Storm of the Vault here. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not that uh, Telerian Academy and Ragavan are a worse version of Storm of the Vault by any means. <laughs> It's just interesting to see. I I feel like 
Tolarian Academy, as I've been watching VRD, never goes in a deck to, of note per se. And I don't mean that in a bad way, like, oh, I don't, you, that deck doesn't look interesting. It's just, it's never paired. I have yet to see a pair with something like Ragavan because usually there's a dedicated red drafter. Yes. Already. Somebody has signaled, hey, I'm staking my claim on red. Yeah. And we just have not seen that yet. We don't have that yet. And I think what that is, is because a lot of these players know that they can float those red cards until later. Okay. If they're interested in them, like, People have fallen pretty far off of the idea of mono red, at least here recently. Mm -hmm. I don't think they're right necessarily. I think there is a good mono red deck out there, and it just hasn't been drafted yeah. really yet. Um, especially with the release of cards like Lelia of the Blade Reforged and and uh, uh, VRD All Star Maddening Hex, a card that no one knows what it does. I ha <laughs> I'm pulling that up. <laughs> It's a card that makes n no sense for for one v one because it's a it's a you know AFR it is a curse card. like I thought it was. Whenever cast non creature spell, roll a d six. Hex deals that deals damage to that player equal to the result. Then attach Manning Hex to another. Okay, so it just stays on your opponent, and you just deal them between one and six for every spell they cast. Yeah, every every time they're just going to take take one and six damage. So in theory, this averages out to be more than Idolon of the Great Revel or Pyrostatic Pillar would. Yeah, would would deal to somebody. That yeah, makes every, a lot of sense. Every time you cast a non-creature spell, you take three and a half damage. Yes, and it adds up very quickly, yeah. especially in a format like VRD, where many of the decks are packed to the gills with non-creature spells. Mm -hmm. And we don't we don't even have the, the signal that somebody's going to be splashing red by taking a lightning bolt yet. Yes, like, we don't we don't have that at all. So we have some interesting picks uh, while we were talking about this this wild card that I brought up: Ponder, Bitter Blossom, some Dark Confidant, some pretty. Pretty normal stuff. Spell Pierce yes. for Dan, trying to defend whatever he's doing with his Planeswalkers. But then Alec moving in on Malevolent Hermit. That is like the Doomsday combo piece, right? That is a mill piece? So Malevolent Hermit is from uh, mid. It is the yeah the, the disturbed creature that, that starts starts its life off as Seal of Mana Leak and then disturbs yes. into a, cre uh, a spirit that makes your creatures uncounterable, your, your spells uncounterable. Okay. I cannot... Bring, uh, can I bring up the backside? I don't loads? think we can bring up the backside on this tool. Something to discuss with Mark later. Yes, okay. Uh, and then following that up with Ashiok Asher. Dreamlight Render. Okay, so this may be the beginning of that realization of Alex Mill plan. Because this is the Warplanes Walker that not only stops searches, which we have Opposition Agent in here already, and nothing else, right? Just Opposition Just Agent. Just Oppo, yeah. Yep. So we're going to halt searches, and we're going to be able to mill how many cards? 20 cards off the top with Ashiok? Yep. If Ashiok goes uncontested, they will mill 20 cards off the deck. That's that's a, you know, that's half your deck in yep. VRD. That's huge. Yep. And so we may see Alec. I, I had heard a rumor that Alec was going to go into a mill deck, and we might see cards like Tasha's Hideous Laughter mm -hmm. and, and Fraying Sanity and so forth out of Ooh, him. Those are some good cards. Yeah, there was some discussion earlier about who was going to be playing Crabs. Mm -hmm, mm hmm Brandon, a big fan of the crabs. Sam also enjoys enjoys playing Hedron Crab and so forth. So, you know. We might know. see that coming out. Could be contested. Dan yeah. moving in on the best planeswalker of all time, Jace the Mind Sculptor, Asterisk. So, I, again, something we talked about last night. Which one is better in VRD? And my response was, Oko literally beats Jace the Mind Sculptor. Yes. Every other turn, Oko beats Jace for three. Oko, Oko, I, I'm, I'm quite sure that Oko is the actual best planeswalker I, in VRD, but, but uh, Oko hasn't had a rap song written about him yet. That's so true. It's, uh... yeah, we got, we got somebody have Chapin's phone number. We can <laughs> dial that one in. Something that's interesting about uh, about Alec is there's still the ruby with no payoff yet. Yeah. So if we're looking to mill with time twister taken, this could be a wheel of fortune somewhere yeah. later on. Nobody's signaled red yet besides Volcanic and Ragavan out of Cody, and Wheel of Fortune doesn't really fit with that plan. Not so much. I, I think we're, we're very likely to see a Wheel of Fortune out of out of Alex's yeah. deck. Uh, we may also see something like Echo of Eons as well. Oh, the, the backdoor combo. Mm -hmm. So, okay, Sam is now signaling something that I thought, seeing Pearl into to Demonic Tutor, which is kind of this dead guy Al style yes. deck. This is just black-white disruption of all sorts that include things like Vindicate. 
Mm-hmm. And then you have the Stoneforge package to finish it out. Yep. So Sam can go get cards like uh, uh, Culture Complete. Yes. Uh, swords of all of all manner, Batter Skull, things like that, as well as Umazawa's Jite, which is surprisingly good in this format. Yes. Counter target instant or sorcery spell. Instant... Oh, that's right. This is just better mono leak and spell heavy formats. Yeah. If you're if you're playing against a lot of instants or sorceries, this is fantastic. Unfortunately, there is a Dan Zelinski in this draft, and Dan is going to be casting Planeswalkers, Planeswalkers, and more Planeswalkers. <laughs> So uh, Blyden may find that miscast a little bit lacking in some of his matchups. But with Spell Pierce already taken, it does kind of make sense as one of the next best options for a one mana value. Absolutely. Spell, right? Absolutely. With, with a, a misstep gone as well. But there's Lutri. Lutri for Mason, signaling his entry into the blue, world of blue-red spells most likely. Again, that was something that we saw do very well on Discord, so I'm very excited to see that in real life. Mm-hmm. Cody picking up that Mox Diamond. Just trying to leverage that Urza, more more artifact theming. That was a pick that I wasn't sure if Brandon would flex into as well. My guess is that Cody picked up Mox Diamond early to block it from, from Brandon. Brandon. Yeah. It's not like Fast Bond and Mox Diamond pair well. It's, they pair well together, but not perfectly, because you still have to discard a land with no right. crucible and way to get it back. You're kind of missing out on that. But it's an interaction you can look for later. Brandon picking up days in a late mana vault. Yeah. Ooh, I want to check that. On, I want to check on that one because that seems it's way very too late. late. Yeah. Round three. <laughs> We've almost tripled that. Yeah, one of the grand traditions of VRDs, especially live, is that something is going to get forgotten, right? Mm-hmm. Something is going to get you know oh, trampled yes. under the wheels of the train. And Mana Vault, in this case, was uh, was the victim. And Brandon Brandon snapped that up. Brandon, a very very alert today, really mm-hmm. really taking advantage of the cards that are still left on the table. With Karn falling to round seven, Mana Vault falling to round nine, Brandon Brandon is really getting some good value drafting in here. Very impressed by that. And I'm interested to see how Mason yeah. reacts here. Common opponent said, I did a bad version of this testing fringe cards in the Discord draft. So it looks like we have one of our Discord drafters. Yeah, hey, common opponent. Them. How's it going? Nice to see you. Yeah, I, I, yeah that's that's one of, our, one of our Discord stalwarts there. Uh, Griever, no, I do not believe we have Time Vault taken. So. Yeah. Time Vault is still out there. We are in round nine of the draft. Cody may pick it up soon. Uh, he's, I think, the most likely culprit. Oops. If I spell Time Vault correctly, I'd be able to tell you. It's still nope, out there. still out there. We haven't seen a key taken either. That, now, the interesting thing about a key, right, is that there's so many keys, right? Yes. Obviously, Manifold Key is the best key. Yes. But there's Voltaic Key. There's Voltaic Servant. There's, um, there's Tezzeret the Seeker. And there mm-hmm. are other options as well. But, you know, it, you don't... You don't really care about taking a key early. You can n- nobody else really cares if you take manifold manifold key, right? You can yeah. take that thirty fifth or whatever. Yeah. So that's that's not a huge issue. Um, obviously, it's something that Cody might be interested in. But picking up Lion's Eye Diamond here is very cool. I think we might see the uh, the breach deck mm, here. That ooh, yes, I think we are seeing a breach deck from Cody. You're right. The Volcanic Island makes that. We just don't have the, too clear. We've lost the Thoracle, but we still have Labman. Yep, we still have Labman. We still have four mana Jace. And we can still target our opponents with Brain Freeze. Yep. So so Cody has quite a few options here to draft a sweet uh, sweet Breach deck. Limdul's Vault as yet another tutor. Yep. Limdul's Vault again. Blyden just, just says, I don't care how, how early, how late these cards go. I am going to yep. take these cards for my plan, which... Is a valid strategy. Yeah. So Sam picking up Isochron Scepter, and I don't think anything good for his opponent is going to go under, or their opponent is going to go under that Isochron Scepter. We do not have a single piece of a removal or a single piece of interaction, but they're available. Duress is still out there. We have Swords, Path, mm-hmm. and... Uh, oh, the... Turn your creature into a vehicle as an enchantment, so we can't put that under there. Yeah, no, 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 uh, no swords to ride shares yeah. for us. But what I think we're going to see here is scepter chant. Oh, you're gonna we're gonna see arms chant under there. Okay, arms chant, silence, something silent, like yeah. that. I was I was trying to think there. You could also do uh, is it not diabol is it not diabolic intent? The is it the tempest instant. Oh, edict. edict. Yeah, yeah, diabolic edict. Yeah. You could also play uh, the the split second version of Diabolic Edict, the straight Lil- Liliana's Edict, something like oh, that. Oh yes, sudden yes, yes. edict, something yes, like that. Yeah. There's the split second one. Yep. And Andrew's stealing the scrub land out from yep. under Sam. Flusterstorm for Dan. Flusterstorm, 
definitely the best one mana counter spell left on the board. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I, you know, mis- miscast is nice, but but sometimes Flusterstorm is just incredible. It just gets the job done. Yeah, and dispel for Alec, finishing out that one man. Unless unless you're going to start playing some really weird stuff like Envelop. Oh no, there's Swan Song. My yep. mistake. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. Swan Song is kind of. I don't want to say it's an unsung hero, but it's nobody seems to remember Swan Song until it's picked. Yeah, it just goes. Without notice. Yeah, I, 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 I agree, and I've picked Swan Song many times. <laughs> <laughs> Sir Scryfall, counter spell. Yeah. <laughs> and then, oh, I have uh, it's I, I oh, my my system is is I have a, a an Excel spreadsheet, well, mm-hmm. an Excel book that is, you know, eight eight or ten sheets long of just like different archetypes oh, okay. and like Many, many, many cards for each of them in pick order. Oh, uh, my my list are, just looks like the scrawlings of a mad person. <laughs> <laughs> Has anyone ever played just like mono green with a bunch of artifact hate? We've seen we've seen lists like that. Uh, Vincent Brown drafted something like that. You know, I want to say VRD two. We had kind of a hate bears thing going on. Uh, I think he went four and three. Uh, but it's definitely it definitely a possibility. In the last draft, we had. A deck that started out looking like eight whack that eventually turned into a more green heavy build, and we saw a lot of artifact hate come from that deck with Force of Vigor, Collector, Oof, yeah, and a lot of incidentals that could be played in the main as part of the creature package to get the job done. So it wasn't mono green, but there were, it did end up being a lot of artifact hate in that deck. Uh, Wandering Winder asked if we were in the middle of a run on vaults. And sadly, <laughs> no, we are not in the midst of. It's just. For some reason, Time Vault just keeps squeaking on by, and to their point, Limdahl's Vault being picked above Time Vault is very interesting to see. Sam right. picking up Skull Clamp to go with that Bitter Blossom here. Mm-hmm. Fantastic. And, yep. And, yep, you, you were right. Demonic Consultation coming in for Blyden. Yep. So we see Solitude out of Dan, which is the Ooh, yes. the white elemental, correct? Yes, I love Solitude. And by that, I mean I hate Solitude because people play it against me yeah, and all the time. But we don't have anything to exile to it yet, correct? An- other target creature. We have no other creatures in this list. Well, Dan can. Uh, oh, Dan just needs a white, a white card. card. So sorry, Dan could pitch Teferi. Obviously not something that he would really want to do, but I'm sure we'll see plenty more white cards out of Dan coming down the line. Which I think is a decent signal for what we might see. I, I don't think we'll see ephemerate, but... No, no, but one we're... One can hope. <laughs> we're, God, I wish. I there, wish we'd see ephemerate, but I don't think Dan will have enough creatures in his list to make that happen. And there's the time vault. Okay, Cody. yep. Cody finally says, I have to take this time vault now, or someone mm-hmm. else is going to someone else is going to steal it. Yes. I have to finally do this. There yeah. we go. And I think pulling the trigger on it now is fine. Cody has established a very powerful core yes. in their plan. Yeah, that's the thing about Time Vault is that it's it's very people often want to pick it early because it's it they, they see it as this archetype defining card, but it's just it's it's a card that by itself is not powerful at all. It does it does nothing by itself until it has won you the game. Yeah. And so it's much more important to pick up these 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 core engine cards, these cards that make your deck actually work. And if you don't get time fault, so be it. You you'll find another way to win the game. Absolutely. I wanna I wanna check the errata on time vault because we are in errata number who knows for this card. And oh, I think yes. at one point the errata actually allowed you to do something every other turn. Ah uh, no, it's it's uh it's the, the, the current errata... You skip your turn instead, because at one point it had a time counter on it. Yes. Yes, it used to have counters. Yes. It used to get to kind of do something um, briefly in your in, in response to a trigger or something. No no more of that. You, you full-on skip your turn. It is a replacement effect that replaces your turn. Yes. So, <laughs> Mason taking Archmage's Charm, signaling, uh, I think, a much more heavier blue deck mm-hmm. than I thought we were going to see from this seat. Yeah, this is interesting. Um, there are not a ton of other... We, we don't have the usual five players in blue, right? Mm-hmm. We're not we're not so deep. I mean, Brandon dipping a little bit into blue. Um, Days and Hall Breacher. Um, Blyden dipping into... I guess we do have four blue drafters right up front and Dan. Mm-hmm. So actually, we do have plenty of blue drafters. So it's likely that Mason will end up picking up some of those blasts later in the game. Okay. Um, but... I mean, blue element, elemental, and hydro. Well, I, uh, or red. I would, I would guess red and pyro, pyro um, most likely, unless unless Mason intends to draft mono blue, which I, I very much doubt. We've seen that. Was it 
two VRDs ago, someone went such heavy blue, it could have been a mono blue yes. deck. And I can't remember if it was the one or the two seed. And I had a difficult time trying to figure out if they were playing like mono blue control mm -hmm. or aggro or tempo. My guess is that we'll see Mason dip into red later, but he just doesn't need to right now. I, all right, I've got to know. What is the average pick for Lightning Bolt? It's low. <laughs> yeah, round okay. 17. It's much later than now. Yeah. Brand, ooh, Brandon picking up every. Cody's got to be frustrated yeah. about that. But, uh, ah, okay. Brandon looking to go off with Walking, walking Ballista, Ballista here. Yep. Sure, sure. Yep, so we're going to do... so. With Fast Bond and Strip Mine, we know Brandon is probably going to take a Crucible effect at some point. And what are you going to do with that mana besides gain infinite, infinite life was the question. Mm. Now we have our answer. Right? Yes, so. yes we do. Yeah, Mason picking up the Cryptic, Cryptic. Command, looking to continue to defend his, his blue. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, common opponent mentioning the White March. We will probably see that out of Dan, uh, the new... the Otherworldly Light? Yes. Yep. Would that come before Prismatic... You That's think? an interesting question. I think prismatic ending is going to generally be better, just because you are you're usually spending less mana. There's uh, there's no space between other and worldly. Thank you. Um, you're you're going to be spending less mana most of the time, but uh, but March of Otherworldly Light I think does have a place here. Maybe it'll come up like Tezra. Just take a yeah, while. Yeah, it'll, it'll take a minute. Okay. There we go. There it is. Cody picking up Pentad Prism. <laughs> maybe maybe that's just because he knows Brandon is liable to take it soon if he doesn't. It's also one of those weird artifacts that does tap for a mana yeah. after you land Urza. It still maintains value. It's fantastic with Urza, and yeah. it's just generally a good card. Whoop, we've got our first whoopsie Whoa. of the draft today. No. Can't have Dispel. Alec already has already that. Has well. so, while they're so while Jeff is trying to figure out the next pick there, you look at March of Otherworldly Light, and... I think an interesting conversation that's been floating around is if you look at initially mana value one white removal spells, this kind of falls inside the top five. You have Swords and Path. In my mind, at the top, you have Prismatic Ending, which mm -hmm. again is another X spell. Yep. You have the what the turn your creature into a vehicle yep. removal spell, and you have March of Otherworldly Light as an instant. Can be better than Prismatic Ending if you don't power that up with Teferi. Yeah, it very much depends on how many colors you're playing and whether or not you have the Teferi, so on and so forth. Um, but I think I think both of them have their place. They just, they, they belong in different places yes. a lot of the time, or at least different places have them in different spots in the priority order. Yeah. You could play both in the same deck, and, and maybe Dan will in his three-color deck. We may see both cards. Yes, so Esper Sentinel coming out of Sam, which kind of still kind of speaks to this Orzhov value deck. Yeah. Savannah for Swifty, just defending that Abzan land base here. Yes. Jeff Blyden uh, uh, taking Mystical Dispute in the place of Dispel there, a good pickup. Yeah. Again, a lot of a lot of blue players. We have we have uh, six six players with with blue pips and mana costs, so uh, very likely to to find a target. Dark Confidant was taken. Okay, this is my question. It was not taken by Sam. It was taken by Swifty. Yes. I knew we saw it. I just didn't remember where. So that's kind of a, a value piece that Sam misses out on. Yeah, we're we are uh, we are getting close, getting close to our first break. We're about six rounds away from our first break. So, yep. folks, if there is somebody that you would like to see in the booth for our first interview, let us know in the chat so that we can talk about that because we we want to know who you want to talk to. Well, uh, this is just a. Typo. This is not a. Whoopsie. Yeah, this is, somebody else took it. Yeah, no, yeah. Wooded Foothills has not been taken yet. Yeah. Dan picking that up to uh, to grab to grab duels later down the line. It picks up that tropical mm -hmm. island. I'm sure we'll see some, some shock lands out of Dan. We may even see. Uh, well, nope. That triome doesn't exist yet, so we won't. We, <laughs> <laughs> we don't have that Streets of New Capetta card quite yet. Not yet. So something that's interesting when you look at Prismatic Ending versus March of World, Otherworldly Light, and this is relevant all over the place, is that with, with Prismatic Ending and Thalia on board, you can still exile the Thalia yep. by paying zero for X when you cast your spell and the yes. announcement, but for the Thalia tax, it still costs two. You just pay another color. But March of the Other of Otherworldly Light requires 
two to start for Thalia, so you're already paying one over. Yep. Now it costs another for the Thalia attack, so you're paying four, correct? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Oh my god. Alec going full self meal with the one two punch of Chase Wielder of Mysteries and the Paradigm, Paradigm Shift. Yeah. Can you pull up Paradigm Shift for us, please? Oh, uh, it costs the... two, it's from yes. Weatherlight, it's on the reserve list, and I play it in Phanax. <laughs> yep. I can tell you a lot about Paradigm Shift. Me too. I used to play it when I was younger, but the people need to know. If I put the M in here. There it is. Yeah, usually comes in. 28. 28, the one time it was ever picked. So this is a card that you're going to use. If, if you're Alec, you're going to use that to invert yes. your, your your graveyard into your library. And, and your, your library leaves forever. So if you're familiar with the, the old Inverter of Truths combo from, from old, the old days of Pioneer... Paradigm shift is uh, very. I like similar. how you say the old days of pioneers. <laughs> if that format is more than four years old, <laughs> look, it's it's con contextual, right? It's contextual. <laughs> True, we have seen a number of changes in the format by way of uh, bans and others. Yes. yes, that format's actually undergoing a little bit of a renaissance right now. In Magic Online, there's yeah. a lot of exploration going on in because Pioneer. We've seen some events pop up on Moto for it, and there are some LGSs that are finding it easier to host Pioneer than Modern, which yeah. is kind of the impetus for the format. Exactly, that, that was like the, pro the progenitor reason for. The the format was mm -hmm. just much more accessible. The one thing you noted, Inverter of Truth, this is something that we've talked a little bit about external to the production here is Paradigm Shift and Inverter of Truth do very much the same thing, mm -hmm. but the difference is one is an aggressive card, it can close out the game. Yep. So if you're stuck later on in the game and you've been milled, you yep. can invert your graveyard back in your library to give you some more time and beat down with a 6-6. Six -six. Yep. Whereas Paradigm Shift says, this is it. We are yeah. all gas, no brakes. Yeah, we. <laughs> this, there, there's no creature attached to this. Exactly. Spell. Oh my gosh! So this has been a, a heck of a round. Brainstorm, Birds of Paradise, Caller Complete, all makes sense. But then Jeff Blyden picking up Thought Lash, another another card in the in the blue. What the hell is this Re variety? Read this first line. Yeah. Oh yeah. Cute above the card. No, no, no. Above the card. Oh, oh. This card hasn't been played. Yes. <laughs> So no one, Blyden is the first person to draft Thought Lash, which is a surprise because people have talked about Thought Lash before, right? Yes. People, people want to remove their library for the game from the game with cards like Thassa's Oracle. Now, could could Jeff have, have waited to pick up Thought Lash later in a normal draft? Probably. Absolutely. But Alec just picked up Paradigm Shift, so Jeff has to pull the trigger now. Yes, yeah. Uh, so is the format four years old? Uh, it's difficult to tell because like it started at the end of a calendar year. Right. And WotC announced it. It wasn't really well supported. Star City dipped their toes in and I think swapped out Legacy for Pioneer at some of their events. Yep. And there was a Pro Tour or something akin to that. Yep. In there was uh, there was uh, the the pl Players Tour Phoenix, I believe. Yeah. Um, and then then we had a pandemic. <laughs> yes. So that that would put it at twenty eighteen. Not, yeah. Sorry, twenty nineteen. Not 2018. Okay, so it's a three-ish year old. Yeah. I think I might be conflating it with um, the player-created format that came... Oh, yeah. Frontier. Frontier, that's yes. it. So I think that's my mistake. I'm conflating it. I mean, two. part of the problem is that time isn't real, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah, well, time is a construct. The shot clock doesn't exist. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> V-Click, another great blue tempo yep. card. I think we're just going to see this heavy blue tempo deck from this seat. Almost certainly at this point. And Cody picking up Muddle the Mixture, a nice piece of tutoring to grab cards mm -hmm. like Time Vault. A very cool card that also doubles yeah. as a counterspell when you need it to. Now I'm going to bring up Lutri because it's banned in the most important format in Magic the Gathering. Yes, exactly. There it is, Lutri the Spell Chaser. And is it okay? It is hybrid. Is yes. It mana? Okay. It's hybrid blue red mana. So Mason does not need any red if if he wants to go full mono blue. That's something he can do. Which was the question I yeah. had about Lutri. Yes. Oh, uh, the bot is very good. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we have some grand plans later on for the bot. We had we, we we had a couple of production meetings ahead of time. And we want to do a little more with the with the bot, like being able to pull mox field lists yep. into chat. Now, Lutri is interesting because it's uh, of the 17 drafts it's been available and it's been picked 18 times, so that's how you know it's a very good card. <laughs> <laughs> Mark! <laughs> Help! We broke reality. <laughs> I wonder if that one of those times was before we had the really nifty logic in the spreadsheet. So mm. it was actually double-picked and nobody noticed because it came up really high and really low. I wonder, yeah. I'm, I'm, sure, it's, I'm sure it's something. There's some strange thing going yeah. on there. But it, uh, Lutri, Lutri is a card that I was initially pretty negative on. I thought it was 
uh, kind of kind of a trap. I didn't I didn't think it was very good. And then then again, Dom, Dom Harvey pro- proved us wrong by by leveraging it very well in that Discord draft with uh, blue red spells. Can I give the context on Lutri a minute? Absolutely. Bring it on, Mark. Bring it on in, Mark. So the reason that Lutri is eighteen of seventeen is because we did one draft prior to Lutri being officially legal. Right. So in oh. that draft where we were allowing it before its release date. It was drafted, which makes it which makes it the most picked of draft cards anywhere. Which is why it has a lowest score of seventy three. It's, oh, it's substantially higher than it would be with round fifteen. That is amazing. That's perfect. Thank you. I love it. Thank you, Mark. Tenth round time vault. Are we... Yeah, casual tenth round time vault. No big deal. WTF exactly. <laughs> and we're cool. The Aeon's torn. Okay. Ooh, okay. So the anti mill tech. Also, another payoff for what are you going to do with all that mana? Yeah, something somewhere to somewhere to put that mana. You gotta gotta do now. Uh, Lotus Portal, not a card. Lotus Petal, definitely <laughs> yeah. a card. Not sure what is is Lotus Portal one of those new alchemy cards? I don't really know. It's not quite coercive portal. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if tomorrow they announced an alchemy card named Lotus, Lotus Portal. Portal. Well, it's it seeks it seeks your deck for any card with Lotus in its well, name. The, the next Commander's Legend set is a, is a D and D set, right? Yep. Baldur's Gate, and I'm not familiar with Baldur's Gate, so there <laughs> is the opportunity that one of the many portals your wizard could create. And we are getting an alchemy version of the Commander Legends Baldur's Gate. So I like to, where your head is exactly, at. Exactly, <laughs> it speaks to all the points. Bree are getting picked up for Mason. Ponder, of course, gone uh, for Blyden in round seven. So I, I like Preordain better most of the I, time, personally. As a dedicated uh, ad nauseum tendrils player mm-hmm. in Legacy, it, I cast Brainstorm, Preordain, and Post Ordain. Yep. <laughs> Ponder is. From playing that deck long enough, I have learned that it is the worst of the three options. Yep. And even then, Brainstorm is overvalued by a lot of players because they take in the idea of how it's played in tempo decks in yes. a Storm, and it's not always the correct view to have when you're playing a Storm deck. You but... have to play Brainstorm quite differently yes. in that deck. As, as someone who's, who's played both of those archetypes, it's, it's a very different mindset. You know what really helps set, you can't do this anymore, set how you play Brainstorm properly? Playing an extended... Oh yeah, <laughs> right? when when somebody goes to duress you because thoughts these isn't a card yet, and you crack your right. fetch land in response to brainstorm, and you brainstorm lock yourself purposefully yes. to hide what you need. That really helps set the bar for how you need to play brainstorm. Yeah, you learn you learn a lot from those moments. Brain freeze There's picked up from Cody, so like you said, we'll probably see underworld breach. The breach. And Imperial Seal to go with Blyden's Vampiric Tutor, really just looking yep. for this two-card Thoracle combo. So we have Demonic Tutor off the board in round two. Vampiric goes in three, and that leaves Imperial Seal as the next best option yep. because we're not a Dark Petition deck. Right. No, we, we certainly... <laughs> Blyden cannot support Dark Petition yeah. here. It's just too much mana, too little spell mastery. Mm-hmm. Not going to happen. Yeah, we haven't seen Dark Ritual taken yet. That's, that's right. off the board. Something that leans into Dark Petition... Uh, this is a format that is unlike Cube, where Cabal Ritual could actually be yes. something you could play. You could leverage... There is a deck called Spanish Inquisition, where all its spells half your life, and one of them makes four mana. Yeah. I don't know the name of it. Not, is it Calling the Weak? Uh, that's the one where you sack a creature, Calling yes. the Weak. Yeah, yeah, Is yeah. that the ritual? Yeah, it's the, the sack a creature from Exodus, and you get four mana. Yeah. I'm just going off the rails now, talking about cards that we could possibly <laughs> yeah. see. Yeah, I was going to say, Calling the Week's been drafted a couple times. Yeah. Very adventurous card. Metamorph, More. Noble Hierarch, and... Ta- oh, Dan picking up the Tasha's Hideous Laughter, taking that away from Alec. Wow! That's interesting. <laughs> that is, because this is one of the decks that just kind of exists right now. You know, we don't we have one card to pitch the Solitude. Yeah. We have some great Planeswalkers, but what is our focus yet? We just we don't know. Yep. So that's really interesting to see. Uh, Andrew, with the Noble Hierarch is interesting when Ignoble Hierarch is still on the board. And yeah. Birds of Paradise before that. Yeah, it speaks to maybe a desire to play blue cards, potentially. I'm not sure what that means here. Yeah, because right now, with the Savannah and Scrubland, we have green, white, and black covered. We have right. Abzan covered, and there is no Abzan yeah. mana creature yet. Yeah, we, we, don't, we don't currently have, uh, have, have Outlast Hierarch, or whatever it mm-hmm. would be, so... 
Maybe someday. Yeah, so Noble might be the better flex to blue over Ignoble flexing into red. Potentially, potentially. Yeah. It's hard to say. Yeah. Um, it's just it's it's just a shame for, for Swift. Yeah, I, I guess it's a question of do you want more white mana? Do you want more black mana? I think that may also be the other the other question. And uh, Wandering Winder does bring up a good point. Andrew might want both, but somebody else might want Noble. That's so very likely, take... actually, Andrew, picking up the card that he thinks is going to be more contested. Of course, that's something you always have to think about in this yes. format. Yeah, if we did have the Absan high arc, both Sam and Andrew could be fighting over it mm -hmm. based on what we're seeing. Very definitely. I like this run of interesting counter spells. Yes, we have the negate into the mono leak, and we have like three different versions of mono leak, including mono leak on yes. board already. I do, oh, I, I do think that I like. Uh, I, I personally favor miscalculation over mana leak a lot of the time, mm -hmm. just because miscalc is is often enough, and being able to cycle it late is so huge. Yeah, that's the one from Urza's Hammer, right? Yep. Yeah. Exactly. It's yep. from this 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 wonderful one with uh Karn? with with confused Karn and the unhappy Talarian Academy students who that's just seen their okay. experiment blow <laughs> up here in, in, in their hands. Yeah. No, I, I agree. The cycling on miscalc, I think, is undervalued. Yeah. I, I'm a I'm a, a I have a few like deeply held VRD opinions. One of them is miscalc over mana leak, yeah. and the other one is pain lands are better than you think they are. Yeah, but the first <laughs> legacy deck I ever played there's a noble hierarch, by the way, Frank. So is. yes, that okay. might be exactly what was pointed out in chat. Um, yep. the first legacy deck I ever built for funsies is a deck now known as Mr. Toad's Wild Ride, which is the fluctuator deck. Mm, and that deck yes. is sixty cards, there is no sideboard. Right. But if you want to get techie with it, you could play something like miscalculation. Right. Because it has cycling, so it you can toss it away. It has the cycling, you can just fire it off the fluctuator. Mm -hmm. We have yep. a couple sweet questions question in the chat. Uh, death Rite Shaman too slow. Death Rite is a little more inconsistent in this format where you don't just get to pack your deck full of fetch lands. It's a little harder to leverage. It might get better over time because Watsi does keep giving us decent fetch lands that don't get duels. Prismatic yes. Vista and Fabled Passage. Fabled Passage. Yeah. Fabled Passage not, not quite as popular as Prismatic Vista. Some people yeah. think Prismatic Vista may be even the best fetch land in the format. And the next question that we have, any card with a higher average than Lotus, I think Lotus and Recall yep. might be fighting for that spot. Lotus and Ancestral Recall are the, the two perennial first pick options. Lotus score 99.6, usually picked in round one, and versus Ancestral Recall, slightly, slightly lower. lower. So so Black Lotus uh, still... Still statistically the favored first pick, mm -hmm. but I have seen more flip-flopping between Black Lotus and Ancestral Recall uh, of late. Yep. So we see Sword Supply shares uh, out of Sam. That kind of takes it from Dan as well. Yes. So that removes a white card to Exiles, although they are redundant, Swords and Solitude. Yeah, I mean, Swords, Solitude, Path. There's so many options yeah. for, for, for Dan and Sam. Mm -hmm. There's there's plenty of one mana white removal to go around. Yes. And Duress picked up for Blyden. A little bit of protection because Thought Seize is off the board. Yep. Thought Seize is off. IOK is off. Yes. And then, then we, we move into sort of the discard dead zone where uh, where people start thinking start thinking to themselves that maybe they'll pick up cards like Check for Traps. Yeah. <laughs> I, I've been trying to think of the, the card from, I think it's New Phyrexia's. It's not Geth's Verdict. I think that's an Edict. Yes. But there's a discard spell from around the time that exiles the card you choose. Then there's also like Brain Maggot, yeah. Asmeric Fiend, and we have... We can get real creative with our options There's here. Agonizing Remorse from Theros yeah. Beyond Death as well. That's a popular two. There's the Breach. Yep. All right, Cody. Cody going with the breach, so we're likely to see some more Moxen out of him. The, of uh, uh, especially, I, I would guess we'll see Mox Opal later out this of Cody. Seems, yeah, this seems like a very early pick for Underworld Breach. Uh, uh, not too early. Okay. It's not too early. I think. Uh, I think Cody looking to stake his claim. Worried about some of the wild cards in this in this draft. Uh, Brandon Curry, in particular, as I mentioned before, very good drafter, mm -hmm. has a lot of good results in this format, might pick literally any card at any time, and will beat you with it. I think that's kind of the only reason why I would take this. If I was Cody, the why I would take that Underworld Breach this quickly after staking my claim on literally every piece that matters outside Thassa's Oracle. Yes, because otherwise, this is a spot here where you can just pick up other powerful contested cards, yes. even if those are sideboard cards. Yep. This is a point where if there is a powerful sideboard card that you think, I need this and I need other people not to have it, mm -hmm. right around right around pick 14, 15 is about the time where I start to consider that. Yeah. we There's been a lot of discussion about the, the quote-unquote storm deck in VRD and yes. how it ne never really works. But it seems like the best storm deck is actually the Underworld Breach storm deck. 100%. And... It's not like you need 
if you're going to go with the thoracal combo, you build a very specific way, but there, you don't change that many cards to just play uh, a tendril style finisher. But that means that that deck can be, that strategy can be hidden in mm. later picks. Yes, yes, yes. So yes, if yes, you don't yes. take Underworld Breach early enough, like Cody did, you could lose it to somebody like Brandon who's showing something, yes. but could pick up a storm package of rituals much later on. Exactly. Yeah. There's, there's, there. That's that's the really interesting thing about this format is that there's almost always another direction you can go with the picks that you have remaining, yes. especially at this point. Um, one of the one of the sort of uh, thoughts I've had previously is sort of the idea of, I, I call it drafting upside down, where you, you take a couple of very strong picks early, and then you you spend a lot of time picking up some of those contested sideboard cards. You can do this with a deck like Mono Red, mm -hmm. where people just don't care about, or, or you know, like a red-green aggressive deck, where yep. people just don't care about your cards. You pick the cards people care about, then you pick all of the powerful sideboard cards, then you pick Which all is, of your action. Yep, and uh, in that sideboard slot, is that like usually where we see the red player take chill yes which is a power, powerful sideboard option for right. somebody else right so yeah. you just take it away you say I don't want to play against this yes and that's a that's a perfectly acceptable hate pick Mason picking up Mystic Sanctuary drifting even further toward this mono blue tempo deck but yeah and, and that speaks to the cryptic command loop so now I yep. think we are in that dedicated territory channel from Brandon which is yep. really interesting because we have Emrakul so we could just end Memory Jar because that was why not you take yup just restock the hand. Makes sense. We've got Channel Emrakul. Uh, my guess is that we'll see Brandon pick up uh, Mycosynth Lattice later. Yes. Um, can always can always channel up the the old channel the Karn, get the Mycosynth Lattice, play the Mycosynth Lattice all in one turn. That's yes. another fantastic option. So with I just wanted to make sure because I know sometimes when you set cards aside, you don't always necessarily draw. Sometimes you replace. Right. So memory jar. And Hull Breacher, which was round two pick, yep. does halt the redraw of the opponent, but the hand comes back afterwards. They do get their hand back later. That, those cards are not drawn. They're coming back from exile. But yes, you do get to block off their draws, get a bunch of treasures, treasures. and then use that treasure to cast all of your yes. new cards. <laughs> yep. So it's not like Memory Jar is just the storm, I don't want to say finisher, enabler that you would expect it to be in Vintage. And that kind of speaks to the dichotomy of the two formats, yep. I believe. Mason picking up Vents or Shapers of Mod. This is a card that I think Mason could have floated until significantly yeah. later. This is the creature Vencer, right? Yes, this is the two two blue blue from Future Sight. That's uh yeah. Mason I, I think Mason could have floated this significantly later. It has gotten a, a sort of resurgence in, in in picks recently. It is a is is a card that, that does mess with when, when, when people play cards like Channel yes. uh, and then ch want to channel out their Emercool Vencer is a fantastic answer to something like that. Um, and we don't see the Venser shenanigans that we would in other formats with Caracas. Right. Or, yeah. Now, Mason Mason could pick up a Caracas later. That's oh. certainly something he could do. Uh, did Cody steal the Wheel of Fortune from Alec, possibly? I, very potentially. And Blyden picking up the Inverter, Inverter, just laying his claim to another piece of that, that Thoracal combo. Yes. yes. And Sam picking up Leyline of the Void. My guess is that uh, with her Demonic Tutor, we may see a uh, Helm of Obedience later. On. later. Okay, so breeding pool cool. for Swifty. So Swifty is looking to dip his toe into blue for something. And we so the Leovold payoff is still on board. Yes. Ooh, that's probably it. You're right. I like that. I forgot about we. I talked about Leovold earlier. Forgot yeah. about when you mentioned blue off the noble hierarchy. Here we are. <laughs> we came. We came around. Yeah. We found it again. Time is a flat circle. Jeff and Alex decks seem cool. Sometimes it would seem more interesting to me if they weren't totally fighting each other for it. Yeah, it's interesting. We thought initially. Initially, before this draft, I, I we, we had a little intel that there might be two mill decks, mm -hmm. and now it looks like there are two self mill decks from from, and and it's not the same players that we thought it was going to be. Yes. <laughs> which is really interesting because that means there were three people thinking about it, and we just yeah. ended up here. We just we have a lot of a lot of people trying to do interesting, clever stuff. That's one of my favorite parts of VRD is watching watching our drafters try to do interesting, clever things. And the other thing is. We still don't have a primarily red drafter. Three people yeah. came into this draft thinking about Mill, and it seems like none of them came in. Nobody came in thinking about a primarily red deck. Yeah. Now, again, if somebody wants to draft red cards, they can do that in the second half of the yes. draft. They, if, 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 if your deck stinks in the, first, in the first third, you can absolutely bail and draft red from here. Yep. You can still have a totally fine red deck. It's because not the best red deck, but it'll, it'll, win, it'll win four matches. <laughs> yes, and we've also only seen Rockavon be taken. Yes. There's no Lightning Bolt, there's no Dragon Rage Channeler, none of... 
I don't want to say your usual suspects for red have been taken. No, but none. Of, yeah, none of none of the cards that you expect um, to go into a red deck, and I think that's just because they're not contested at this point in the draft. Mm-hmm. People, you don't need if you want red cards, you don't need to draft yeah. them here. Uh, Brandon in a, in another draft uh, absolutely completely backdoored into into red uh, later. Yes, there's a, there's a better Manic Vandal now. There's Plundering Barbarian as well. Oh, that's AFR. right. Because it destroys an artifact or, or makes a treasure. Or makes a treasure, yes. Plundering Barbarian, a card I've played uh, even in even in Commander. Uh, maybe it's not Plundering Barbarian. It's... it's it's. I, th- I thought it was Plundering Barbarian. I thought it was as well. Huh. I've cast this card many times in my jury deck. Maybe I just spelt it incorrectly. No, it looks right. Let's go... Yeah, let's check on Scryfall. While they, yeah, while they're botanical sanctum for Dan Zelinsky. So up oh, there, there it goes. There it goes. Uh, and we're seeing we're seeing some of these more uh, more more niche dual lands starting to pop up. Of course, the fast lands very popular mm-hmm. in this format for good reason. Yeah. Did we see the Midnight Hunt and Crimson Vow duels? Those have shown up in Discord drafts. Okay. I think. Yeah. I cannot remember a name of a single one to check. Uh, the blue black one is definitely has a name. <laughs> I can't remember the names of these lands either. Jeez. Oh my gosh, that's embarrassing. I, I should know this. I I would agree with you. This is something <laughs> I should know as well, considering the fact that I play some of them in EDH. Right. I play them in Commander. I, you know, I'm the person that people go to when they can't remember the name of the card, of a card, and and their phone is out of battery. Shipwreck Marsh, there we go. Deserted, I think, okay, I think I've played Deserted Beach. Uh, There we go. Did you mean Deserted Beach? Yes, we did. I (laughs) sure did. Yeah, I picked it one time. Fantastic. (laughs) Quench, oh, okay. So, Loose Focus. Loose Focus, of course, the the uh, multi-kicker, two-mana counterspell. Or replicate, rather. Replicate, okay. Same thing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, sort of the same sort of nut. And yes. then quench just just one copy of Loose Focus. Um, this is what I thought this is what I thought the art on Loose Focus was. Okay. Right. Now, of course, if if you want to style on people, what you're supposed to do is pick Rune Snag. Because of course you can't have more you, than you one. You can't power up Rune Snag, yeah. But it's fun. It's fun to pick Rune Snag. That's like taking Aether Burst. <laughs> yes. Or muscle burst. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Here's my... Well, I mean... It's like the Dexter's Lab meme where he's just in his locker whispering right. to a little thing. <laughs> Stun on him. Hey, I mean, uh, some 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 of them you can you can make work. Partic Firecat is a real card. Mm. Not that you should play Partic Firecat ever, but... <laughs> so we have Uru Titan of Nature's yep. Wrath once we figure out how to spell it coming out of Dan, which continues... To sp- I don't... Just continues to speak. That's a very powerful plan yeah. of good cards. Big band value. And Swifty picks up Birthing Pod. Oh my gosh. Ooh. Swifty looking to make a this? statement here before the break. By the way, folks, if you haven't let us know in chat, and I haven't really seen any, let us know who you want to talk to uh, during the break, because otherwise I'm just going to pick somebody and you're going to be at my whim. <laughs> or, or, or Peter is. Yeah. We'll pick somebody. Balance. Balance for Sam. That. Sam and Brandon, both big fans of balance. But is the format on the whole a fan of balance? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Actually. Yeah, balance is... is uh, I've I've been balanced a few times in this format. Mm-hmm. Never feels good. Yeah. This is not the deck I would expect balance in. I would have expected Dan to pick up balance. Yes. Not to pair with Solitude, but to pair with a Planeswalker plan, because balance is a templated card yep. to destroy everything from that era. Yes. Like never Lands, does. creatures, cards in your hand. What's a planeswalker? Who's a planeswalker? I'm from Alpha. Yeah. <laughs> Never Neverwill's disc just being too slow. Yes. One and four, as well as being having to untap with it. Hey, Grambler. Yeah. Well, you can t- you can talk to me. You're going to see me in a week. <laughs> <laughs> now you want to hear from Andrew? Yeah, me too. Now that he's picked a birthing pot, I think that's the idea. A lot of players often make statement picks in this round before the uh, yeah. before the break just and that, so they can get on camera. Okay, yeah. And there's Crucible, there's which we've the been Crucible. waiting on. Thoughts, All right. Thoughts scour out of Mason I find to be a little interesting as well because that just seems 
Like a value card. It's not speaking to a mill plan. I mean, it tells me that he wants to draft Merktide Regent later, mostly. Okay. I think. Um, which does not surprise me. No. But uh, at this point, I think if we are all things being equal, I think we should probably have a chat with Andrew. What do you think about that? I would agree with that. Uh, I can go fish for Andrew if yeah. you want to bamf for a moment. Sounds great. All right. So we're going to be hearing from uh, Andrew Swift, a.k.a. Swifty, in just a minute. Uh, Peter's going to step out for a moment, and I'm going to hang out with, uh, with Andrew, Andrew Swift to talk about this very interesting deck that we have here. Uh, featuring featuring an exciting birthing pod here at, in round 16. Very cool. So we're going to see what he thinks about about his deck. We're going to ask him about... We may ask him about uh, some of these dual land picks. Might ask him where he wants to go. But I think above all else, I want to know what birthing pod's job is in this list. I very badly need to know what his plan is for pod, so... We're going to find out very soon. Hey, hey! How's it going? Reptar's notebook. Come have a seat. Oh, yes, definitely give Reptar his notebook. The statement pick work. <laughs> and I'm going to get real quick just minimize this. You can't see chat. Yeah. Uh, because they might tell you secrets. Uh, I don't know what secrets right. they would know, but they might, they might tell you secrets. They might. So, how's it going? Oh, you know, having fun. Good. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I, I can tell. You just picked a birthing pod. I did. I did. Uh, you know, I figured, eh, I could probably float it, but let's make the statement pick and see what happens. I love it. So. And now I'm here. Yeah, so what's the plan? What are we doing with birthing pod? Uh, there's some value pod shenanigans. Uh, mm -hmm. Potentially get the uh, Malira combo in there. Mm -hmm. But th So the plan is to top end four, go yes. to Academy Rector. Okay. And be able to get a learn Nasrak combo in there too. Ooh, I like it. <laughs> so, <laughs> so for those not familiar, of course, we have a learn which lets you play those uh, three or less. Uh, hang on, I got to spell a Sarah Rack. Yeah, let's use let's you uh, lets you play those three three cost or less creatures from your hand at instant speed for free. And then, of course, the Sarah Rack, the the Lich from AFR, who lets you adventure over and over again, and that's just going to send you through the. Uh, the Lost Mine of Fandelver over and over again, just draining your opponent's life in the Dark Pool room. And as long as you have enough cards to survive the card draw room at the end of that dungeon, you can drain as much life as you want. So that's a great a great win condition, a, a, a really cool pickup. And uh, come on. Sarek, I know I spelled that right. I'm, I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm me, of course I spelled yeah, that right. Yeah, <laughs> I live Sorry. in Magic the Gathering. Um, but, but regardless, um, my other question, my other big question for you... Mm -hmm. Is about the blue because I see we've got the breeding pool here, right? We got the breeding pool, we got birds, and and we have the uh, the noble hierarch. Um, what is what is your plan to stretch out into blue here? So it's just uh, value cards like baleful strix at two, draw cards, ice vein quaddle, mm -hmm. um, cavern harpy is another card that works really well with uh, alern. Yep, so, very popular alern combo. So piece. like alern, alern plus cavern harpy and strix is going to draw my deck. And yep. So there's. I might want to grab it, but there's the potential I grab like Living Wish to just stick in there. So, so uh, be able to grab creatures on my board, and one of them, if I have to go that way, because you know the problem with Aserac is if you draw through too much of your deck, right. you can't kill them with Lost Mine of Fandelver. Sure. So then uh, grabbing Lab Maniac with all the craziness to be able to grab out of the board if I have to. Do the draw the deck plan. Yeah, yeah, you can pick up something like Lab Band. There's other options as well. Well, Thassa's Oracle's gone, so <laughs> Thoracle, Thoracle is gone. But so. there's, there's there's other similar things you can do. I don't want yeah. to talk too much about right. them, um, but uh, but I'm sure you know what they are. Yeah. As far as the other decks in the in the rim right now, which ones are which ones are you most concerned about? Um. Uh, <laughs> Maybe you're not scared. Maybe you have no fear. <laughs> I, just, I won't have a lot of easy interaction. That's why, like, I have to grab Thought Season Inquisition. So decks that could combo off super easily right. uh, could be a problem. Um, so if, potentially this Breach list might might be able to, to yeah, outspeed you if they breach, pick up fast mana. Yeah. Um, another one that might be annoying if Dan grabs the right sideboard card, and I forgot to grab it when I drafted Bank Control last time I was here, was Humility. Oh, yes. Humility would just screw me over. Yeah, that's a big problem for so, you. Um, Somebody could grab that or a Torpor Orb. 
potentially, but yep. humility obviously a, a stronger yeah. card. Generally. So that's why like another high pick for me is going to be New Boseju. Yes. It might be my next pick. Just it's everybody. Well, Dan's the only one in green too right now. So yeah, right now there's only the one green rafter, but of course that new that new land is very powerful. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, is it going to be on the St. Louis with since it ha- it's new? Oh, there, there we go. Is. Okay, yep. we got this one. Yeah, so of course this has been a very popular card, uh, affecting a lot of formats right now, and uh, of course VRD not immune to cards like this, uh, cards like Otawara and uh, some of the other lands of that cycle also relevant. We may even see a Ganjo today. Who knows? Yeah. If people decide to do creature combat, <laughs> <laughs> some people are doing creature combat. All right, well, anything else you want to tell us while you're here? Uh, I just want to thank my friend uh, Josh Richter. He, we were kind of talking about this because my original plan, I wanted to draft something that hadn't been done, so that's sure. why there's the Alern thing in there. Right. Uh, but I started a food chain combo, and Ooh, it felt, yes. it, when I was like putting something together, like my bud, I had a buddy who's like, oh, you should just do creatures that cycle and go through this. And I'm like, it just feels like bad birthing pod. Yeah. And then I talk to my buddy, and I'm, and I'm telling this, and he's like, well, then why don't you do birthing pod if just you do, can? Just do pod, right? Just so, do it. <laughs> so here we are. Yeah. So yeah, Josh Richter, if you're actually watching right now, which I told you to, if I, uh, this is for you, buddy. <laughs> Josh Richter, are you following instructions? <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, thanks, Swifty. Thanks, Eric. chat with you. Yeah. If you wanna if you wanna send uh, Reptar back in, we can I will like, do that. get back to it. All right. Well, it was a lot of fun as always to hear from Swifty about his his sweet deck, hear about his plans for the future. But uh, my guess is that the players are excited to get back to drafting. I know I am. I, I in in their seat. I was always very excited to get back to drafting. Let's load chat back up. Yep. A lot of action out there. Something's going on. I, I, I hear Peter. He's on his way back. All righty. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Do you want to pop out? Yeah, let me, let me pop out. All righty. So we're going to do a little bit of a commentator swap. I'm going to take a quick break, and uh, we're going to have the full Cabal cast crew in, in here with, uh, with Jason and Reptar. Yes, I... What's that? All right, so we just had our interview with Andrew, and we are swapping out. Affectionately known as Swifty. Yes, and I am Eric, which is incorrect. So that was updated incorrectly. Production out on the floor. Mm -mm -mm. Dropping the ball. Well, we got We got there. We got there. So the talk between Mark and I was obviously similar to in here that Time Vault was picked after Lendal's Vault. Yes. Uh, and I think that's because, for those of you that don't know, we do have a VRD Discord. That is correct. And yes, I am. I, I flew down to the STL for this. Yes. I was yep. supposed to come down in January, but that was the COVID draft that we did. It was, yeah. it was decided that because of factors from... The holiday season and what happened yeah. within the U.S., the, the run rampant of Omicron, that it was easier to just keep everybody where they were and to do it at home. So Mark and I did the remote thing. Yeah. Yep. Thanks, thanks, Dale. It's both of us. Yes. yes. Gross, but awesome. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I, I think it's interesting because I, as some of you may know, was supposed to draft in this one. Yes. Uh, and last second was audibled out because Blyden said he could join. Sam is actually basically on exactly the deck I was going to draft. Yes, okay. Uh, it was either that or mono red, and it is wild to me that the St. Louis meta seems to have shifted back to the straight-up, like, mono blue meta. 
Yeah. We have three, four players on blue, basically, two of which are on the same deck. Mm -hmm. um, so not great, really. Uh, I agree with what was said in chat. Those decks would be way better if Alec and Blyden were not fighting over it. But it could have been worse. We could have had three people fighting over that deck. Yeah, uh, because we did have three people on that deck. Brandon was on that deck as well. Yeah. Uh, and he just spoke to him outside. He said, I felt like I was shot off this. Yeah, well, we, we had the opportunity to talk with Brandon about this last night. And I, if I remember correctly, it, he was kind of remiss if he had to take the first slot. Yeah. You know, yeah. Brendan did not want to be the first slot and complained at the same time that he was never the first seed. So it was an interesting conversation. But we haven't seen any crabs come out yet from either of the players on the mill plan. Yeah. Uh, we might see them later. I would assume that if we were to look up, uh, what was the heater and crab, right? crab and hedron crab were the two. This was a question we had last night. I just needed to have verified. Yeah. Shelter. Target player. So you yep. can mill you yourself. Can mill you yourself yeah. can go on that. You can go on that plan. You can go aggro self mill and ruin crab is Each opponent. opponent. Yeah. So you can just play uh, crabs. Although Phyrexian Metamorph is off the board, so you can only have so many crabs now. Yeah. Uh, the interesting thing too, I think, is I think the mill's plan actually bad because there's multiple people that just win by not having cards in their library. Yes. Not great. Yeah. You know, you, you have to cite out that entire plan when Wielder of Mysteries is out. Absolutely. And we the while Andrew was in here uh, doing their interview, I was talking to some of the players, and it turns out that there were a number of decks that did actually want Paradigm Shift. Yeah. And or Jace. There were a number of people that actually planned to build their deck around Paradigm Shift, which is a card that was, in talking to Brandon, the way that they were building the deck, not... A core concept necessarily yeah. to that initial list. Yeah. Brendan was thinking more heavily, I think it was blue, black, and then eventually extended into Soul Type. Uh, and if, if they could get Oko. Yeah. They, Brendan knew they wanted Fast Bond, and so the question was do we want Oko, etc. Thanks, Popo. Appreciate that. I'm very proud of it. Yes. So. Uh, I, I do not get to see Jason more than once a week. So yeah. every time he pops into the podcast, <laughs> it is an adventure. Yes. I've. Uh, a number of people like to comment on your facial hair on our yeah. YouTube videos. Yep, it's great. And I always have to remind them how much time we spend pre-show yeah. talking about your mustache. Yep. <laughs> uh, so what, what was your favorite pick before we get started on this next one, Out of the Round? So Out of the Round, I think the pick that surprised me the most that I liked was Birthing Pod because I, in context, I have no idea what that deck wants to do right now. Out yeah. of context, I know exactly what that deck wants yeah. to do. yeah. Everything else just seems kind of par for the course. Uh, I've this, this being my fourth VRD, I don't think I've seen Birthing Pod really run back this yeah. highly or at all. Did I mean Birthing Pod? I absolutely did. Yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah, usually six around twenty three. Yep. Uh, oh, Reality Smasher out of Curry. That's the Eldrazi, right? The yeah, five the, the five CMC that uh, counter the first spell unless they discard. Yep. So that that speaks to Channel. Yeah. And fast bond. It, it, yeah. This is what Eric and I talked about is just you have you're alluding to something with fast bond and strip mine. What are you going to do? Yeah. And we saw Crucible eventually, so obviously we knew we see channel, and then we had the Emercool walking bullets to pay off. And I wonder if we're just going to see more of an aggressive shift from Brendan coming into the later rounds. You're on the run scene right now. Oh we are? Whoops. I should have swifted. Swifted. Oops. Shifted. Our bad. Uh so We've got Reality Smasher to start. My favorite pick of the first round was actually Bitter Blossom. It's one of my favorite value picks. Sure, it was taken a little high. Yep. But it's one of the things that is incredibly difficult for any deck to deal with. Yes. Like, it's it's really, really powerful. Uh, and especially with nobody being in white or green so far. I mean, I guess we kind of have Andrew in green. Yes. Uh, but and Dan showing white with Solitude. But and nothing not really. else. Yeah. Yeah. And and that was... The boggling pick to me was that Solitude left before Swords. Because Solitude shows a commitment to white, and he has not drafted any white since. Was, yeah. Not since was important. And when, when Dan picked Solitude, I made an incorrect comment saying there were no other white cards in the list, but it's not true. There's Teferi Time Raveler in the list, the third pick yeah. in that slot. And I pointed out as well that that's not a card you want to be exiling no. Solitude. So no. what exactly is the plan? Yeah, if, if you're exiling three fairy to solitude, I feel like you're already losing. I, I think, yeah, I think that's fine to say because three fairy is so important to what you're trying to do, but 
I don't know if you're attempting to take advantage of the plus on yeah. the three fairy or just the uh, just the passive. Yeah. The passive is extremely powerful in a format like this. It just turns all your opponent's decks into sorcery speed decks, and the only person who really doesn't care about that seems to be Sam. Yeah. The the Orzov based dead guy style deck yeah. is going to play a sorcery speed game because that's literally what the cards tell you to do. Yeah. Um, and that's what I expect kind of from that spot. Ah, there we go. Mason with the Crocus to go with the Venture Shapers of yeah. So uh, that was a question I posed. Are we going? Do we think we'd see Crocus yeah. shenanigans? And that's yes. the answer. Mirage Mirror. Inter okay. So there's Phyrexian Mud Morph number two. Yeah, so we're going to be copying a couple things. Mirage Mirror. Right, did I spell that correctly? Maybe. One R. One R. There we go. There are four total, but only one in the first word. Picked four times, right? Yeah. Usually, Usually around 28, much later. so a little early. So this is an important card to what Cody is attempting to do. Yeah. It becomes a copy of Target Arf. So you can make another uh, LED if you wanted to. Sam snagged Zurin Orb. Snaked it from Brendan. Yeah. Well, so Ramanop Excavator is still on the board then. Yes. Which presumably Sam does not want because no green. That's uh, what I would think. So uh, this could be a value play to go with the Bitter Blossom. There's a comma. Besage you. There we go. Finally, there besage you in spell snare. Uh, yes, Dale. In fact, this is the most Blyden deck I have ever seen Blyden put together. <laughs> it, it is absolutely. Yep. Yeah. So with besage you out of the way, I don't think we're Odawara. Odawara maybe would be the only one I would think we might see. Um, and I'm not entirely sure we will because I don't think any of these decks care about it. Oh, I would agree with that because you're just bouncing something back. I would love to get oh, verify that I spelled Odawara correctly and have it either pop an error or <laughs> yeah or show up. But let's verify. Uh, especially since you have Venser and Caracas already, mm -hmm. having those available is why would I draft Odawara with those? I can recur this effect this way. Yes. So there's no reason for me to do it another way. I did spell it correctly, so we're just waiting on it. We're just cranking. So yeah, yeah. it channels for three in a blue, and you return target artifact, creature, enchantment, or planeswalker to its owner's hand. So right now, the value on Odawara is, per your comment, rather low. It could get yeah. better as we go through the draft, so we might see it in the later rounds. But I don't think we would see any of the others. Something no. I've been thinking about is the red one makes a token or two when you channel it, which is cool. But you can activate Den of the Bugbear more than once yeah. to create more than one token. Yep. And I wonder if we, if somebody was thinking about the red channel land, if Den of the Bugbear is better in that spot. Yeah. And I'll bring up Den. Uh, also, interestingly, red is still wide open. Oh, wide open? Surprising. Yep. yep. That, I think every two or three rounds, that was something we lamented. Yeah. Yeah, basically becomes a rabble, uh, yeah. kind of rabble master. Yeah. yeah. So, it, uh, Alex deck is really interesting as well. We see a ton of counter spells, mm -hmm. and then we had the wheel pick of Jace into Paradigm Shift. So we're still not clear what we're doing. The no. Mox Ruby is the standout card. Initially, we thought this might be a wheel deck because of Narset, and then yeah. wheel was picked by Cody. Yep. Super late. Too. Yes. Yeah, in round fifteen. Yeah, Alec let that one go. If that was on the, if that one was on the board, so Alec's draft is. I don't. It's not unfocused because I just don't. Know, I can't it, say that because I don't know what Alec is doing. Yet. It it looks like muck to me. It just looks like mono blue control with a finisher that takes two turns, which seems bad. Yes, uh, I'm surprised he hasn't taken Merc Tide. That seems incredibly good in that list. Or Jace's defeat. I would oh, I not like, be surprised if Jace's defeat gets drafted. I want to bring because that one up. of. All of the blue decks. Yes, I think Jason's Defeat is a very good card for, for this deck. But your counter spell, being a Murktide Regent player is difficult because you want to be able to interact with your opponent and you want to be a tempo deck. And yeah. Alec is not showing the tempo part, but That's definitely true. showing the interaction part. Eric pointed out that the, the Thought Scour pick by Mason in round yeah. 16 might lead to Murktide region in that list. Yeah. Because it's the self-mill of two. You put the Thought Scour in the yard, that's three for the region. Yeah. And that might be a look there. I've also been surprised there's been no iter uh, EI taken. No iterations. No iterations? Yeah. That's the, that is an interesting uh, point. So we had Raghavan go to Cody, who is also in blue. So yeah. iteration could be... There. Yeah. Mason is 
still pretty wide open in terms of coloring with with the scalding tar. Yeah. Right. There's no other. There's no other color yeah. producing land besides Mystic Sanctuary in the list uh, outside of Caracas. So yeah. we could still be heading towards uh, red. So we're on the slow trip of portent. Yes, I yep. did mean portent. How did you know? Then put them back in any order. You may have that player shuffle their library, draw a card at the beginning of the next turn's upkeep. A null. Oh, so we are just going straight up mono blue control here with some kind of win condition to be found at a later date. Maybe yeah. Maybe Sphinx of Jawar Isle? Oh, boy. Yeah. I would love to see that. Yeah, because JTMS is already <laughs> off the board. We thought yeah. there might be a mill plane with Ashok, but then Tasha's went, and there was really no contesting of yeah. hard mill cards from Alex. So there's still the inverter of truth option. Alec does have well, the ability to move. Blighton has Inverter. Oh, that's right. Inverter was taken. Yes, yeah. you're right. Uh, Pact of Negation. Oh, that seems late for that. Um, yeah, I believe it is, especially when combined with the fact that both forces went in round three back yeah. to back. But I don't think anybody... Oops. Let's, let's just click the link. Nobody's in such... Oh, round 25. Okay. Yeah. So we're looking at this, right? And we're seeing that... Pact is going here. To me, Pact usually speaks to trying to win on the spot. That's a yeah. protection for your combo because it's free interaction. Yeah. So we might see more of a combo deck come out of Dan or the ability to create a big turn. Oh, Rex Age. I love that in a pod list, and I love it in an Aluren list. Yes. So right now <laughs> we just have a ton of value coming out of Andrew's list. Fracture. Fracture. Essence Fracture? No, just Fracture, which is the oh, black-white card. Oh, yeah, yeah, that yeah. card is great. Yeah, I, I, I knew it was black, it was yeah. black-white, I didn't know what it did. Artifact, Enchantment, or Planeswalker. So it misses creatures, but it gets all the other important types that, generally speak, speaking, black has a problem interacting with. Yeah, right? and especially in this meta, that's yes. probably the best piece of removal she could get. Yes, you're showing Dead Guy Al, essentially, yeah. right? So not, why not lean in and take all the really good Orzhov cards that you're going to see? I don't think... We don't really see Oath of Kea taken, right? No. Uh, and I don't think we've seen Kaya's Guile, either. Is it uh, Is it Oath of Kea or is it Kea's Oath? I think it's Kea's Oath, actually. Oops. Otherworldly Gaze from Cody. Interesting. Well, let's look up Kaya's Guile. Yeah, that card's great. It does everything you want in that deck. Yeah, for three at instant speed. Yeah. It's amazing. Yep, so we have Serum Visions, Otherworldly Gaze, and Cavern of Souls. What are we putting Cavern on? Lutri? Oh, is Un Un Lutri a wizard? It might be. We brought up the Otter before just to take a look at the spellcast. No. Nope. Elemental Otter. Elemental Otter. Okay. Is V Click a wizard? Yes. Okay, so Venser in, is um, also a wizard. Yes, uh, Brazen Barrow was in that list, right? Yeah. And Brazen yep. is a wizard. Nope, it's a rogue. It's a rogue, yeah. Okay. Uh, could you pull up Otherworldly Gaze real quick? I that's can. an interesting one. I don't know if that's ever been hit. Uh, you, you might be correct. Not Glaze. <laughs> Are we not... Co I don't want to copy pasta, but... Is this a new card? Are we waiting for... I would absolutely let you come if you brought $51 boxes of Little Debbies. In fact... I would insist on it. You know what? Oh, there it is. Uh, you know what my buy-in was going to be if I drafted? A $50 Applebee's gift card. I was told I could not use that by Mark because the prize has to be worth $50. Mm. Tough. So three cards. Put any number in your graveyard and the rest back on top with flashback. Okay. So we have... It, it's part of the breach combo, Yeah. right? You're just yeah. going to fill your graveyard. Show, Show and, and tell. tell. There we go. So now we know we're on the full on fatty. fatty I've got Emery Cole. Yep. I've got Emery. I've got, well, Emery, no, but I'll probably get Gristle Brand. Uh, and no one's taken Lattice yet. So he does still have the Karn Great Creator Lattice out. Yeah, we were pretty sure that a lot of those cards are just going to wait until later. The yeah. only one you might fight over that we could kind of come up with was Pithing Needle. Yeah, Needle would be the only one because Maybe. there are so many walkers. Yeah. Maybe uh, Bridge. Bridge, yeah, would be another one. But we're not seeing like a lot of hard aggression. No. I'm on a red deck. So Snapcaster for Ancestral is the important part of Caracas, which I don't quite understand because Snapcaster isn't legendary. 
wonder if Brandon will take more Eldrazi Titans. I think that seems likely. Uh, or even just going for colorless fatties with the show and tell as a backup. So Because there's a lot of cheap, like, no one's taken Ancient Tomb, no one's taken City, no one's taken Eldrazi Temple, Eye of Eugene. Yes. Like, there's a lot of stuff he could do, which I thought he would shift to after seeing the Reality Smasher pick. Yeah, so in, it, that's an interesting question, because in my mind, there are only two other Titans that are worthwhile. There's uh, Ulamog the Chungering Gyre. Yeah. Um, or, sorry, no, Ulamog the Chungerer. Yeah. With, Exiles to, on yes, attack. Yes, because that's very good with Channel. Yeah, and especially right. Unlimited. It's yes. incredibly and, quick clock. Um Emrakul of Mindslaver. Yeah. That would be the other one I would look yep. at, because you just take your opponent's turn and pass. Yeah, and they're not going to Caracas Mindslaver, obviously. Yeah. Like, that's just not going to happen. Uh, so we have Spellseeker taken by Mason. So Mason spells matter, which he kind of signaled by having yes. Lutri. You know. Absolutely. We just didn't know exactly what was going to be happening. It's one word. That's why the spreadsheet lit up, and that's why I'm not finding anything. And Blightsteel finally to the Tinker Player. I think that was going to happen unless Brandon took it. I yeah. don't think anybody else would be on uh, on Blightsteel, just like the, the Karn sideboard options yeah. that aren't Pithing Needle. Mm -hmm. Search the library for any instant or sorcery card with mana value 2 or less. Reveal, put into your hand. Yeah, so you're basically just tutoring your deck. I wouldn't expect Merge and Scroll. Recall, really bad. walk, get probe. Yes. I don't think you need it. Like, sure, preordain. I think Recall and Time Walk are the two you actually care about. There. Yeah, Spellseeker and Mystical Tutor are basically the cards you want in that spot. Uh, Merge and Scroll is too limiting because it only gets blue cards, and we still don't know what Mason's doing right yeah. now. Yeah, the big chud. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the... Blight, Blighton's picks, honestly, I think are going to be really interesting for the rest of the time because he he kind of has the density, and there was a conversation out there between Alec Blighton and some other people. Yep. And Alec basically said, look, I just have a two-card win condition that I can kind of luck into, right? And that's yes. one of the points you made is, yep. like, they're fine. And Blighton was like, right, but I have all this stuff yeah. to get there. I like what Blighton's doing, taking every card they possibly can that is an impulse because they're these are blue cards. Yep. <laughs> And Alec, <laughs> sorry, and Blyden is just not showing red yeah. as a tertiary color. Yeah. We're just showing black right now. Yeah. And I think those are disciplined picks. Yeah. Not. And he's getting the important, like, he's got tutors, he's got disruption, he's not getting too into the weeds on his picks. They're, yeah. they're very disciplined. These are the things I need black for. This isn't Thieves Auction, is it? God, I hope it is. I don't think it is. Oh, Thieving Skydiver, but it's not in color. Oh, yeah. Would we go for a third color? Maybe. Steal your steal your Moxin, steal your, yeah. your Mana Artifacts. Thieves Guild Enforcer. Enforcer. Okay. That's a very solid pick as well. It seems early, but... Uh, I, although that was, going into this, kind of my strategy as well, was I'm going to aggressively pick the five to six things that I'm going to compete over. Yep. And then just draft the rest whenever. Wrecked so a dead near killed him out of Andrew. Yep. So we have no enchantments to get just yet, and only Birthing Pod is a met Sylvan Library. That's okay. I okay. thought Andrew got Sylvan. There's also no uh, therapy. You have no way to sacrifice or Phyrexian Tower. Yeah. Um, I'm just I'm watching Saint Louis yeah. Crank trying to figure out what Thieves Guild Enforcer right. is. Right. Waterlogged Grove. There, there we it go. is. Each opponent mills two, as long as they have eight or more, which when we're on mill plans seems pretty good. Yes. Um, that's very solid. Oh, Fiery Islet. So we're signaling red here. Which goes with the ruby. It does, yeah. So we were curious if Alec would move more into red, and a lot of the... Not a lot of, again, this is the wheel pick that, that we talk about. I-S-L-E-T. Islet. Um, F-I-E-R-Y. Come on. So... With the wheel gone, we didn't know if the ruby was just kind of a dud in that yeah. aspect, and it just was a, a mono rock. So, so yeah, what, what he actually said when he was out there, as soon as he picked Mana Drain, of course, everyone was like, oh yeah, Mana Drain to go with your Mox Jet and your Mox Ruby. Mm -hmm. um, oh, yeah. Backdoor the Alluren. Okay. Yeah, that's true. Uh, no, but back he, he said those, with... it was literally just... I wanted to have the acceleration. Yeah. I wish I could type in the spreadsheet because it took way too long to yeah. spell fiery. Of all the words <laughs> I know how to spell in this game, I can tell you. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt. No, you're good. And then everyone was like, yeah, no, the Mox Jet is great. It helps you cast a turn one manager. Oh, never mind. Yep. So. 
And Dan what? continuing to take blue green lands. Yeah. So this is the deck that I think we expect Leobald to pop into. In yeah. Time. Oh, there's Odomara. Odomara. There it is. Oh, maybe not. Oh, no. Sign signaling a pick to see if someone else will hate draft it before it gets back around. Yeah. So, um, mentioned in the chat uh, that Rector might be for for yeah. backdoor Allurin plant, which yeah. is interesting because that's a, a deck that I'd thought about coming in. Yeah. Is of all the combo enchantments that I could play or have played in the past, food chain, Allurin, yeah, etc. Is there a way to get a learn to work reliably in this format? I know I will honestly say I forgot about Academy Rector. I was really yep. thinking about like how do I tutor for a learn? It's like I got all the black tutors and I've got Enlightened Tutor go to go get it. That seems like I I need a lot of protection. But yep. Birthing Pod into Rector, Birthing Pod out of Rector yep. puts a learn into play, and you can't interact with that yeah. as long as the other two pieces have been uh, have not been handled with. I want to say that card seems a little blasé because it's close to standard. It, okay, from test Swift of talents. Okay. This card is quash, I think. Okay. Quash for two. Oh my god, come on. Come on, man. I like Baleful Strix a lot out of Swift there. It is a huge value card. I would not expect... It pods really well. Yes, uh, what's the other one? Char I would not expect Charlotte's Agent. Yeah. Counter target instant or sorcery spell, searching control, and the rest of it is irrelevant. Okay, yeah. But you get to go through their, their library and see yeah. what they've done after sideboard, That's which true. could be useful. Ooh, Vanishing Verse I like a lot. And there we have a Cabal Therapy out of Blyden. So snagging that Snag after it. the Rector. Just kind of narrowing the ability yeah. for the, the Rector sacrifice. There's nothing else in the Rector... That's not the list of Skull Clamp, correct? Yeah, monocolor. No, I love that. Exile Target, Monocolor. Perfect. Yeah. yeah, Vanishing Verse. Wicked good. Yeah. That is, Skull Clamp is in Sam's list, correct? Yes, it yes. is. Yes, yeah. yeah. So we have right now only Pod as a way to get out of it. Yeah. Oh, and Cody signaling Painter Servants. So is someone then going to grab Grindstone out of these next four picks? One, two, maybe three, four. Maybe Brandon? Yeah. Oh, come on. Like, <laughs> look, I'm not saying you can't do it, but like... It doesn't do anything, right? Yeah, yeah. There are levels of spite involved here, and I'm not not here for that, but like, yeah. of all the cards to spite pick, I would take Helm of Obedience yeah. over... <laughs> over Grindstone. Grindstone. Yeah, yeah, because Leyline and Dothy Voidwalker are split between lists. Yeah. So a spite picking Helm of Obedience from those two... Seems like a better Seems spite. Fine. If yeah. you're going to be spiteful, that's the card you're yeah, spiteful that's, about. Yeah, that's the... All right, I shut two of you out of it. I, I just... It's knowing Brandon and Draft, I'm curious if he's going to be like, oh, I'm going to get it. And... Uh, not Maybe. Although, I, I did like the discipline of picking Hall Breacher and then seeing that the Hall Breacher wheel deck was not available Yep. and audibling out of it immediately. That was incredibly good, I thought. Yeah. Okay, a worldly tutor in the shell dock aisle. Okay, so All worldly right. tutor speaks to a creature plan, so we could put everything we have on top, right? Yeah. If we have the channel. Yeah. And it, like you can set it up with jar as well, so you have a little bit of stuff to work with there. Shell dock aisle is a little more interesting. Uh, that could be in preparation for the for the other mill plans. Yeah. Right, because we don't have a way to just draw ridiculous. Yeah. There's the grindstone, yep. so they let that go. Yeah. Keen duelist. Are... Is that? As we are talking about it in here, we can hear the players also commentating yeah. about keen duelist. It is not a rogue. I thought it was. At the beginning of your upkeep, you and target opponent each reveal the top card ah. of your library. You each lose life equal to the mana value of the card revealed by the other player. You each put the card you revealed into your hand. Oh, I can't wait to see this hit, Emrakul. I know, it's going to be great. <laughs> <laughs> Keen duelist response, worldly tutor. Yep. Getcha. Got him. Tiny bones. Okay. So yeah. that goes with the Oppo agent yep. for a little bit of control there. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I agree. Common. I would expect to see Mason hard on the red pyro plan at this point. Yeah. Uh, that's something Levine mentioned earlier. Yeah. He, Levine called blasts, and I said blue, and he said, no, you're dumb. Red. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah, yep. you got me. Yep. All right, Eternal Witness for value, Frantic Search for 
combat? What are we doing with the I, lands we untap? I, I don't know. Dan is a mystery wrapped inside an enigma right that's, now. That's kind of the, the Zelensky approach. Archive uh, trap, get you. Yep, love it. Yeah. The Zelensky approach is just yeah. a... Yeah. Just like, I'm, I'm going to have a plan that's on blue, red. Someone else is going to draft me out of that plan, and I'm going to shift to blue X instead. And it may not be good, but I'm going to cast spells and draw cards, and yep. that's what really matters. Fractured Sanity. Uh, so we, we are oh, straight on. up on the mill plan now. 14 cards. Wow, <laughs> that is a lot of mill. Yeah. That is a lot of mill. Over a fourth of your deck? Yeah, combined with Archive Trap. Yep. You're you're just done. Yep. It yeah, may not, it be, good, may not be good, but it will be blue. Yes. Exactly. Yeah, I agree, Sam. Uh, slam, sorry. Slam. Sam has my favorite deck so far. It, it is the deck that I was planning on drafting myself uh, were I to participate in this. Either yeah. that or mono red. Yeah, you mentioned a tactic strategy, which is still wide open to Sam. There's still yeah. nobody's going to be, uh, you know, snaking Thalia or yeah. uh, any of the Glow orbs. Rider, Thorn, any of that yeah. stuff, you know. Exactly. But, All the taxes pieces are wide yeah. open. Like, for me, coming from uh, like a. a when it was called type one background, I, I put stacks together with cards like literal smokestack. Yeah. Right? That's your that's your stack yep. deck. And we still might see smokestack is not a card that's really drafted, but that can go in any deck. It's not the yeah. taxes deck that needs it, or it's no. not the stacks deck even that needs it anymore. Smokestack has just kind of opened up to anybody who wants to play control that has a really decent top end and yep. can thinks they can land it before their opponent or happens yeah. to land it before their opponent, then you lock them out with stacks. Yeah. Okay, this is an interesting one. Nobody has taken Toxic Deluge. It's wide open. Okay, it goes much later than I think it would. Yeah. And without a dedicated uh, aggressive player, there's no reason to ship it up. shift yeah. it up in pick order, which the only I like. Aggressive, and I said this outside, was, you know, Sam's kind of on a creature plan. Yes. But it's way more mid-range. And, like, it, it's like your traditional junk-style list. Yes. And there's the Ice Fang Guado, because Swifty came by and asked if I draft Snowlands. I get 25 or something, right? So oh, now, so what is the policy for that? So if you if you draft a Snowland, say you draft Snow-Covered Island, yep. you get 25 of those. Yes. So an arbitrary number that doesn't matter, uh, specifically for Snowlands. Uh, and also if you draft Persistent Petitioners, you get 20. Yeah, same with if the rats and, and rats, shadow yeah, board so, apostles, yep, etc. Yeah. Okay, but the, so the policy is you still have to choose the land you want. You yes. have to dedicate a number of picks to to the lands you want specifically. Unexpectedly absent is a pick I love, uh, and especially when you have like a cheat fatty deck. It it literally just answers any problem permanent. It's yeah, awesome. target non land. That's the yeah. important part is non land. Otherwise, you're stuck with like condemn and yeah. winds of abandon from Modern Horizons. Yeah, I think that's the other one. Winds of uh, abandon. Uh, target, oh, yeah, yeah, target, target. Well, this is what I thought. I yeah. thought it was narrow, right? Target yeah. creatures. It's not. We still haven't seen prismatic ending or march of otherworldly like. Uh, we have not, so which is surprising. Unexpectedly absent. I think we just saw it went. And in an appropriate round, right? There was no nothing. Yeah, I think it was a round. Yeah, that's twenty four. Sure, sure. Few, few early. Plus or minus, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, oh, Prismari command. That is easily my favorite of the commands. It does a lot. Okay, it's prismatic ending. What is usually a a lot earlier than it? Yeah. Than where we are right now. Then it is. Okay. Then it will go. And Prismari command is primarily the one we saw in historic. That was. Yeah. The Magma Opus. Or is that mm. part of... St it doesn't matter. At some point, Historic was literally standard. Yeah. Okay. That's right. Yeah, and this this is this and Witherbloom Command, I think, are the two best commands for this format. Yeah, because Prismari Command can ramp you if you need it to. Two damage to any target generally deals with a creature. You make treasure tokens, which are always useful. And then the draw the draw two, discard two. Is yes. also, like every, every mode is useful. And yeah. like, there's no... Worst case scenario, I pay three mana to... Get a treasure token and faithless looting. That seems fine. Yeah. Okay, so before I answer the seven dwarves question, target player mills three cards, then you return a land card from graveyard to your hand, destroy target non-creature, non-land permanent with mono value two or less. So it's uh, a modified abrupt decay. Yeah. Target creature gets minus three, minus one, and target opponent loses two life, you gain two life. Yeah, that's real solid. It does for, a lot of things. For like two Golgari. mana, it's really good. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's a Golgari card. Can it offer you a good Golgari card in these trying times? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So... 
I think seven dwarves technically falls you get under. Seven. That's what I wanted to say. Yeah, I was like, you get seven. It's balloon. It's uh, it's umbrellaed. Spell stutter sprite. Yeah, because we have brazen borrower yeah. and veek. So buddy. we're just naming fairies with cavern then. That's I, awesome. I would think so. Yeah. yeah, and now we're just now I think we're just playing uh, fey uh, tempo. There, there it is. <laughs> Nissa, who shakes, shakes the world, world, who won Brandon a previous VRD, beating down your block. Yep, you can hear that she's coming. And Yavamaya. Yep, cradle of. of Okay, that seems really early for Yavamaya for somebody who isn't on a dedicated green black X fair deck. Yeah. So uh, Nissa going again in the right spot, plus or minus two, which is which is fine. Yeah. The passive is great, which is really what I think we're going to see happen. I don't think I mean if we ultimate this card at any point today, I'm I'm buying that man dinner. Yeah. But uh, I don't the fast bond combo to just drop all your forests into play and cast Emrakul that early, yeah. that's that's top tier, right? Now, that's just top tier magic content. Dropping all your fires to cast Nissa to do nothing but start making them one at a time, three threes, that's top tier memery. Yes, yeah. <laughs> so so we, the nice thing about that is that covers every level of Brandon. You know, it's literally, I can do top level memeing or I can do top level magic. That's great. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to bring up Yavimaya. So, okay, a little early. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, yes. So, there's a common opponent mentions the old Fey deck, and I believe it was an extended where it ran Riptide Lab. Yep. But yep. at that point in time, it did not have Snapcaster Mage. Correct, yeah. So, there's a number of points in time where the Fey deck existed, and so you got to think about it in two ways. One, was the general population playing it, or two, was it a... What's his face special? The one Japanese player that oh, does well yeah. with fairies, and only he can play the deck well. Yeah. And I think that player champions blue black always. Misdirection. Interesting. It's kind of like Yamwa Fotapa. He could literally paint a sandwich bag blue and white and top eight approach. Yes, yeah, yeah. With, with the ham sandwich yeah. inside, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So I think the Fey deck goes through a number of iterations. You have uh, standard into extended where it's good. Modern, it falls out because Splinter Twin was a deck, yeah. which does involve some Fey cards, but not the good ones. Yeah. And now the only person who really is able to do well with it is the one Japanese player, and they're always on blue-red. No, uh, a no, no uh, Una's Prowler or nothing like that. No Snapcaster, yeah. no Reptide Lab. Yeah. But I, I think... I'm just trying to remember because this is a dead zone of my knowledge. I wasn't playing Magic at the time. Um... Because I just didn't like those standard sets, so I had nothing for extended. And I think it was not necessarily a Fey deck. I think it was just a Wizards deck that yeah. ran Riptide Lab. Because Snapcaster, I mean, uh, it's a Wizard, right? Yeah. So you had the Venser, and you had other odds and ends like that. Fel uh, Spell Stutter Sprite is a Wizard. And I think V-Click might be a Wizard. So I, it's like, yeah, technically, that's Spell Seeker, not Spell Stutter Sprite. Oh, yeah. Go me. Um, so it's like, yes, technically it was a Fairy deck by way of being, they're all Wizards. Yeah. And I think that's actually kind of why people call fairy decks fairy decks now. And yeah, another, yep, both another of them are wizards, wizard. right? So it's like, yeah, it's a fairy deck, but only two of the cards have fairy type in front of it. The rest of them all have wizards. Yeah. Right? And it has bitter blossom, which makes fairies. Yeah. And uh, Ray, just to your point, with the person picking lure should have picked Lotus Petal. The only thing like I see from the list right now, because obviously, you know, coming from modern, you expect like Mishra's Bobble, some type of abusable card advantage engine. The only thing I see is literally just I'm going to recur my Esper Sentinel after you kill it, my Skull Clamp after you kill it, my Bitter Blossom after you kill it, and just do it that way. Yeah. So there we finally have one of the keys, which you and I were and Brandon were talking about last night. You only need one key for that list, mm -hmm. and I think a Manifold key is the correct one. Yes, because it's, it's Rogue's Passage. Right? Yeah, you just it, it makes your Blight Steel unblockable. Yep, the uh, Tinker Blight Steel is definitely a combo. But it's not necessarily game winning on the spot. Tinker, Blightsteel, Colossus, and Manifold Key, however, is yes, a game winning. Yes, are very, very good together. Yeah. Oh, days, days. not this late. Days for days. Come on. Yeah. So, uh, somebody brought up the Thieving Skydiver in chat just to, to ping the bot. And that is a card that we brought up earlier. Just yeah. for what we thought Sam was going to pick up in that spot, possibly uh, floating into blue. Yeah. But um, if the question if it's if is if it's a wizard. I don't think so. I believe it is a merfolk rogue. Yep. Oh, because it's yep. two things. One, I know the merfolk just because I have like a weird encyclopedic knowledge of the good ones. <laughs> yeah. And two, it steals stuff, which yeah. at this point in time makes it a is, rogue. It's a rogue, yep. yeah. Oh, the Budweiser's are flowing. It's it's a bad time. Oh, it's heavy o'clock? Yeah, it's heavy o'clock. The, the St. Louis, 
St. Louis's choice is now pouring in the room. <laughs> I like we didn't mention the Demir signet coming from yeah. Jeff in the previous round, and like honestly, it's interesting. That's just a misspell. Okay, yeah, like, J- JVP. I like a lot in that list. There's so much so much value to flashback yeah. in this list to just re 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 go. Yeah, you know, because um, this is the Thoracle list, right? Yep. If we were talk we were talking about this a lot. You have two cards that matter, Thoracle and the card that wins you the game. Yeah. Because if you counter the card that wins the game, then Thoracle is just a 2-2 that scribes some amount, right? Yeah. So you need to go again. And JVP allows you to go again with the card that wins the game, be it yeah. Demonic Consultation, whatever. Hey, Thaya Heretic Cathar. There we are. I actually... Oh, and there's the Phyrexian Tower finally as well from Andrew. Yep. I actually like Heretic Cathar and VRD. A little bit more than Guardian, simply because of the non-basics coming in tapped, mm-hmm. because of how highly valued fetch lands are in this format. Yes. It's a huge tempo difference. Yeah, and that, uh, I think that's why Opposition Agent is really good, too. I think yeah. they both play along the same axis, which is the yeah. fetch land axis. Yep. Absolutely, yeah. Once, Once upon, upon a time... time I... Okay. Interesting? Yep. Again, we have no dudes except for Oro. Yeah, you're is... just getting lands. I want to see how many times this has been picked. That's why I put this in yeah, here. Yeah. I played it before it was banned. I can yeah. tell you that much. So it was do... great. Yes, it is great. It's still yeah. great. It is not never not great. I want Andrew to take Veteran Explorer. Yeah. With Phyrexian Tower awesome. and Birthing Pod. Get it in that list and kill it quickly. There's no Cabal Therapy and there's no Skull Clamp, right? So you can only yeah. accrue minimal value yeah. with your options. But come on. You got a, a lot of things you can be doing. Oh, sanity grinding. This is not just a card, but what Alex is doing to us with this list. Yeah, it is. Uh, and yeah, you're right, Common. There's not a lot of toe stepping outside of the two, potentially three players that were on mill. Yeah. Sphinx's tutelage. Yeah, in the fighting game community, we would call that footsies, and nobody's yes. really doing that. Nobody's really like chipping yeah. in. We have the top 10 cards unit. We're not jockeying for, for position. They're, yeah. they're pretty much staying in their, in their lane, despite the fact that they're in similar lanes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and, you know, my problem with Dude. the mill strategy is right now, especially, no so e. we have Ley Lines gone. Yep. Void Walker's gone. Yep. So you have Planar Void. That's your only other out. Mm. The one, the Enchant World from Urza Saga that's Ley Line of the Void. Yeah. Uh, other Ley than Ley that, Ley literally, you can't mill Brandon out because he has Emrakul. Yes. You can't mill out a green player because they have Gaia's Blessing. Like, mm-hmm. there's all these things that to me, make Mill a bad strategy, especially in this meta, not to mention if Blyden just lands on turn three a lab man, what are you going to do? Mill him out? Yeah. No. Of course not. Yeah, this is something we were talking about last night, which is like the Mill plan is cute, but the Exile plan is way way better. better. But to generate infinite mana like that, you're looking at a different setup. Like, Brandon could could have technically done it if Brandon had taken the Zurin Orb because you can just, you know, cycle it back, right? Yeah. And then you just... Uh, Una, Queen of the Fae, somebody's library away. Yeah. Right? Along the same plans, you can um, Kamado, Master Yamabushi, somebody's face off. Yeah. Just burn them right the heck out yeah. of the game. There is a lot of options, but that's like, that's not a mill plan or a burn plan. That's an infinite mana plan, and so you're looking at something different. Oath, Oath of, of Nis. Well, yeah, we have, we have yeah. all these beautiful planeswalkers. We yeah. need some way to cast them reliably besides yeah. finding all our lands. And it, that's, Diabolic Intent. There's yeah. another outlet for yeah. Backdoor Lauren. So uh, Oath of Nissa, I think, just speaks to the idea that we're going to see more planeswalkers from yeah. Dan's list. Zag creatures, here's your library for a card, put a card in your hand, then shelf your library. Yeah, nice little tutor. Yeah. We know we're on a creature plan. We have a bunch of them. Yeah. The Sax Rector. It does. Right? We were. I was waiting for another outlet for a Rector, and that seems what we just got, like a couple of them. Sam with the Urborg, there we go. Yep, that makes sense. Yeah. There are some other people that are towing into blue, but Sam, sorry, into black, but Sam is really reliant on the black portion yeah. of their deck. And so Urborg makes sense. Well, I, I think especially drafting aggressively those black cards, yep. like Opposition Agent, Delphi Voidwalker, getting that stuff early... And then, okay, these are the mono black stuff that may be fought over. I can yep. move into your fracture, your vanishing oh. burst, your tiny bones. You know what this does? And then have also, that stuff open. This is kind of like, this isn't tangential, it's just on the side. By taking Urborg now, Sam cuts somebody off from taking Hex Mage, Dark Depths, and Thespian Stage as a quick combo. Now yeah. you have to go with Dark Depths and Thespian Stage and slow yep. it down. Yep. So it does cut that avenue out. Something Sam could still pick up yeah, if, yeah. if they want it, but Absolutely. it does remove that as an option. Yeah. Um, I also like Urborg from Sam taking it this late, which I, I 
this can't be the right place for this card. It has to go exactly. That is exactly in this the right way. place. All right. So I would expect this to come out of the storm deck or the reanimated yeah. deck, some place where like yep. you have to rely on black, but you also need blue and or red to go with it. This seems really late for Grim Monolith. Maybe I'm just completely mistaken. I don't think you're mistaken. I just think it waffles up and down, so this might be recency bias, where we see people comboing with it. Nope, yeah, you're right. round six. Okay. No, I didn't mean Urborg. What? It... <laughs> yes, I meant Grim Monolith, the card I'm looking at. Yeah. Okay. Wow, that is very late. Especially, you know, we don't have a Metal Worker either. No, I just think this is a value play. Yeah. We want to we wanna be able to drop our Urza as quickly as possible in this deck yeah. and just start getting to work. This is the, And there's Pentad Prism. That was a round 11 pick, right? So, yep. you, you know, you can't pump Colorless into that. It just doesn't work. But by getting Urza out, you can at least put, set a Pentad, Pentad Prism to one based on yeah. Grim Monolith. Also, tapping Monolith to Urza means you can still... Oh, no, you can't untap. That's just a dedicated text. It's not a yeah. trigger, right? They didn't change this. It's, no, not a, it's, it's not a trigger attached to the tap ability. It is not. Correct. Nope, that's not the one we want. I want... Oh, God. So what do we have? Mishra's Factory and Flooded, Flooded Grove. Grove. Flooded and Grove is the filter land, right? Yes, the green-blue filter. The factory pick is interesting because I wonder if he's signaling that he may be going towards a standstill strategy because you can still swing in with ninjutsu yes. with your flyers and get value that way. And There's Muta Vault. The okay. Yep. I was curious okay. why not Muta Vault. It was because it was coming on the wheel. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. All right. I've got to bring up Dovin Hand because I love people went Dovin crazy Hand. over over this pick by Brendan in the last game. Yeah. Or the last VRD. That's so good. So it's just attacks. Yeah. Prevent all damage. It would be a dealt to and dealt by target permit. So that's uh, one of the key ours has that ability. Yep. One of the rare, not the uncommon yeah. one. So it really is just the taxing effect. Yeah. I wonder if Brendan will pick up Thalia. Maybe. Although it seems like he's no. shifting into blue-green now with more of, like, a value-oriented package. Yeah, oh, if, like, I think you have to. Like, you, yeah. like, you can't go the control route because that's contested by three other players. Well, The cantrips are gone. Yes, that's and, the big one. Yeah. And the tutors are gone. And the tutors are gone. Uh, paradoxical, wow, I really like the way Cody's list is shaping up. Okay, so this is something I've just mused about internally is how... And if you can get paradoxical outcome to work in this format, because from a vintage standpoint, it works because you have access to everything all the time, right? You have yeah. all the mocks and available to yeah. you, all all the mana, uh, crypt and vault, slow yeah. et cetera, right? So you just pick up, pick up all, all 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 your pieces and put them back down and draw your cards. Yeah. So how do you get that to work? And it's with Urza. Yep. Urza kind of makes this tick. It might be a little slow though. Yeah, I think that's fine though. I, you know, I. This seems like a slower meta. Yeah. Uh, the, you don't have any speed combos here, except for the occasional and there's shift into a wielder or something like and that. And there's you know? still no aggressive list. Yeah. So you have all the time in the world to do yep. this. But with Brain Freeze, right? So paradoxical outcome is usually a means to an end, where yep. you're building Storm, and eventually you're going to Storm off. So we, we do have a Storm finish. We have Brain Freeze. To your point, it yep. is a little dangerous because you have Brandon with the Eldrazi yep. Titans, whether or not we see another storm finish in something like Grave Shot, or yeah. we we, uh, we make some drills, I do not know. Okay, that's going to be interesting. We'll get there in a moment. Yeah. But with the Underworld Breach combo already in hand, is Paradox will go outcome a, a handbrake 180, or is it another part of a value plan where you're really going to use it as a big draw spell? Because yeah. to your point, the cantrips are gone. Yeah. And I think that's really important to, yeah. to know when you look at this list. Oh, Okay, so Unearth and Reanimate out of Blighton, I think, are important. Reanimate, we saw Hate picked in the last draft. Yes. Uh, Unearth is important because it gets Thoracle, Labman, and JVP. I want to give a shout-out to Sam for picking Una's Blackguard, which I picked on the cast like a year ago. Self-plug, shamelessly. Uh, I That card has never been picked before. There's no way. I wonder if... This goes into Sam's plan. Is it a rogue? It is a rogue. It is a rogue. So yeah. it goes with okay. the yep. uh, Thieves Guild Enforcer. Yep. I was curious to know where that card was going to go. Yeah. Because it either is just going to be a small mill plan with Thieves Guild Enforcer, or Sam decided to signal rogues, and here we are. Yep. Here we are. Yeah. The 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 reanimate is such an interesting card. I don't the letter A, please, because we're also Sesame Street. That's what 
Okay, reanimate round 14. So this is a late reanimate, yeah. but we don't have a dedicated reanimate no, reanimator player, okay? So this, I think, is just a backup on Earth. I think yeah. Unearth is your yeah, main card, like you pointed is. out, yeah. and reanimate is a backup on Earth, and also another value card, because you yeah. can just snake... An Eter- imagine snaking an Eternal Witness. And you're yeah, just chaining, exactly. Right? You, you can do that. And that's actually a good point, Common, is that Thoughtcast exists for Cody's deck. Oh, as yes. a one-mana cantrip. Pretty yes. decent. Yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah, and, you know, being in red, also you have access to Faithless Looting, if you want to go that route. Uh, cathartic Reunion's cathartic another reunion's one. Cathartic Reunion's another one. There, there's decent options there. And there's a Shark Typhoon. Typhoon! What? Okay, so we went with Shark Typhoon after Sphinx's Tutelage instead of the Teferi card from N21 that is Sphinx's Tutelage number two. Yeah. And that is kind of interesting to me. Because if you're going to be on the mill plan, why not take a redundant piece? But I guess yeah. at the same time, both those pieces, while they're mill, should go much later. I think it's M21. Is it, is I also M21? don't think they're, like, he's not fighting over that piece of the mill plan, right? Like, it doesn't seem like... Teferi's Ageless Insight, I think this is the card. That's if they would draw, except the first one, draw two cards. Okay, so it's not exactly Sphinx's tutelage. That yeah. that mills. This one just helps push the draw engine a bit. Yeah. I think there's a, a, a dupe. I could have sworn there was another one that was just Sphinx's tutelage. That's what I thought as well. I thought yeah. it was this card. It might still be. Teferi's tutelage. Teferi's tutelage. Yep. Draw, yep. loot, win at ETBs, and it doubles mill, I believe. I really just wanted to type Teferi's toot with two O's. Ah, oh, come on, predictive search. Ah, uh, yeah, whenever you draw a card, each opponent mills two cards. Yes, so it is, it is literally Sphinx's tutelage yep. number two. So I'm just kind of curious if this is... Acerac. Ooh. That is the uh, Alluring combo piece. Yep, it is. I'm. It's My... interesting to see it go so early, but I also think that's something that... Oh, it goes right after Alluring. You well, picked yeah. Alluring in the previous round, which yeah. we skipped over because we were talking about Una's black guard. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah, Al- Aloran and Asarak is good. Uh, I don't know... I don't think you have to draft the dungeons. I believe they just exist. They are extra cards in packs. They are tokens. Yeah. So I imagine... they Like, literally yeah, on the back sp- of dungeons are Specifically for VRD, token. I think they do just exist. Like, they're in every game. I, I would assume that, yeah. too, because, like I said, again, when you open them in a pack, yeah. on the other side is a creature token. Yeah. It would be like saying you have to... Draft the add card in the pack if you want. <laughs> yeah. Like, yes, they just exist. Okay. Oh, yeah, we do need to scroll the sheet down. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, we got it, we got it. There we go. So Containment Priest there is a really solid pick after Reanimate. I think with Sneak and Show, eh, we'll see. Shadow oh, Shadow. I love that pick. We're going in an interesting direction right now. Yeah, that's what I thought, Winder, was it just exists in all games. Uh, I like Shadow Mage a lot here because it gives them a backup plan, you know? Yeah. You know what's interesting about the dungeons, and you might not actually know about it until you start reading to the rule set. Sorry, I just want to line this up a little bit better so we can see what's going on in the previous rounds. The dungeons actually exist in the command zone. Yeah. And that bothers me to no end. <laughs> I think, is it... Is, I can't remember who was the... the head of... Like, what was it, Rules Enforcement or whatever at WotC at the time is Elliot Shifflin. There's the Seeker, finally. Yep, Tezzer the Seeker to go with the everything else in the yeah. Artifact deck. Uh, it was a judge conference, and I, I was talking to, to this person. And the judge promo show and tell and sneak attack had just come out. So this is probably 2016-ish. Yeah. And... At this point in time, Planeswalker emblem, emblems are just how you end games. So it might yeah. be like original Theros with Elspeth Sun's Champ, right? Yeah. And I just asked, like, are we going to be able to remove Planeswalker emblems from the game? Like, there's no way to interact with them. Is there any plan for that? And the response was, because they go in the command zone, we do not, and we do not want players meddling with the command zone, we have no plans to remove to allow players to remove a planeswalker yeah. emblem, and then they print Aloro, which works from the command zone, and they start yeah. letting yeah. cards work from work the command, from the zone. command zone. Like, zone. Yeah, I get it. That's different than reaching into the, into yeah. the command zone and meddling with what goes in there. But it's like this weird safe space in the yeah. game. Aether Vial out of Mason definitely to me signals even more. We're going with the standstill plan here. I didn't even think about standstill. I thought Sam might actually pick up Vial. I yeah. thought that deck would want Yeah, that. that's, I expected Sam to kind of get it, so I'm a little surprised. Gemstone Mine, okay, after Crop Rot. 
See, I expect... So with Crop Rot, I'd expect Brendan to take Thespian Stage and Dark Death. Yeah, exactly. That's where I see that going. Yeah. Gemstone... My, is that the pregame effect? No, is that's that Gemstone Caverns. Caverns. Okay. Mine has three counters. Yeah. I, I play one of them because it's good. The other one has pregame effects, and I don't care. Yeah. Uh, so what are we considering in Dan's deck? I, he just... I think it's just Uro. I think it's just Uro at this point. Really? Yeah, because that's all only... he has besides walkers. Yeah, because I, I got to figure out why it's better than opt in this list, and yeah. I, I think you're right. Uh, inter interestingly enough, Cody seems to be on two plans because he does have the breach storm engine. Yes, but he also has the tinker blight steel artifact plan. Yes, I wonder if he's planning on like a transformative board. That would be interesting to see. Because Vault isn't in that deck, right? Yes, Vault is... Somewhere else. Yeah, Vault is there. Vault, Vault is in the deck. Okay, so... Yeah, so he's got Vault. That just plays out. Spell Queller, he's a swell speller. There it is. This is the, this is the view I wanted. Right for yeah. the break. Okay, so this is a spirit. But it's not a wizard, I don't think. No, it's just, nope, a, spirit. just yep. a street spirit. Yep. Man, Cavern of Souls is such a weird look in this deck. I get the uncounterability part of it, sure. But, like, why not play Unclaimed Territory or one of the lands yeah. you see in the, in the 5C Human deck that just actually works for creatures? Yeah. No, Unclaimed Territory requires a pick. Oh, yeah, that's true, yeah. There, there, there's one or two of them that just, like, make mana only for creatures. Only time appearance to Lich King. Of course you know that, Dale. So, <laughs> that's some D&D &D knowledge. Yeah, that is. Yeah, the first non-Bolt. I feel like that's late for Bolt. It is. Ish. Yeah. Lightning Bolt go went later than I expected when we looked this up earlier. 17. Okay. Yep. Wow. To me, this is a flagship card for a red deck, but the more you think about it, it's just like you don't need it for a red aggressive deck. Like it's no. cool, but it, and if you're gonna play Darcy, absolutely. Like Dragon's yeah, Channel. Absolutely. And but then you got Which keep, nobody's picked. Not yet. And uh, honestly, at this point, unless somebody really rips that handbrake at 30. Yeah. Or 31. I don't think we're going to see it. Yeah. Okay, so here's Entomb. So I, I think what Jeff is doing here is he's kind of going on the mill resiliency plan because he sees a dedicated mill deck. Yep. I need, if you mill it, I need to be able to get it back somehow or yes. put it into the graveyard. If I remember correctly, Entomb is actually a lot more interesting than people think it is. It's yep. any card. It's any card. Yep. Right? That's the important part. Yep. And sure, we look at Unearth and Reanimate, we're like, yeah, cool. Like Creatures. But yeah. you can put Loam in the graveyard. You exactly. can put Eldrazi in the graveyard at instant speed and shuffle them You up. can put Passive Flames in the graveyard. You sure can. Flash yep. that thing back. Yep. Oh, yeah. It's a weird tutor that people don't expect because they just see it in Reanimate. And they're like, yep. oh, it just gets creatures. Like, yeah. It's like that little robot from Rick and Morty. What is my job? It gets creatures. But yeah. this actually has other utility. You could put Eben Praetor into the graveyard, which is the best art in the history of magic. Is that the one, like, the the, the rabbit thing in the pulpit? Yeah. yeah. It's, like, marrying two other weird things? Yeah. That's a card that I've always wanted to own just for the art. Yeah. Like, yeah, what? That, yeah. That's the dumbest... What is going on? <laughs> and that's the original art. Yep. Thalia, Guardian, Thraven. So there we go, yeah. We have the two-drop Thalia. What's the other it's shadow of something from uh, Mirage? But there's like Shadow Panther and two other cards that you can sacrifice to go get Shadow. Spirit of the Night. Spirit of the Night. That's it. Yeah, an old pick from the cast. This is also a card I wanted to own just for the art. Yeah, like look at I the think hard so. I think there's a, a Nautilus for, in one of the eyes. Yeah. Yep. Like what is going Ooh, on? Coco. Coco. I approve. Every creature gets there. Yeah. Thus far, everything and everything approves value in some way, shape, or form. And then what you don't want goes on the bottom, which can be a little damning. But this kind of speaks to the fact that, like I said, you don't. I don't think you want Charlotte's agent in this deck. Yeah, no. And I think Collected Company kind of. You know what I think this deck does want though. Siege Rhino. You can't cast that off a lure, and it's three or less. Yeah, but Siege Rhino. Look, I'm not. I'm not <laughs> saying you're wrong. We talked. We lamented about how there's no abs and hierarch. Yeah, I know. If if there was, man, we'd be in business. First pick. <laughs> yeah, for every time. P1, I'm just P1. going rhinos all day. P1, P1 for you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah Cord is another one that could potentially go in that deck. Yep. And we, we see that a lot in the green combo list. When Mason had that, like, green value combo list, Cord was one of the best cards in his deck. Doesn't 
A rector is rector a four drop? Am I thinking? Uh, about rector this? is a four drop. Okay, yes. I thought it was yeah. a three drop. That's why I said rector. Okay. Yeah. I thought Rector's it was two four. and a white. Nope. Okay. All right, that was my mistake. Yeah. So you can't get it off Coco either. Yeah. But you certainly could court it up. Yeah. Okay, so looking at the Aluren deck, there's still a lot of avenue that's open. There's, this is the cool part about having played Rector for like, geez, man, it's almost like two decades now. Yeah. Is this card. Pattern of Rebirth nope. can go in there. You got, yeah, Wirewood. Ah. Savage, yep. Wirewood Savage, right? So this is something that not a lot of people think about because this went in the deck yeah. for like a hot minute, but yeah. this was like the attack, right? Yeah. Whenever a beast enters the battlefield, you may draw a card. Yep, with Cavern Heartbeat. Did I that mean was, Cavern Heartbeat? That was yes. your... Yep. Because this is a beast. Yeah. Literally and figuratively. Yep. This card does so, so much. Yeah. Now, there is there is some value to accrue here, right? So I've been looking at this deck for Legacy recently, mm -hmm. and a lot of the pieces that accrue value are in here that you can protect yeah. and or go... You can go infinite with Uro from your hand with the Cavern Harpy and gain infinite life because yep. you gate the Cavern Harpy with its activated ability yeah. in response to the Uro trigger to replay to recast Cavern Harpy to use its gating ability to bring... to put the Uro back in back your hand. Back in your hand. And right? then, yeah, yeah, and you just keep casting it through the... Uh, Unfortunately, through the Dan grabbed the Uro. Yeah. But... Uh, I, the interesting thing about Aluren is it is a two-sided effect. Yes. And um, not a lot of opponents remember that. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the, uh, from the FNM promo. Yeah. Ac actually, if you have a moment to talk Aluren, that's one of Blyden's favorite decks in Legacy. So he yeah. loves that it is. List. It has fallen out of favor with North American players, but it is still yep. represented by Japanese players, yep. who were also the players that masterfully, now masterfully piloted that deck through the extended season. Yeah. It was great. Oh, Ink Moth Nexus from Dan. We're getting inky. What is going on with Solitude and the Ink Moth Nexus? Yeah, I... I Are we going to see a hammer? I hope Bonk. so. If, if we can get a hammer and a cigar to Zade, I'm in. Okay. Uh, I, I I can't talk about Dan's deck because I've got no idea what's going on at this yeah, point. Yeah, it, it's kind of... The Patch of Negation still says I'm a combo deck, but what are you comboing with? Yeah, nothing. All right. Steam Vents. Makes sense. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Okay, surgical extraction. Interesting. Okay. What do you? Oh, uh, surgical oh. in response to the trigger. Yeah, exactly. That's yep. what I thought. So you, this is another instance of go again. Yeah. You got it. You you hold the surgical. I would place. Uh, I mean, I know it costs zero in comparison to, uh, the one from. Cranial. Pla no, planar chaos in a split second. Oh yeah, extra paid. Extra paid. Yep. I would almost think about extra paid at some point yep. in this draft. Yeah. In that spot, it's like if I want to get For rid sure. of if I want to get rid of Brendan Zeldrazi, who doesn't necessarily have a lot of blue interaction. Yeah. The possibility of it. There's days and some other odds and ends. Yeah. Are still available. Then extra paid might be a very late pick for me, just in case. Turbo impact mitigation lose the Steal game. Steal the booze, well. <laughs> That I is mean, a, that's that is a plan. That is a line of play you can take. Yeah, you that, absolutely. That is can, absolutely a line of play. You can definitely Zoidberg your way out yeah. of this place. Whoop, 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 whoop. Exactly. Uh, what are we gonna do? What are we going to do with this Ink Moth Nexus? Yeah, that's that's the thing I'm curious about. It's such a Dan. Tell me something. Tell me something, Dan. Tell me something. Is he just looking for wind conditions behind Planeswalkers at this point? I mean. I guess you can animate. That no, is such it a loses long all, game plan. It loses all abilities with Oko, so you can't yes. animate, make it a three three, and infect for three. That is correct. You yeah. can't. You can't animate it. You can animate it. Put a hammer on it and animate yeah. it again to give it flying. Right. That yeah. that is a that is a legal line of play. Yes, Jew. No Urza Saga yet. Nope. Not even from the maybe artifact, maybe Underworld Breach deck. And I think that's kind of why we're not seeing yeah. Saga. Is we saw Painter of Grindstone go, but it's like. A light dedication to that combo. Okay, we're we're all aboard the infect plan now. Lighted agent. Okay, okay. Yeah. So that still doesn't really speak to pack that well because your one yeah, like your one big turn is when you cast become immense. Yeah. Or berserk. berserk yeah. With invigorate. Yeah. Right. Which so I, could I very much come later. Spell snare, miscalc, fluster, spell pierce. So we have the infect counter suite that yeah. really. Mana efficient, and I guess we're just going, you know, untested talents. Yes. To get dig. 
Okay, maybe he was just on Infect Walkers all along, and he just pulled the wool over our eyes. Yeah, it could have been defensive yeah. picks made yeah. for Solitude. Yeah. For J, not JTMS, because that's a value engine. Go but Tasha. Fisher's Seer is real good in that list. That's another way to sacrifice the Rector. Yep. yep. So now we're now we're actually kind of seeing a birthing pod package yeah. come together. Probably. Oh, there's no way we go infinite. That just takes too... Yeah. For either life or damage, it just takes too many pieces. Yeah. And in a, in a mill meta like this, I would never want to have to rely on uh, pulling back from my graveyard. Yeah. You could play you could play any number of regrowth effects you want, but with, like, with one deck that's looking to chunk you for like 20 cards in a turn, there's yeah. no way. It doesn't feel good. Yeah. Uh, but Gaia's Blessing, like you said, does kind of insulate against that. Yeah. I think that's really good. Yeah, no Saga, no Ancient Tomb, or no Mopal yet. Mopal yeah. is one that is really surprising. Right. Kea, Ghost, Geist Hunter is the three CMC Kea that exiles one... I said CMC instead of Mana Value. Look at me go. Yeah, it is CMC. Gain Death Touch and up to one target creature. Okay, oh, this so this, this synergizes with Una's Black Card then. Because creatures with plus one, plus one, when they deal damage, opponent discards. Okay. So you're just stripping resources yeah, all it, over the place. Yeah, also, although I guess you can't because uh, Bitter Blossom makes on upkeep. Yep. Um, so can't use that. Ashiok, not near Reaver out of Blyden. That makes sense. Yeah, it speaks to the, yeah. the mill plan that we were looking yep. at. Yeah. Yeah. So I okay. So I mentioned not going the, the infinite combo route with Birthing Pod, but you know Dan, who's drafting next to you, is on the infect plan. Do you just take Malira or... I, yeah, just you just take Malira. Yeah. Again. Or, oh, Fury from Cody. All right. All right so we're going to see more red cards, finally. Yep. Okay, so we have Malira, and is it Anointed Procession? Is that the one that says you can't get counters, or is that the... S no, Anointed Procession no. doubles tokens. It's Vizier of Remedies, Yeah, right? Vizier of Remedies. Which also means we could have a Devoted Druid combo yep. if Andrew decides to insulate against Infect. Yeah. This becomes backdoor. Now, Walking Ballista, the usual end goal... For the, for the Devoted Druid combo has already been taken yeah. by Brandon. That was a much earlier pick. So we're not going to see that. But there's still other opportunities yeah. to do something with all your mana. Uh, Solemnity. Yes, that's the one I yeah, was thinking Solemnity of. Solemnity is you can't. That was, uh, the, that was the enchantment I was thinking of. Yeah. And then as we were talking about it, this year popped in. Yeah. Hey, Hagen. Good to see you. I hope everything's going well with the move. Sorry you couldn't be here today. Uh, Sensor. Yeah, I, I think backdooring into some kind of devoted druid, vizier, I mean, literally just like crackling or some big fatty that you can get, which I also wouldn't be surprised if we see, was it Swift? What's the EDH one that makes devoted druid a vehicle that was in the Swift vehicle? reconfiguration. Yes, yeah, Swift reconfiguration. Yeah, Hagen, uh, Brandon won the die roll to choose his spot first. And then got first pick and immediately was like, wait, the list that I was working on, which is Blyden and Alex list. That's been saved. There we go. Depths. Yep. Or other way around. Yeah. Uh, so three people were on the mill plan, basically. And Brandon has audibled into a green, blue lands value stack, yep. it seems like. Yep. So here's Swift reconfiguration. Yep. Finally came up. Yep. Yeah, so that also goes with the Devoted, devoted Druid, yeah. like you said. The only issue with this is that we have Collected Company, and if you want to oops into something, Devoted Druid and Vizier is fine too. But again, yeah. this goes back to the spell density thing, right? Or rather, uh, the redundancy, copy density yeah. redundancy issue, yeah. Oh, Dismember Which from member? Mason. Dismember. There. Yes, it is a Brandon pile for sure. Chain of Vapor, I love that card. Uh, oh, we're Big Stormin' with Chain. You just... Yeah. Target your own stuff and sack your lands. Yep. Who needs lands to win? Grief. Good grief. Grief out of Blyden. Okay, so... Snagging that from Sam. We're missing Endurance and... Yep. S uh, the blue uh, one. Subtlety. Subtlety. Yeah. I don't think we'll see Subtlety. It just doesn't We will seem definitely see an Endurance. Yeah. Since we're on a mill plan. Well, beyond that, we see somebody with Unearth, Reanimate, and Tomb. Yeah. You know. Court of Ambition. Is that, is that the blue one? No, that's the black one, I think. It is? Yep. All right. Come on, Ark. At the beginning of your upkeep, each opponent loses three life unless they discard a card. Okay, so again, we're just putting the squeeze on people. Yep, yep. It's in There's Malira. Okay. Yep. Yeah, so I'm curious. I mean, the nice part about a Birthing Pod deck is that it basically is a bunch of one-ofs outside of your, uh, your mono rocks, right? Yep. And so 
being a draft format, this is a one of format and burning pots, right? Obviously, yeah. four of. So we got to figure out how to get there. It's an enchantment, so we can't rector for it. And arena rector gets planeswalker, so we got to figure out exactly how we want to do that. Yeah. And players question elf, so we're going to continue on. So I'm going to scroll yeah. up on the list for a second just to see what Andrew has in regards to tutors. The answer is nothing. Yeah. Andrew has no tutors. He has birthing pod. Birthing pod. No. But there are there is some value there in the Dark Confidant. So yeah. we might be able to draw into it a little yeah. faster. Uh, especially of note is that the worldly tutor was taken by Brandon. Yes. Which we now see was an extra tutor for your Dark Depths, your Thespian stage. Ooh, Alec with the red pyro wheel. Okay. That's that is really There's good. the Berserk. Yep. So we still need to invigorate. Yep. Uh, so let me ask a question. How do wishes work in this format? Uh, you get from your drafted cards that you did not use. Okay, so they still work properly. Yeah. All right, cool. So I'm just going to put Living Wish on the screen. Yeah. Because we could tuck our Dark Depths in the sideboard. We could Thespian State. So we yep. could Crap Rotate for our Thespian Stage and Living Wish for yep. our Dark Depths or any other creatures we leave in the yeah. sideboard. Right? Yeah. Ooh, Murderous Red Cap. One of my favorite birthing pod cards. We are we are moving in on the combo. Yep. Okay. So Rankle. Rankle, Master of Pranks. Now this is a card that has three modes, four modes, three yeah. modes. You can choose any number of these. Each player discards, which leads in, leans into the squeeze. Each player loses a life and draws a card, which I would assume we see because we have enough control that we can take care of the one extra card, yeah. but we want the advantage at the end of the day. And each player sacks a creature, which I imagine we're not going to see. But again, this is a rogue. Yeah. So it leads leans into Thieves Guild. Yep. So thieves and guild. each player yeah. sacks a creature. That is a super late him. Yeah. The the sack of creature is also super flavorful with Bitter Blossom. Scroll to the top pick. Yes. So I can peek and go back down to one. Yep. Here we are. This is the top of the list. There you go, Mr. Hagen. So we got Lotus Recall, Soul Ring, Sapphire. Time Vault didn't go till round 10, which is still wild. Yes. Uh, Limdell's Vault picked above it. Yep, Limdell's Vault picked above it. Time Walk didn't go till the second to last pick of round two. So he didn't get through the Power Nine until almost the end of round two, uh, which is pretty wild. Yeah. We're still waiting on a pick from Cody. So once that pops in, I'll, I'll scroll us back down. Yeah. I'll keep it up here for the moment. I don't know, like, we have a lot of good rogues left in the game. I just don't know how many more we want to lean into. Yeah. We're not straying too far, but we have to start picking up equipment because we have Stone Forge. Yeah. We just have Cauldron Complete. We have Cauldron Complete, but we need, like, even Sword of Body and Mind or Fire. I think Fire and Ice might be the best sword in this meta. Pro Blue, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, seems really solid. Feast and Famine is also going to be, yeah, be a good one. Feast and Famine look. is really good here, too. Yeah, imagine if they had made the Gruul and Demir Swords. Those Oof. are the last two we are yeah. waiting for. Fact. That would be that would be the sword in this list. It doesn't matter what it does, but in this VRD, yeah. I would go for a blue black sword over yeah. any of the other ones. Aaron Mesa, Mesa. There we go. Scroll down so you guys can see these picks. Just before the break. Yep. It's just another red fetch because the other ones are gone. So you take yeah. the, the last one left or one of the last ones. So now we know Andrew's definitely on the the birthing pod plan. We yep. could see Kitchen Finks. It's not terribly aggressive, so we might not lean into it, but it is another yep. way to go infinite. It is. Riptide Lab. There yep, we go. There's the lab. Yep. So we, we just have a lot of... Love I mean, there's, there's, two, there's two tribal decks here. Yeah. Which is awesome. I, I don't think we've ever seen like a dedicated tribal strategy. Nope. Mason had the, you know, like we were talking about last night, it was kind of an elves list, but it was like green value. Yes. That had elves in it yep. rather than a dedicated... Elves list. And yeah. Now we have a dedicated rogue list, dedicated wizard list. Yes. And we, we, we talked a little bit about, as well, uh, what what else we could also see. And we, we yeah. talked about merfolk because it's basically all lords and then a lot of value creatures and yeah. possibly goblins. Yeah. There's another yeah. one. So as we head into this break, is there anyone in particular chat would like us to bring in that isn't Andrew? Because we already brought Andrew in. I kind... I have I have two I would like to talk to. Okay. Brandon and Blyden, one of those two. Okay, I'll go get Brandon. Would, would be who I would say. I'll go get Brandon because we knew what Brandon was going to be doing. Yeah. So I think this is going to be a good time to bring, yeah. bring them in. All right. All right, so for those of you that don't know, basically what happened was last night uh, we found out that Brandon was on the same list that Alec was on, which is that blue mill. Uh, then we found out today 
Blyden was also planning on being on that plan. So we literally had three people on the same list that have now audibled into different lists. Uh, we have one person that has kind of stayed true to, all right, we are, this, this is our plan. This is where we're at. Uh, I now have Brandon joining me. What's up, everybody? Bard. Oh. There we go. What's up, everybody? Uh, so, question for you. Yeah. Obviously, we audibled. Uh, you had to. Yeah. Because uh, <laughs> I think... Two people on your plan? Uh, two and a half people on my plan. I yeah. think what ended up happening is that something like 17 cards that I had on my list, of, like I really thought wouldn't be too much of a stretch. Like, yeah. I might get this one there, might get blah, blah, blah. Uh, we're gone by round six. Yeah. Or seven. It was... Uh, was a little bit unfortunate given the plan that I had, but we <laughs> shall see. I mean, like, I think, um, like, it's definitely thrown me for a loop a little bit uh, trying to, like, scramble and figure out something else. I What I have is much better than I'm giving it credit for. Like, I can just... It, it bl is... Black Lotus and do any number of things on turn yeah. one. Um, you know, I can just, like, channel into Emrakul. I can channel into... Uh, Karn, a Michael large Lattice. Melissa, yeah. Uh, yeah, so um, I'm not actually concerned, but it's not like the tight package yeah. that I thought uh, I might be able to get, but that's okay, because it's VRD, baby. Uh, yeah, and it, funny story, Hagen came into the chat, yeah. and he was like, looking. we had to scroll up and look at the picks, and he goes, I mentioned that three people were on your plan, and then he said, oh, that looks like a Brandon pile. Like, he audibled halfway through. That's exactly <laughs> and, uh, what happened, yeah, Steven. That, that's Thank exactly. You. Uh, but you you did pick your MVP from your championship. I did. I picked uh, I picked up Nyssa in yeah. Jake's World. Like, the one thing I feel bad about is for you, the viewers. Okay? Here, let me put my headset on. <sighs> because I'm drafting a lot of cards that I have already drafted and played with before. I, I promise you that I have something a little spicy uh, lined up because if I didn't, then who would I be? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I've, you know, I've drafted Nissa and Yabi May a lot. I've drafted, uh, you know, Dovin. fast, fast bond, yep. strip mine, crucible combo. Yeah. Uh, like if you look at all my planeswalkers, I had all three of them. Yeah. The previous one. Yeah. Uh, but I, I think functionally it'll play in a very drastically different way. Yeah. So, um, do not I, be terribly concerned. I, I was also curious with the Reality Smasher pick. Uh, was that just, I want an aggressive dude that I can just channel into on turn one and yeah. not, like, feel bad? Like, it, it's an extra option on top of Emrakul, basically. Uh, yeah, it, I mean, Memory Jar serves a different purpose as a five-drop colorless yeah. thing. Um, but if I can get two things like that, yeah. uh, like... I, I, getting to that threshold where it's not like another mana vault just like yeah. continuing to ramp me in a way that's like not productive. Uh, Reality Smasher is a four or three turn clock depending on what I'm going up against. If I get Memory Jar and I whiff, at least I still have a five five that's like hard to deal with. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. But I, I I think a lot of what I have picked is just by the numbers going to have to get cut. Yeah. Uh, but... You know, the Mystical Tutor is there. There's a lot of, like, redundancy for yeah. that plan. So we've got the Mystical Tutor, the Worldly Tutor, and uh, the Crop Rotation. And those yeah. three are going to be doing a lot of my turn one work. Yeah. Uh, I I haven't played this before, so I don't know exactly uh, what the numbers are going to look like. But I think it gives me a pretty dang good chance of, like, at the very least getting an Emrakul yeah. out on turn two. Uh, uh, so... That, that's really solid. I I was curious, Sheldock, was oh. that mill insurance? Uh, no. I, I mean, because I can worldly tutor to put Emrakul on top of my library and then either throw just Sheldock throw, out. throw yeah. Sheldock out and get Emrakul, yeah. or I can crop rotation into it. Yeah, that's fair. So, okay. I mean, it's not... Yeah. It, it's it, a little it's bit an extra way, it's, it's an extra way to cheat it on top of show and tell. Yeah. Um, which... I think is a solid choice. Yeah, I, I don't even know if I'm going to end up running show and tell necessarily. Yeah, I think it's it might just be a sideboard card or at the at the very least yeah. like a sideboard out. But 
Um, you know, I don't want to. I don't want to let uh, Cody get his own blight steel into play or anything like that. Yeah, that's fair. Actually, that's the, probably the least of my worries. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, yeah. And and I liked the the depths thespian stage wheel, especially once you're on the crop rot plan. Yeah, um, it, with it, cradle, with strip mine, with fast bond, you have all these ways. You know, it, and to to that effect, how mad were you when Sam got Zurin orb? <laughs> I'm I I don't think I'm allowed to be mad in the oh. traditional sense because this is the first like tournament kind of thing yeah. she's ever played in. That's fair. Uh, and like you know she has balance. Like that's a it's a good thing. Yeah. And like yeah. in my opinion, I'm like you know if you're gonna do balance with it, then like maybe you have like more stuff going on. Yeah. Whatever. Uh, but like that's it's fair for her to draft yeah. that. Um, it's, that was a total bummer because that had, without the, without the life gain effect, Fast bond gets, and channel can be rough. Well, so what I'm going to have to do, I think, is draft, um, City of Traders because okay. it, you know, if I'm trying to get to 30 mana, uh, for Dark Depths as a way to, you know, kind of cheat that in, yeah. then I can, uh, I can do that with yeah city yeah sack it fast bond right. it back yeah 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 ramp that that's a solid one wait that doesn't does that work oh was I thinking what's the one so where you, you sacrifice you it for city two? yeah uh, but I'd have to play something else you play a land yeah city goes away you put it back in tap and get two out of it right uh anyway there's I could yeah. do I could do like crystal vein I'm sure yeah. there, there's other ones yeah that there, I'll, there's I'll be able other to stuff think you of could do yeah uh but. Um, I'm. I'll, I will tell the chat now. Uh, I'm calling this deck Soft Shell Crab, and so at some point I will pull the trigger, and I will get <laughs> Ruin Crab and Hedron Crab and uh, Oboro Palace in the Clouds, and uh, that is that is uh, yeah. a Miller deck I win yeah. uh, situation if I have Fast Bond out. So yeah. uh, that was originally the plan, but uh, it's it's still going to work here. Yeah, that's that's the yeah. plan. All right, well, I will yep. let you get back to the next round. Appreciate it. Uh, we will take a brief break, guys, and we will have myself and probably Levine Ooh. in on this next round. All we right. will be right back, folks. Have fun, everybody out there watching. Yep. I'll do you proud.
All righty, and we are back. That's not Peter. That's Mr. Eric Levine, <laughs> the Raging Levine. We'll take care of it. Me. We'll fix it in post. Yeah. And there we go. Probably, yeah. theoretically. There we are. All right, so we're back from our yes. break. And uh, a lot of interesting stuff happened in that last pack while I was uh, out of the out of the booth. Yeah, that was wild. Uh, I, I so Brandon came in for the interview, mm-hmm, of and course. he said basically I was forced to audible out of this because there were two and a half people on my list, uh, and I kind of went, all right, uh, what's what's some stuff I can get, and went where he was comfortable, which is of course. Nissa, who shakes the world, <laughs> who you have a relationship with, of uh. course, after last week, uh, and then went for the Dark Depths package and, yeah. you know, asked how he felt about the Zurin Orb, and he was like, I mean, it would have been great, sure, but eh, not the worst. Yeah, I don't think Zurin Orb is, is that big of a, yeah. a hit to what Brandon is trying to do. I, I understand the, the balance Zurin Orb plan that Sam is trying to go for yeah. here. I think that's very cool. Uh, so what was your favorite pick so far out of both of these first two packs? So I think that my favorite pick out of the, the first pack was probably Cody waiting until, what was it, round 10 to take time fall. That was absurd. That was I thought that was incredible drafting from him because he I, it, it seems like he understands, and other people are starting to understand this as well, that... You don't need to take Time Vault in the first three rounds. You take no. all the other cards that other people are excited to fight fight about, and then Time Vault is just a good win condition. Yeah. There are other good win conditions, and it's okay if you don't get Time Vault, but if you do, you can really warp your deck around it, and that's great, and that's what yeah. Cody's done. As far as the second pack, um, one of the picks that I was... Real, I mean, obviously, I was very excited when Swifty moved in on the alert yeah. right? when, that, when <laughs> yeah. that time came, but I thought Diabolic Intent was a very clever pickup. I allows agree. him to sacrifice the Academy Rector. Yep. And go get another piece of the combo. You know he can he can pick up a Lurin and a Sererak all at the same exactly. time. Exactly. Yeah. It it does literally everything that he wants. Yeah. I uh, as I said, I, Bitter Blossom was my favorite pick of Pack One. Mm-hmm. I think that is one of the best value picks in the entire format. Yes. May have been picked super early. Whatever. It's also there's not a lot of people in white. No. Nope. There's not a lot of green out there. Yes. And because of that, it's an incredibly powerful pick. We still don't have Force of Vigor off the board. Yeah. That'll come. That'll come at some point at the end of the draft. Though yeah. that'll come around in the late thirties, early forties. Lotus yeah. Cobra for Brandon. I like that. With the fast like bond, of course. Lot. Yeah, naturally. Um, I I was surprised. You know, we're, we've prone the last few drafts. We've been prone to seeing the land run. Yes. People were much more disciplined this time. They they picked the lands they needed, but they didn't like. Oh, I need to grab my fetches right now. And you saw five straight picks of fetches. There was yeah, there was only a little bit of that. I think around round four or five, yeah. there was there was the first. I think the delta got picked, and then there yep. were a couple of picks of no lands. Then there were about five lands, but then we yeah. stopped. Right? Yeah. There and wasn't that. Was, there wasn't was, that fear. Yeah. And I mean, I we haven't seen a whole lot of shock lands taken, which typically in prior drafts, this was about the time we'd see that. Right. We saw Hallowed two. Fountain, I think, and yeah. and Breeding Pool, and, and that's about it. Steam vents, but it wasn't boom, 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 right. boom, like it has been in the past. And I don't know if that's, you know, we're getting more disciplined in our drafting as we're doing more of these, or if it's just a lot of these decks. I mean, we have, what, two or three mono blue-ish decks uh, we have a three-color deck that really just has vile, right, and doesn't really care about the mana as much. Yeah, and I think especially in this meta, uh, oh, I like Stoic Rebuttal. Oh, that's a nice pickup. Hit the wrong button. There we go. There we go. Yep. Yeah, Stoic is incredibly good. Fun fact: uh, the Portuguese version of this card <laughs> just says Metalcraft. Yep. It, it doesn't. doesn't say Counter Target Spell. <laughs> it just says Metalcraft. It does it's awesome. nothing. <laughs> now, I, 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 I'm sure Counter Spell has already gone. Right? We've already yeah. had Counter Spell go, yeah. or we wouldn't be seeing Stoic Rebuttal here. Sure. Yeah. That's good. Um, okay, that's, so now we're getting a filter run. Yep. Sunken runs, Fetid Heat. That's interesting. I'm so. I'm a big pain land person. Yeah, I, I like pain lands, especially as I was mentioning to Peter. In this meta, mm-hmm. there's no aggressive deck. Yeah, your life is so much more of a resource in this meta than in any other meta we've had. And that's why Ancient Tomb not being on the board still is insane. It's indefensible, yeah. frankly. <laughs> yeah, I it, it is wild to me to see that. Right, and with with Dan moving into the Infect plan. 
that's yeah. even more of a thing where where we have another another deck that just does not care about your life total no. alongside Cody doesn't care about your life total. We've got plenty of other decks that that yeah. only care nominally. Brandon Brandon cares if you're at zero or not. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, but he he also has Emrakul. So if you just can't play the game, yeah. All right, I guess I'm just gonna like scoop them up. Let's go to the next one and have fun with this. So I'm not here twiddling my thumbs. Yeah, it doesn't doesn't matter if you're at two or twenty two. Yeah, it's irrelevant. Uh, I also, now that we're on Alec, really liked the Reb Pyroblast wheel. Yes. And I hesitate to think that people, because this is a discussion in the Discord all the time, mm-hmm. is how powerful is the wheel? Should we have the wheel pick still? Right. And I, you know, those cards went incredibly late for this metagame. And it is wild to me that they were able to wheel the way they should, because that's not... What I would think would happen. Yeah. Okay, so that's Teferi's tutelage number two. Yeah, it's another another copy of that uh, that particular Spitz's effect, tutelage, just yeah. just milling you over and over again, doing doing chip damage, as it were, picking up a Ponjify here. I like that a lot. And yeah, common, you're right. He took a Metalcraft card that is a Mox. The thing is, nobody else is taking Mopal at this point. Scale up. Yep. Love that card. Scale of fantastic pickup for Dan. Yeah. One of the one of the infect cards you really hate to see because you, somebody slaps a scale up on their creature, then then they hit you with the invigorate. That's that's yeah. plus ten plus ten. You're, you're, that's a ten power creature. You're yeah. dead. It's gone. Uh, it's it's interesting that he is so light on removal, uh, especially you know obviously Swifty only has birthing pot is his tutor mm-hmm. so he's not super worried about malira but not having that seems very strange. renegade rallyer i like a lot in this list yes it's a fantastic pickup here really just just making some of these pod chains more valuable yeah allowing andrew to just just go off a little bit judge is familiar for sam oh that's exciting yeah i love that wanted to get in on the counter magic uh that's a good way to do it yeah, I think you know putting putting this uh, what amounts to spike tail hatchling right on the yeah. board here. And there's Deluge finally mm-hmm. uh, from the one person that I think actually benefits from it the most. That's because, been a lot of Jeff's draft though. He's yeah. like, finally this card is off the board. Oh wait, only Jeff cares about it. Yes, yeah, only <laughs> Jeff cares about this card. Okay, then I guess that's that's how it works. Yeah, I mean he's he's cornered them. He's 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 made his little niche here. He's yeah. got his his combo deck right, and he's going to play his combo yep. deck, and you're not going to stop him. No. Uh, inter- Cody's deck is a little fascinating to me, um, because he's half breach, half artifacts. Yeah, and I'm not sure like artifacts can work being a little diluted. Yes. Breach cannot work not, being diluted. Not in the least. So the Cascade Bluffs, and there finally is the standstill pick for yep. Mason. Uh, Absolutely. Mason picking up cards like Mishra's Factory, Mutavault, leading us to yeah. all to believe we're going to see the standstill later. I, I can't wait to see if he gets any ninjas to go Ooh. with the spell stutter sprites. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so the, the picks like Cascade Bluffs and stuff are a little interesting to me because he has like Fury and Lightning Bolt and then Underworld Breach. So right. are you actually going all in on the Underworld Breach plan then? That seems like, oh, there it is. So uh, Brandon let us in on the interview that his spice is Hedron Crab, Ruin Crab, Oboro, Fast Bond. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So just full on mill you, mill full, you out. Full on mill you out with Fast Bond, <laughs> which is one of the most Brandon piles, to use the words of Mr. Hagen. Oh, yeah. Uh, that I have ever seen. <laughs> Oh, Reflector Mage. That's a really good one in this. Yeah, Mason. Mason picking yeah. up some of these very good tempo cards. Just, just trying to to sort of defend defend his spot. Yeah. You know, lock up lock up the board and then take things over with counter magic. And Cody picks up the Triome. Interesting. What okay. Does he want the white for? Yeah. Or does he just want a fetchable duel? That could be too. Unmask another solid. So we we may then Jeff may be audibling into Reanimator here. I think that Jeff is more interested in reanimating his uh, inverter than he uh, is basically fair, anything yeah. else. Yeah, and he's just using these reanimator tools yeah. to further his existing combo deck. So Lily of the Veil vale was a card that Mark and I were discussing during Pack One, and it was basically we think it's incredibly powerful in this format, and that Sam's deck it would make a lot of sense in. Yes, because it does literally everything the deck wants to do. It applies the squeeze from the discard. 
uh, when you have fewer aggro decks that are more like I want one to two creatures out here, like Dan's list, like Brandon's list, mm-hmm. uh, that sack is a lot more relevant. Uh, you know, it seems like against Cody, Blyden, Brandon, and Dan, that's a pretty good card to have. Extremely, especially especially if Dan is picking up some of the more the more hard to kill uh, uh, infect threats. Yeah. Um, and of course, we've got Dan picking up blossoming defense. Uh, just just keeping his eye out for some of that removal. Now, yeah. we, we are still missing some of the more classic uh, pieces of white removal in this draft, right? Yeah. I don't think we've seen Path. We yeah. haven't seen Path. We, we haven't, haven't seen, seen Prismatic ending. ending, right? And we haven't seen March. Yeah. Uh, March, I expected to go very highly. Um, and as, you know, in the steering committee chat, I was saying I wanted to draft like a black-white taxes list. Yes. Because basically Sam's list, uh, kind of half of it, because I think March of Otherworldly Light might actually be one of the best cards from Neon Dynasty for this format, even over Boseju. I think so too. I, th- I mean, I don't know if I'd put it over Boseju. I think that's a that's a hot take, but I mean, yeah, sure. I like I like a hot take. Yeah. Don't get me wrong, but I I, I do think that uh, that that March of Otherworldly Light is one of the more powerful cards because you are you are just going to have those some of those niche white cards rotting in your hand some of the time. Yeah, you know, yep. you don't you don't you don't need that abolish or whatever it is. You no. can throw it away and just just save a little mana and sometimes that's all you need to get ahead on board. Yeah. And and especially the fact that it is not just creatures, that it can hit your problem walker. Yes. It can hit your problem enchantment. If somebody drops moat, like honestly, I would love to see Mason pick up moat. Yes. We may see that, yeah. What there's no Deck right. that beats both. You can, it's it's pretty <laughs> tough on this board. I mean, uh, you Ink know, Moth gets through it, and Amrakul gets through it. Yeah, and there's there's very little in the way of hate for Moat right now as yeah. well. Yeah, that's the other thing. You know, we have uh, unexpectedly absent Vanishing Verse Fracture from yep. Sam. In addition to Swords, Sam honestly has the and there's a disenchant. And picking up yeah. the disenchant, I like that. Yeah. That's uh, a good pickup. Just yeah. just the classics. Yep. I also like Questing Beast a lot, especially this late for yes. Swiss. Uh, Notion Thief, of course. Hall Breacher went round two, so Blyden was just shut off the list completely. Yeah. Um, which Brandon quickly audibled out of. Yeah, look, so. we're hearing chat another four drop for the Alluren deck. Yes, yeah, Andrew looking to, looking to top out at four with the uh, yeah. with, with the Rector, of course, but Questing Beast, another sweet value creature, just something yeah. in case the, the Rector plan doesn't work out. Well, we can beat down with this enormous text box. Yes. Uh, which has power and toughness equal to the <laughs> every three lines of text, uh, just that many divided by three. Yeah, every, every time and every time you read it, it gets more powerful. Yeah, those exactly. Are, those are just the rules. Uh, also, I here's here's a question. I think Elder Gargaroth is better than Questing Beast in this format. Thoughts? Hmm. I think so. In, in a this, vacuum, yeah. I, I think the big thing for me in this format is that five is so much more mana than four. That's fair, yeah. Five is a lot more mana yeah. than four, so I hesitate to say that... That's that, fair. That, uh, the, the other thing about Questing Beast is it has haste, which Gargaroth lacks. True. Right. Yeah. Gargaroth, you know, comes, sure, it comes down, it's a 6-6, six, six, it's very big, and if your opponent does, is is so foolish as to attack into it, you know, you block, you get value immediately, yeah. right? But the the unlocking of immediate value upon playing the card is contingent upon your opponent taking an action that's fair, that yeah. they shouldn't take into yeah. Elder Garkaroth. and that's what makes me think that Questing Beast is a superior that's card fair. Yeah. because in the, like I've played a lot of like I've played some some decks in this format that were let's say uh, not <laughs> not not great and yeah. the common thread among all of those decks is that they weren't proactive enough that's fair yeah. And yeah, and I, I think this is... There we go. Ah, Worm, Worm Coil. Coil Engine for Cody. So where's the Welder? That's oh. got to be coming soon, right? I Yeah, I look and forward to... And the Sundering to... Titan? Cody Get... has a lot of room to run here in terms of just yeah. big artifact nonsense. I think we're probably abandoning the Breach plan and just yeah. going all in on, you know... Artifacts. Does, does he have shop yet? Is, has he shop does not have shop. shop. Okay. Shop has not been taken. Well, he can get that for free later, I yeah, guess. Yeah, Fairy Conclave has been taken now, but Workshop has not. <laughs> I mean, of course, Fairy Conclave, fantastic in the world of Standstill, right? Yeah. Oh, Hex Drinker, I like that yes. a lot right now. Brandon just building up an uninteractable threat protection yeah. from everything. Yep. I really like that. Curious to see what the wheel pick is here because it seems like. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, protection often from everything. 
often uh, Brandon's Brandon's pick have picks have sort of a theme when he's when he's yeah. on the wheel. He'll, yeah. he'll take two two great tastes that taste great together. And Hex Drinker and Mike Pistons Lattice are okay. not that, but no, he does have not. the Karn. Yeah, and he does need the Lattice eventually. Yes, yes, Luca. It is in fact your one stop shop for all artifact <laughs> shenanigans. Uh, Cody's deck. That's the one. Which. Yep. One of Hagen's favorites, Prismari Command, in there as well. Ooh, I'm surprised yes. we haven't seen Iteration. Oh, yeah. Expressive Iteration still out there. I, I, I had been coming in today talking about the idea that someone was going to try to replicate uh, Dom Harvey's deck from the his Blue Red Spells deck from the Discord draft. Yeah. And I initially thought that that person was going to be Mason. And I, I think that... It was he, either Mason or Dan for me. Yeah. And, and Mason, Mason clearly thought about it and decided he was going to go a different direction. Yeah. Okay, so Hercules to me says the breach plan may still be alive because here's an extra copy of Paradoxical. That's confusing to me. Yes. I, I don't know that the breach plan can survive this level of dilution. I don't think it can. Yeah. Is uh, this a, are we seeing, are we seeing Cody drafting a transformational sideboard plan? I, that's what I was wondering if it was just, and I said that when Peter was in here, is that maybe what it is? And there's a Bajuka Bog from Sam. Like that pick, like that I pick. I like that a lot. I, I just, just to just to wind that up, I would not put transformational sideboard past Cody. That's something he's very oh, capable of. <laughs> Gloom Shrieker. Let's go ahead and put Gloom Shrieker on the board. No, we didn't mean Gloom. We Edgar didn't Claw mean Gloom. I oh. promise we mean this new card from Neo. Oh, yep. Um, the old... Yeah. It's... it's uh, Another Renegade Rallier, it, so eternal, it's more redundance. Eternal Witness, too, the yeah. secret, sequel to Eternal Witness. Of course, uh, three oh, costs, yeah. trying to uh, trying to avoid Timeless Witness on four, I'm sure. Yeah. But Gloom Shrieker exiling itself on death, a little bit of a downside for yeah. the uh, deck that wants to play out of the graveyard here. Inker Claw Mirror, just, a, just another classic uh, Infect card. Yep. Wazotep Plating. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> So Alec just trying to protect himself because yep. he doesn't really have permanence. <laughs> yeah, basically. Yeah. He, he has some walkers, and he has a bunch of enchantments. That's true. He has the enchantments, uh, and of course, Talarian wins. Just, uh, just, just here from the old days of Dredge. Yeah. And a plague mirror. All, right, all aboard the mirror choo-choo train. Yeah. I uh, okay. This this is interesting. I I guess that adds to the Jace plan. Yes. If we want to go that route. Yes. Uh, LED is in Cody's list. It I would believe. have to be right because he's got Lion's the, Eye yeah. Diamond in the tenth round. Yeah, he's he's got the uh, the Underworld Breach. So yeah. so by 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 the same token, he's got to have LED. And if he still intends to fulfill that particular prophecy, he's going to need to pick up Box Opal at some point. Yes. Cavern Harpy for Swifty, a classic Alluring yeah. piece. So that we were mentioning that during Pack Two, that Cavern Harpy. Would he go for the combo engine, or would he go for the value pod engine? We can now see. Obviously, we're going for the cavern harpy combo win. Yeah, we're looking so. for we're looking for combos with, you know, Aluren, and yeah. and we've already got the the two card combo of Aluren and a Sarah Rack, yep. and we're looking to assemble some more now. Yeah, just go ahead and go go infinite here. Yep, I like that. Yeah. Uh, I'll be curious to see if he picks up, like, Essence Warden or something just to kind of counteract the life loss so that he can get the extra redundancy and value if he needs to. Not that he necessarily would, but... Right. Uh, with the with the Baleful Strix and the Cavern Harpy, you can draw quite a few cards. Exactly, That's, yeah. that's certainly the, the first yeah. stop for that particular combination. Yeah. Gloom Shrieker, you can get some some arbitrary number of cards back from your, from yeah. your deck, or from your graveyard, rather. I suppose that's probably the reason for Gloom Shrieker is that it has that that it cross pollination with Harpy. Oh, Soar in the Mirthless. Wow. Okay. Over Lord of Innistrad. I I, <laughs> I love Sorens in this format. Though. Oh yeah, they, they do it all. They do. They do a lot of work. No, I, I promise. I I meant Soar in the Mirthless. There we go. Right. This is of course a four mana Soren. Let's you do Dark Confidant. Makes a vampire light hawk, yep. uh, <laughs> and maybe maybe deals thirteen damage eventually yeah. someday. So sort of a, a cross. It's this this is this is a card that's about flexibility for Sam, yeah. right? This yeah. is if I need creatures, I can make creatures. If I need cards, I can go get I cards. I can get cards exactly. Uh, modal, love yep. it. 
I, I would love to see like a collective brutality out of that list. I think we're we're likely to see collective brutality out of either Sam or Blyden. Yeah. Um, my guess is that, that collective brutality is somewhere still on uh, Blyden's priority list, yeah. but he's picking up the uh, everyone's we'll favorite ten dollar uncommon yeah. talisman of dominance. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I got to get that in there somewhere. Yeah, for sure. My my hashtag EDH grapes. <laughs> I gotta find something to rage about or I'm off brand. That's true. It is the raging Levine for a reason. What that reason is, no one really knows. Yeah. But <laughs> oh, Mason. doing it. Yes. Mason staking his claim. He says, I don't care what you pick, Cody. I'm taking it away. Taverns. This must be a joke. We must be we Are we serious? Maybe we are serious. We're serious. I, I really do mean caverns. Ca Tavern scoundrel. Come on now. Oh, there we go. There it is. So this is this is the. <laughs> are we going to see a Clark slum out of Cody in a second here? No. <laughs> uh, I would. Mm, no. We might. We oh might. My God. <laughs> Yeah, memory lapse in 38. Yeah. That is insane. Wild to get memory lapse pushed down here so far. Yeah. We haven't seen remand either. And we have yeah. some of these these combo decks that are looking for that kind of effect. Glenn Lark, Lark Mage. Mage. Yep. Good pickup. Frenetic. <laughs> <laughs> now, Frenetic are free. For those of you unfamiliar for your reserve with your reserve Ooh. list cards, let me just go ahead and show you this piece of nonsense. What? So... Frenetic Freed allows you to flip literally as many coins as you want in contrast to Frenetic Sliver, uh, which, which does sort of stop if Frenetic if re, if Sliver isn't in play. Frenetic Freed, you can just say, I'm going to flip 2 billion coins with Frenetic Freed. Yep. I'm going to hold priority to activate this. Yep. And that allows Cody to create basically as many, effectively create as many treasures as he wants as long as the opponent accepts that probability is real. Yeah. <laughs> So that's going to be a lot of fun with Tavern Scoundrel. That's a, that's, I, I thought we were going to get Kirk's thumb. Instead, we got something a little Way more better. deterministic. <laughs> yeah. uh, Mana Maze is an interesting choice here. It's one of Blyden's favorite cards I know from EDH. Yes, this is a, uh, a, a card that he came over to me and Mark, and he said, just so you know, I'm not going to draft it soon, but I am going to draft yeah. Mana Maze. Yeah. <laughs> uh, getting Endurance finally from Swifty as well is... Yep. Expected. Uh, also, an Alluren piece. Yes. Three mana. Solid solid Alluren pickup. Just a, a good card overall. Allows him to interact with the graveyard decks in the format. People like Blyden, uh, who might be might be trying to put, put, put things in their, you know, leave their library in their graveyard. Yeah. Sorry about that. Can't be doing that. Endurance also protects him if Alec does decide to mail him. Yep. Oh, there we have the high tide. Oh, really? Uh, so we are in round 38, so there are eight more picks, Levi. Eight left. Yeah, we are we are getting very close to the end of this draft here, and this is... There's our subtlety. Okay, yep, finally we get... Uh, so now we have... That's all five of those, yeah, of those that, elements. That right? five, we drafted yeah. all five of them. That's yep. fantastic. Ground swell. Ah, uh, sorry to hear you O2 dropped. Playing but some. hey, that means you're watching this more. Sorry, the 1K <laughs> didn't go well. Time for Margs and Mexican. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds nice. Yeah. It's a good plan. We, we, we got Budweiser and Mimosas. That's that's the way to do it. Yep. Living Wish. Interesting. Andrew did okay. mention that he might pick up Living Wish just so that he can play a little bit more out of out of his sideboard yeah. with, with some sweet one-ofs. Vindicate. Really no. In... In terms of vindicate, right? Your options, your, your options for that slaughter, vindicate and anguished on making, right? Yeah, anguished on like making the upside of the instant, yeah. the downside of not hitting lands, and I yeah. do think vindicate is the better choice for that reason. Yeah, I agree, especially in this format where the one you only hit one of the land, mm -hmm. and two the lands are so much more impactful because yes. being able to destroy a Talarian Academy, being able to destroy a workshop, being able to destroy a Phyrexian Tower yes. against the you know, pod player that wants to sacrifice <laughs> Rector uh, is pretty good. It, there we go. 
All right, we finally got expressive iteration expressive for Cody. It's got to be the latest that's ever been taken, right? Yeah, that's. Uh, let's take a look at where that usually comes. Usually around around twenty five. Okay, okay yeah. so it may not be the latest ever, but it is still pretty late. Pretty late for yeah. such a powerful card. Now, it does really only go in one type of deck, though. Yeah. You have to be blue and red, which most people aren't. Yeah, unless you're a Zelensky, which off brand today. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> It well, happens. Zelensky running back, changing changing his plan, running back VRD too. You know, and, sometimes yeah. that's what you have to do. And he won that VRD. He so. did, yeah. Uh, and here's a disrupting shoal from Mason. I love that card. It's a fantastic pickup here. Uh, especially this late when there's a fight over, you know, we got, we still have Remand. Yeah. Uh, but I think if anyone's taking Remand, it's probably going to be Mason because he's the tempo list. He might take Remand. Uh, somebody like Cody might take Remand to yeah. try to protect their combo a little bit. That's true, yeah. Uh, probably not Swifty, although he could cast it. Yeah. Uh, it, it is somewhat interesting to me that Mason is taking this when he doesn't have a very diverse curve. That's a good Everything's point. three or four. Yeah, we have we have a lot of threes, a lot of fours. Uh, a couple of twos, but not a whole lot. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's just very interesting to me. And there's our first Painland. Okay, the all right. Coast. The Painland Council is pleased. We've yeah. beaten, We've beaten the... The uh, pathways today. Yeah. Yep, we have. Oh, and city. There we city go. City of traders going before ancient tomb once yes. again. Yeah. <laughs> in, in a fast bond deck, it makes sense, I yeah. guess. Yeah. But it's still bizarre to me that ancient tomb has not gone, and neither has workshop in the artifact deck. We're calling the shot. Are you taking workshop here, Cody? Please take workshop. <laughs> <laughs> Does Brandon have crucible or Ramanap? He has crucible. Okay, and strip mine. Right, I didn't. Yeah. I, 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 I think I must have missed his crucible pick. Okay. Yeah, it slipped by me too, but then it wasn't nearly as late as the last VRD. <laughs> you got it in pack two, which was <laughs> wild. It was clear that nobody was paying attention. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So I just got to wait. <laughs> uh, uh, I am interesting to see what Sam does equipment wise because so far we just have Cauldra complete. Okay. I We're going to need at least one, maybe two two more. I really like Sword of Fire and Ice here. Yes. Uh, because of what the other decks are. Right. Uh, and that deck outside of, and there's a Back to Basics from Cody. Love it. Uh, Stealing that from Mason, most likely, as well. Yeah. Uh, Stifle, okay. Yep. Uh, Outside of Bob, she doesn't have a whole lot of draw and advantage until she took that sword. Right. Yeah. There's there's very little that 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 sort of slowly tips the scales in her favor card yeah. advantage wise, which is a lot of what that deck wants exactly. to do once it's established a board presence. Yeah. Right. Climb pathway. Oh, interesting. Now I would have absolutely taken uh, caves. Caves here. Yeah. Caves. One thousand percent caves. If not uh, silent clearing. Either. Yeah. Yeah. Silent clearing would be another one that I'd be fine with. But right climb pathway does yeah. does what it needs to do. Yeah, it pro probably will not hurt too much. And of and course, we we can't keep all the cards in our heads in one time. Yeah. There's the parasitic strix. Yep. So now we have the full on alluring combo as mm -hmm. well as just a pod value engine, which I think are two of the strategies that you can like. Not that he's diluted alluring at all, but just no. by not having four ofs, it is a little bit diluted. I think having both of those strategies, they are close enough and there is enough overlap that having both of them in the same deck diluted is not a bad spot to be in. Yeah, and I think that one of one of the things about about VRD is that a lot of these times when you have this these very one dimensional combo decks, you're going to lose Oh, she does have spell. Oh yeah, she does have spell. You're right, Winder. Yeah, she does. Goes very well with the bitter blossom. Yeah, good it does. good point. Touche. But one of the things about a one-dimensional combo deck in VRD is that if you get locked out of that one dimension, what are you going to do? You don't have four ofs. You can't yeah. you can't go find that thing again if it got exiled. Yeah. So having sort of the living end style plan B of, okay, well, I'm just going to play creatures and beat you up with them, sure. is often enough to beat other yeah. players. It is. Uh, Alec is, is looking to do the same thing with his copy of Hall of Storm Giants there if things yeah. go poorly for him on the mill plan. Grab so it. we have hybridization, Pongify number two, and <laughs> reality shift. Interesting. I like it. I like it. The re reality shift, of course, uh, exiling, which is a, is is very nice. Um, yeah. I doubt he'll go full Raven form, but uh, no. <laughs> there's the veteran explorer. All yes. right, veteran explorer. Yes, let's take a look at that. One of my favorite cards. Just something that really. No, I did not mean veteran motorist. Yeah, 
No one has ever drafted Veteran Explorer? Until now. Until today. Uh, who was Alex's worst friend that won VRD? <laughs> Lives in Chicago now. Name escapes me. Um, uh, Naveen? Yes, Naveen. Yes. Okay, so one of my favorite magic memories, I was talking about this last night at the bar with Brandon and Peter. Mm-hmm. Naveen was, of course, ooh, I like Waker a lot. That's a here. good pickup. Yeah. Uh, Naveen was on Nick Fit. And I am on, oh, he did it. <laughs> he did it, Stifle. He did it. Oh, my God, he did it. Wow. Uh, he was on Nick Fit, and I was on Grixis Delver. His turn one is Pedal Tower, Veteran Explorer. Yep. Cabal Therapy, Veteran Explorer, Grave Titan. Wow. And he was like, do you want to go to game two? I'm like, no, are you kidding? I want to watch this happen. <laughs> this is amazing. Do this to me. <laughs> yeah. Please. I had a similar moment the the other night playing Modern, where I was yeah. playing. Uh, uh, it turned out to be a friend of a friend that I, I did not know was there, but uh, he he was playing an eighty card Yorion uh, uh, Martyr of Sands list, yeah, nice, uh, which was really cool. But uh, I ended up having to pop Living End just to stay alive. Yeah. But at the same time, it br- it brought back like Solitude and Sun Titan and oh, all of this no. and that. He was like. He was like, "Yeah, you're, you're, that resolves. Do, do do I get to play?" I was like, "Yes, please. Yeah. I want. I you deserve to get to do yes. your thing. I'm not going to yeah. concede until un, until you're attacking me. No, you you get to win this game. <laughs> I will give you that satisfaction because it was it was it was just so much fun to watch yeah. him do his thing. A because he was really enjoying it, and B it was really cool. Yeah, uh, I am kind of interested to see if Sam does pick up like a Black Vice or a Shrieking Affliction here because there is mm. so much." perpetual discard in the list now. There is. I think it would be hard to justify that just yeah. because, like you said, she's lacking some of that that positive card advantage yeah. for herself. Fable of Mirror Breaker. Yes. Are we are we gonna slide Splinter Twin into this list? Are are we doing it? There's a pe- Mason didn't take Pestermite yet. No, yeah, there's there's no Pestermite. There there's not even uh the one for either, right? Yeah. We don't have uh, Deceiver Exarch. Deceiver Exarch, thank you. Yeah, I didn't see no, last no night villi- apparently. <laughs> <laughs> no, no village bell ringer either for, oh, the, well, for yeah. the super EDH <laughs> redundancy. If you're, if you're really going for it, yeah. right? Well, I see in Blood Pot, I have to. I don't play blue. Oh yeah, you have to. So, you have so to play so my CEDH twin win is Village Bell Ringer Kiki, or one of my favorites. Splinter to in sharpshooter. Ooh, yes. <laughs> With the next one out. Just make infinite sharpshooters and you know, kill a token and then yeah. kill your opponent. Just just kill kill the opponent. It works it works every time. Vapor snag. Nice. Another yeah. another sweet tempo card. Yep. Mason just very willing to accept that extra point of life. Yes! Oh, the crab wheel. Yep. Brandon doing yep. it. We got there. We got he he says he's calling the deck soft shell crab. <laughs> so, yeah, vapor snag boomerang, which I have to assume, you know, looking at Mason's list, obviously he's going to be bouncing his own stuff most of the time. He just has so much ETB value there that it's just oh, Lazav the multifarious. Yeah, Cody. Cody said he was going to get Kappa. So yeah, he he's gonna he's gonna go off with Blastoise here, yep. and that that's uh, that gives you a if you don't have anything to do with your infinite mana from uh, yep. Tyrant's Count or Phonetica Freight, well you yep. have a very large number of Kappa Cannoneer triggers, and yep. you can attack, and they're not blocking. Nope. Ward four might as well be hexproof. Yeah, especially in this format. Yep. Uh, yeah, no, that's now the Tavern Scoundrel makes sense. Yeah, yeah, it all, all, right. it, all it, yeah. it all came together. It's, you know, that's it's a very Cody deck. It is very. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that is Neon Dynasty Commander is what that is from, Luca. Yep. Uh, okay, so ZP, yep. one, of, one of my favorite sweepers in those colors. Uh, could, we, could we get Lazav up real quick? Oh, yeah, definitely. That's a great idea. The keyboard is very hard to type on. It's yes, it way is. too ergonomic for it me. It is. I need the carpal tunnel keyboard or I just can't exist. Yeah, exactly. My hands are already destroyed. Yeah. Mutagenic growth. Yep. Yeah, Lazav does go with Dreadnought. Yes, uh, a fantastic piece with this, Dreadnought. This is also one of Blyden's pet cards. Uh, he's been championing this card since it came out. 
Yeah, yeah and uh, he's he's another one of our players who is is going to draft their their own type of deck, right? Yep. You're not going to catch them adapting adapting necessarily. They've got a couple of decks in mind they want to draft. They're going to draft one of them, and that's just going to be it. Yep. Nice to see Lazav here. Yeah, turning turning directly into Phyrexian Dreadnought. One of the more hilarious things you can do. Yeah. Uh, mutagenic growth, of course. We still haven't seen Tamiyo's safekeeping, which I kind of expect to see out of the Infect player. Yes. Although, it, it is interesting to me. A lot of these decks, I don't see sideboard cards yet. Yeah, no, we're we're very low on, on sideboard action here. We have a lot of players doing that thing that we talk about a lot where people are overdrafting their main deck. Yep. And I'm concerned that that... So that's definitely happening to Cody. Oh, yeah. Um, Unless it's a transformational sideboard, yeah, unless, which seems yes. not great. Mason is definitely all main. Right. I don't know what goes in the in the board for him. Brandon, it's hard to know. Uh, <laughs> it is Brandon. Swifty uh, definitely can just shove some of those creatures in his sideboard. Yeah, he has Living Wish, which living makes wish. it real easy. Uh, Alec, I don't know. Court of yeah. Cunning, there's the blue one. Right. Yeah. Uh, Dan, maybe if he audibles off the Walker plan... And brings that in the board. I don't really know, though. I uh, yeah, it's it's hard to say. Uh, I think I think what happened is a lot of our players got kind of pushed off their plan yeah. early in the draft. Yeah, and uh, that they've really suffered for that. That their their sideboards are going to suffer for that, and so we're going to see we're going to see some of these combo decks go off uncontested today. Yeah, which for combo fans, very That's exciting. Great. Ooh, I love Destiny Spin. That's a great pickup. Make your creatures uncounterable. Yeah. Little, a little, uh, not, not, not much of a win condition, but uh, it, as far as it's, as, it's an extra chance. pod kind of right because yes. you're not gonna, you have to counter the pod. You don't get to interact with it. I love Ophiomancer. Speaking of advantage, yep, that is a really no. The only anti mill card we've seen is Emrakul out of Brandon. Yep, uh, we have two other players have Leyline and Voidwalker. Uh, we might see, I mean, if you're trying to stop yourself from being milled, I'm sure we can still see a guy as Blessing if people are concerned about I that. I almost thought Swifty would have grabbed it at this point. He might. Um, he, he may still pick 46 guy as Blessing at this at this yeah. juncture here. Mindlink Mech yes. is one of the most Zelensky family picks I have ever seen. <laughs> this is a fantastic card from, uh, from Neo here. Obviously yeah. never been drafted, but... Uh, it becomes becomes a copy of the creature that crewed it this turn, as long as that creature is not legendary, of course. Mm -hmm. um, so we get, you get a 4-3 flying uh, Glistener Elf yep. or whatever, because it's got crew one. Yeah. Tail's End. Yeah. I, I don't think that's been drafted before, has it? Let's check in on Tail's End. Seems like blyden has been playing some historic brawl or something. I know, Tales right? End. Yeah. yeah, has never been played. Okay. <laughs> why why not Trickbind? Trickbind seems oh, I guess because it counters a legendary spell. Yeah. Being being able yeah. to hit a legendary spell is is very nice. There's there's a couple of little pieces of splash damage yeah. that uh I agree, Common. That is legitimately probably the best piece of tech Infect has gotten since prior to like Might of Old Crosa. Yeah, Might of In Mike's terms of good. how impactful it is on the archetype. Um I mean, Co Cody has transformational board. Yep. I think he's the only one that I really see. I guess I could see Sam with, like, a containment priest in the sideboard, a disenchant. There's some options there. Yes, yes. Uh, Sam's got a couple sideboard cards. Yeah. She, she acquitted herself well in that department. She's got a couple cards that are, are just, you know, you're not going to play them in the main deck, but they're still very powerful. Yeah. Uh, and could still pick up cards like Fragmentize, Abolish, yep. that sort of thing. Yeah. Though abolish less valuable outside of the more mono white list, probably yeah. cards, probably something like fragmentize or lucky offering, yeah, um, something in that nature. Psych rift out of the artifact deck makes sense. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, Cody's Cody's capable of generating quite a bit of mana. Yeah. Uh, interestingly, we haven't seen like he got grim monolith. We don't have power artifact. Yep. Basalt monolith. Yep. Uh, we don't have a Thran dynamo. We've only seen one signet taken. Yes. And one talisman. Yeah, we're very light on these these mana artifacts. Yeah. People are not looking to do artifact ramp today. No. A dark art wastes for Mason. The Painlands Council approves. Two to one, Painlands to uh to Pathways. We're yeah. winning. Yeah. That's the important thing. We just need to end up ahead today. If we can do that, we're 
golden. If I can win this prop bet against myself, I'll be yeah. very happy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, it is. It is interesting to see like the very low number of hate cards, just because mo- most of the hate was focused on counterpicking each other earlier. Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> the, the, the two and a half, three people, four people on the same deck really, I think, did. You're right interfere a lot with those sideboard cards because you wasted five picks on this deck that you're now audibling away from and that's ooh i love nimble instructionist cycle stifle yes uh it makes it very difficult then for you to actually draft a sideboard which as i've been discussing you know one of my strategies for this is basically what are the four to five cards i'm going to be contested on i want to aggressively draft those and then yep. draft whatever else I want whenever I want. Right, you're going to you're going to draft those far above their valuation. Yeah. Because you know that other players are going to want them. And if I was on the black white taxes list, what I'd said was I was going to, you know, in the first 5 rounds, I was going to grab, you know, my Moxin, my Stone Forge, stuff like that that I know can side into other decks yep. and then just not care cuz the nice thing about like grabbing Stone Forge as well, last draft somebody hate picked Cauldra complete yeah. And it was like, I honestly, maybe I'm wrong. I don't like Calder Complete a lot in this format. I think Calder I think Complete Batter is Skull's fine. better. It, I think it depends on the, the mix of decks that you're facing, Fair, yeah. right? I think in I think today I want Calder Complete. True. But, but last draft where there were a lot more people trying to attack you to death, I yeah. wanted Batter I Skull. I wanted Batter right? Skull. Yeah. And, it, and I always want a sword or something that generates advantage. I want Jit in an aggro yeah. meta. And a combo meta, I want Sword. Yes. Because it's an extra clock plus card advantage for me, which is something that I'm lacking and I need. Exactly. And G- so. I, I, having played Jite in in my list, I will say that card, I mean, it's, I don't want to say it overperformed because yeah. that's not the case, right? It was as good as Jite is supposed to be, but it's it's still it's still that card. Yeah, it <laughs> is it is still that good, it turns out. And <laughs> please don't ever come back to modern as much yeah. as I would love to see you. No, no thanks. Yeah. Um, um I I, I've spent enough of my life trapped inside the GTA play pattern. Yeah. And I'm good. Given given that I'm used to playing GTA as removal for GTA back in the day, yeah. right? Right. <laughs> uh, Hallowed Moonlight. Moonlight. Really? I love it. Oh. I accidentally a letter. And here comes Hallowed Moonlight. Theoretically a card that almost certainly has never been drafted because what <laughs> yeah exactly what yeah so so this is this is a real serious uh, sideboard yeah, card this for is me, definitely so. sideboard here which okay good yeah i you got it don't um, you know don't don't tinker things out you know don't uh there's yeah. there's some shenanigans that are shut off here some persist related shenanigans graph digger's cage okay intuition yep. okay are we going to see Urza's Saga for Cody at some point here? I don't know if it'll get drafted at this rate. That's terrifying. Mind-boggling, right? Paladin, Paladin class, class is such a good draft. I said that's the one that I could see played <laughs> more than any of the other classes in VRG. Thank you, Sam, for proving me right. What a good pickup. Yeah. This card is fantastic. Especially this late? Yeah. Ooh. The tax effect is just so nasty for people who are trying to play counter spells at yeah. her. There's Oaf. There's yep. a sideboard pick. Yeah, I I love that spell. Yeah, so, so it looks like much. yeah, people have finally gotten into the zone of sideboard cards. Yeah. Blyden, except for Blyden, who's taking intuition. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't. Gem I, Ray- Gem Razor. Yes, this is a fantastic infect card. Yeah, it is. Mutate, yeah. Mutate a mechanic that I, in the last twenty four hours, said a lot of mean things about for various <laughs> reasons. <laughs> if you're watching and you heard me say those things, yes, I'm doubling down. <laughs> <laughs> They're not watching. Yeah. <laughs> but gem rays are a fantastic card. You know, mutate, mutate that. Give, give the, uh, give the four four body to your one one infect creature. Yeah. Adds Gives trample. trample, yeah. Secret reach occasionally relevant against somebody like Mason, right? Yeah. Brain Geyser, interesting. Oh, taking Brain Geyser. He can pay. The, he doesn't. He doesn't care about double blue. That's fine. He doesn't. It's not a mistake to take that over Stroke. 
No. I still yeah. like Stroke more, but... You know. I mean, I like Stroke of Genius more just because it's Stroke of Genius. Exactly. <laughs> and, and Judge Promo. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it's got And it's got great art, too. Yeah. I have a... I have a a signed Brain Geyser proof somewhere. Oh, nice. I'm trying to remember when I got that, but it's sweet. It looks sweet. Always happy to see the big brains. And uh, since Overwhelming Intellect's not going to get played in this format, this is no. the biggest brain you can oh, find. Oh, no, we're oh. going for Mind Spring, actually. Changing his mind does not want to get hit by misdirection out of yeah. Mason's deck. Says, you know what? I'm the one who wants to draw the cards. Mind Spring, Prosperity, let's go. Where's Cadaverous Bloom? Don't be a coward, do oh it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> you can't, you can't even With the part. last two picks. Yeah. Just get Pros Bloom out here. Cadaverous Bloom, uh, 10 Cities of Brass. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Am I allowed to draft 10 Cities of Brass in one pick? Is that one Please? of those cards? We Oh, that's an interesting point. We have not seen a single person take advantage of the... Uh, Persistent petitioners. The petitioners or Snowlands or anything like that. So Swifty asked, he did ask to reaffirm what the snow rule was. Right. Uh, and obviously he has Ice Fang Coatl. So yes. presumably he has to pick a snow at some point. I think that's kind of where we're getting. He, he may. I mean, the the thing with the Coatl, right, is it's another card that just is strict, Bay of Baleful Strix, yeah. goes well with uh, Cavern Harpy, draws, draws you a card, the Zagoth Triome. So we, we now have as many Triomes as we do Pain Lands, as we do Pathways. <laughs> we're, we're two for two for two. And we, we saw a couple of the, uh, we saw Fiery Islet and um, the, the, the Blue Green. Yeah. Uh, waterlogged. Waterlogged Grove, Grove. Yeah. yeah. We saw those earlier, so there's some of those floating around out there. Um, but none I'm of I'm kind the, of surprised Sam hasn't picked up isolated, not isolated, chat, silent clearing. Silent clearing, yeah. I think we may see silent clearing from her in the next few picks yeah. here. Uh, oh, okay, okay. All right. A little instant speed nastiness. Yeah. Just make a bunch of one ones. I like that. There's 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 a number of decks that can't really deal with that effectively. No. Nobody has a, any kind of sweeper. Well, and it goes really well with her Zealous Persecution pick. Sure does. Yeah, and the Kaya, exactly. It, yep. it synergizes really well with her list. Yeah, that's a very powerful pickup. Drowned Catacomb for Blyden. So we're getting the check land before the pathway or the pain land. What is wrong with you, Blyden? You know better. <laughs> I'll accept the check land over the pathway, but not That's, over the pain. Yeah, land. not over the pain. Give land. me underground river. That will always come in untapped. Yeah. <laughs> Could even draft. You know, have, we haven't dipped into the uh, the battle lands at all, really? Have we? No, I don't we think. have not. Once upon a time, that one makes me very happy. Always happy to see somebody savvy like Dan handling Once Upon a Time. That means we're not going to see it cast at the wrong time, most yeah. likely. And there's the Mopal. Oh, yeah, Cody. Again, this is so interesting because we feel like he's drafted this diluted list, but he's got this ability to stay so disciplined and just not pick these cards that he doesn't need to pick until the very, very end. Yeah. Mason. Mason. And golf the shore from Mason. Sorry, guys, there is an issue with the spreadsheet. We cannot show you the bottom on Unfortunately, but we can link the spreadsheet in the chat. Just a oh. uh, bank spread or bank spreadsheet. You're good to go. Oh gosh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. yep. Um, I can probably fix that on the fly. Probably. Or I can break everything. We'll find out together. It'll we be will. fun. Uh, it's gonna be fun. No, no, no. Click the lock. I gotta unlock the source, right? There you go. And now I want to do this. There we go. Perfect. All right, so you're gonna have to you're gonna have to believe us that the about the the people at the top here. We'll 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 say their names yeah. to you. We've lost their names, but we can see these last couple of picks, and that's gonna have to be a stroke from Brandon. So there is a stroke there. Okay. He does care about the double blow. Yes, yes, that is that is a much more difficult target to hit for Brandon. So, stroke of genius makes sense. Can't really cast. Something like Mind Spring. Death or... Rite Shaman. Okay, and this is a card we talked about very early today yeah. as something that was not really as powerful as something like a Hierarch. Yeah. But in Brandon's deck in particular, 
can work can much be better. Good, yeah. Because of course you're restricted to just one of a fetch land or this or that or the yeah. other thing, but uh, but Brandon's got plenty of lands to hurl in the graveyard. Yeah. And things to do. And he has a lot of mill, so he'll be able to yeah. have that. Uh, back to what you were saying about Cody. Yeah, he's he has this kind of diluted plan, but he is. He's waiting till the last possible moment to take these cards. Yeah, Divine Visitation would be hysterical. That would be so funny. I would love to see secu- Divine Visitation secure the waste. waste. Just yeah. like, hey, here's all my four for me. Good luck. Yeah. You know, and I've, of course, that's something that I've encountered in Commander, but not something oh, yeah. that I ever expect to see in, in VRD. So yeah. if I can get a if I can get a photo of that happening today, I'll be you know, or or, or better yet, hey, see it see it happen see on a feature happen. match. Yeah. That'd then be, we're golden. Still want to see Thought Cast from Cody. So yeah, Thought Cast, something like Thought Monitor. Forsake the Worldly. Of course, we see, we're see we seeing a cycling disenchant here. And Time Spiral from not the High Tide player, but he is an Urza player. Yes, yes. So, so. Urza Time Spiral making some sense. Kind of incredible that, that Cody has managed to float Time yeah. Spiral this late. <laughs> that is one of Blyton's favorite cards. Blyton yes. loves that card. That That is literally... Anyone that knows Blyden, correct me if I'm wrong. That is the most Blyden pick of this entire draft. And that's a very appropriate card for this list. It is. Because it's, it's demonic it's consultation on a stick, right? Yeah. It's that, that same that same type of effect. Yeah. You know, he can just... And it gives him a body. Yeah, he can he can just go ahead and, and discard a card. And, you know, name Brushwag, remove, yeah. his t- remove his whole library from the game. Yep. Contamination out of Sam, I really like. Mm-hmm. Uh, Corridor Monitor, there's the Persistent Petitioners from Dan. Oh my gosh, Mark's taking it from Alec. Yep. I bet Mark is uh, very, yeah. very excited to see this multi, yeah. multi-card multi object being picked 45th. Yes. I'm sure he's not unhappy at all. Yeah. Uh, Corridor Monitor, of course, allows you to, to, to pot and pot again. Yep. Sam, keep, Sam take Contamination? <laughs> yeah. I love that pick. That's so good. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it goes great with... Bitter Blossom. Goes great with Secure the Way, yeah. Bitter Blossom, many, Ophiomancer, there's yeah, a lot of good options there. There's tons of good options there. Flood of Recollection and Telepathy. So Alec has been talking about Telepathy for like a month now, about isn't this card great? I'm like, yeah, Alec, it's, it's one blue and you get to see what your opponent's doing. That sounds wonderful. That is, <laughs> I, I, I look forward to all of us finding out together whether or not telepathy is good. I suspect I know the answer to this question. <laughs> yeah. However. I would love to be proven wrong. I'm open to surprises. Uh, yes. I, 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 I love, I love being, being proven wrong because it means I learned something. Yes. I do not think I will learn anything today. <laughs> no. <laughs> Sorceress Sight. Is this not Sorceress Sight? What is Sorceress Sight? Yeah, I, I don't... Fibblethip, I like that a lot for the pod deck. Sorcerer, oh, it's Peak. It's Peak 2, oh, the sequel okay. to Peak yep. from Portal. Yep. Okay. Uh, <laughs> that's great art. Yeah, that is. <laughs> that is horrifying. And we don't know how to spell Fibblethip. No, that's, that's okay. okay. Need, nobody knows how to spell Fibblethip. It's gonna. That's, that's gotta be the first time this card's been taken, right? Yes. One person knows how to spell Fibblethip. It's the second time yep. Fibblethip is Usually in around 45. Oh, no, we're pulling its average oh, down. No. The Lotus score is going to go down to yep. 0.1. Yep. Yeah, they figured, Wandering Winder, it is indeed FBLTHP. Some of us some yep. of us got it on the first try. That's okay. That's that's why that's why we're commentating. They're they're playing the game because I spend I spend my brain space. Yes, it happened. Scepter chant. I said it was happening yes. and it happened. Yes. <laughs> I love scepter chant. Oh. oh man, that is amazing. As as an old school scepter chant griefer, yep. I really appreciate oh, yeah. this. Yeah. I used I used to play decks that just like you know, in casual that just in high school that just like couldn't really win games yeah. except by making you run out of cards in your library with you know. Scepter Chant and uh, like Spike Weaver right. and just adding counters to Spike Weaver with Dragon's Blood. Just you can't do anything. No Force of Vigor the entire draft. Ooh, and no Abrupt Decay. Yeah, the entire draft. No Assassin's Trophy the entire draft. We didn't really have that is wild. Yeah, we didn't really have someone in Golgari who wanted to draft spells. Right, that's true. Yeah. We had Swifty who wanted to pick up just a couple of pieces of disruption yeah. and then really focus on that combo. Sigh. 
I like that in that list. That's a really lot. good. Yeah. That's really good. You know, it lets you lets you draw your deck when you go off with infinite treasures as yep. well. That's very good. Yeah, we, I mean, we could theoretically see Force of Vigor out of Brandon, but we're not going to see it out of Mason. No. No Ancient Tomb. Yeah, no Ancient Tomb. No Wasteland. No Workshop, no Wasteland. Although Wasteland, as we've discussed, Wasteland is not nearly as powerful in this yes. format as it is in others. Strip Mine is great. Yeah. Wasteland is fine. Yeah, we, and fine, exactly. Murktide region. There yep. we go. But Finally waiting. got the Murktide. Yeah, I mean, we saw the uh, Thought Scour out of Mason much yeah. earlier. Yeah. I, I said that was the signal that yeah. we were going to see Murktide out of Mason. Yeah. Mason savvily floating that card until the end, the very end of the draft. And now let's see. Miss, Mr. Irrelevant or Mrs. Irrelevant. Yeah, the, what, what are we going to get? The last pick of the draft. <laughs> Brandon's, Brandon's going to, he's just going to pick Altar of the Brood. Yeah. I'm calling it now. It's Altar of the Brood. With the last pick of VRD 11, <laughs> the Brandon Currys select <laughs> Altar of the Brood? It's almost certainly. I, Altar of the Brood's parents are jumping up and down on Zoom yeah, right now. Just, just waiting for this to happen. <laughs> I I don't know. I I don't know what I'm going to do if he doesn't pick Altar of the Brood. There's got to be something. I, like, I would say I'll eat my hat, but I didn't bring a hat today. You can, I mean... I. I brought a hat, but please don't. I'm eat not it. eating your AEW hat <laughs> again. That is the superior product, I need, so I would never consume it. I'm going to Dynamite in Boston oh, next week. Yeah. I need it. There you go. Yep. <laughs> yeah, he has altar. I could eat three chili dogs, Dale, but we saw what happened to you after you ate two. I have to be dogs. in a confined space <laughs> with, with you yeah, <laughs> for please. a lot of today. <laughs> no chili dogs. <laughs> Oh, man. Brandon's really tanking on this. He knows that his reputation is made or broken on this this one pick. <laughs> Coward. I'll take that. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. This 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 is it. Brandon's, Brandon's really, really giving it to us on this one. Yeah. The Ruthless Ripper does, in fact, know no fear. Yes. Now, see, Dan, Dan has the right idea with this, looking at your opponent's hand thing, right? He's yeah. got peak, he's got Sorcerer's Sight. He Dan draws cards off. Draw it. a card. Yeah. Also see your hand, I guess, right? Mason has Gitaxi in Pro. I would love you or Ari. Oh. Uh, I love that card. That card's I, really cool. That card's so good. <laughs> I know everyone's like, it's not that good in the VRD chat, but I'm like, no, this card's awesome. I don't think it's very good, but especially not in Brandon's deck. I don't yeah, think it does no, anything, no. but I think it's sweet. Yeah. I, I, I right. absolutely want to play this. Brandon? <laughs> we know what you're taking. Just take it. Brandon, we know what it is. We know what it is, buddy. He, he said he might not actually draft it, and I called him out. I'm like, you're going to draft it. You're going to draft it. You got 46 picks. You don't and, need all of them. And I am going to be embarrassed if I am the reason that he doesn't draft it here. Oh, he drafted a robot instead. He's he's in the drift with Shorikai. He said he did. He was not going to draft Mech Titan Core. Oh, we nope. went for Genesis Wave. What? All right. Well, this is the card that we're getting instead of Alter, Alter of the, the Brood, Brood, folks. I... We're getting Genesis Wave. I mean, I guess he has Channel, right? Sure. This is a card that actually does something. So does Alter of the Brood. I mean, <laughs> sure, yes, nominally. <laughs> Altar of the Brood looks real sick with the uh, Kappa Cannoneer combo. It does, yes. Yeah, with the Oh, with you want to put a bunch of permanents into play, yeah. huh? Oh, well, why don't you mill your whole deck? Yep. Hope you can kill me. The oh, you did Wasteland, okay. what are you doing? What are you doing? Yeah, he needs GG We're changing GG it. for Channel Wave, that's what true. What is going on? Hey, uh, it's up to you guys, or whoever, to make the ruling. I, I just blanked on the card that I'm which is Wasteland, and I put in Genesis Wave. Yeah. So you decide which... Sounds like you picked Altar of the Brood. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I honestly leave it up to you guys. Wasteland's fine. Wasteland, Wasteland, is, Wasteland, fine. Is, fine. Wasteland, Wasteland is fine. Wasteland is fine. There's no... You yeah. didn't get any and nothing yeah. matters. <laughs> well, we, we literally gave him the out of choosing Altar of the Brood when he came in. There we was tried. some discrepancy. He couldn't think of the card, so he put Genesis Wave, and was like, wait, no. I meant this. And we said... I said, you picked Altar of the Brood. Yeah. And he said, no. All right, it's Wasteland. Fine. It's fine. fine. It's Wasteland. It's okay, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, Winder, he does have Yavimaya, which does help. Him. Yeah. So now that we are done here. Yes. What looks like your favorite deck, not necessarily the best? Okay, my favorite deck? Swifty. 
easily Swifty, right? This this exactly. this alluring combo. Yeah. I love a Sararak. I love you know the Malira stuff. I love all of the different ways to win that Andrew has shoehorned into this list. And I think that he's got you know he's got decent mana. He's got a good a good engine. Um, the one thing that he's missing is you know some of the sideboard stuff. Yeah. But I think that his main deck speaks for itself, and he's got uh, the Living Wish, which helps a little, and the Boseju that he can play in the main yeah. deck that really shores up some of that. Um, I think that's my favorite. What about you? So, if there were one card more in mm-hmm. Sam's list, Sam's would be my favorite. I love Sam's list. It's oh, it's very similar cool. to what I was going to draft. Uh, Suture Priest. Oh yes. As a sideboard piece for Swifty's deck. Yeah. Having Suture Priest means you have to deal with this before you can go off, so you have to find Murderous Redcap. Yeah, that's a fantastic piece of, of, of prevention. Yeah. Is just to say, here's another permanent that you have to deal with before you win. But I love that Sam got all the premium removal. Yep. Sam, excuse me, has the balance of her Nord plan. Yep. Sam has <laughs> an incredible value engine in contamination and... A ton of token generators. Uh, who do we want to interview? That's a great question. Um, we are. You're doing this interview. You haven't done an interview. I did one interview. Oh, you did. Okay. Um, so let's find out who Reptar wants to interview. Then, yeah, Mark. Uh, since Reptar will be doing the interview, yes. since I have, we have both done one already. Yeah, let's let Reptar talk to talk to one of these fine folks. Yeah, I I like I actually I'll take that back. I do like Sam's list the best because it has a lot of modality to it. Yes, there's a lot of versatility to everything. She has a clear cut sideboard plan, more or less. There's a and couple the f- of very cool packages. We've got the the, the Una's Black Guard package that I really like. Yeah. Uh, and just having access to, you know, all of those effects. And honestly, she's not very... That list is not very dependent on having Luris out. No. On having its Pearl out. It has Demonic Tutor. It doesn't need Demonic Tutor. It's so dense in terms of these are the things that I do yep. that it doesn't really matter that much. Uh, the one thing that's kind of counterintuitive is the Stoneforge package with Luris. Yes, you cannot run Calder complete with Loris. I mean, we all, we also have cards like Opposition Agent, True, right? Yeah, yeah. I think I think we at some point with Cth- Opposition Agent, <coughs> pardon me, Thalia Heretic, Cathar, yeah. etc. We priced our, Rankle. We priced ourselves out of playing Loris yeah. as the companion. But I think Loris is a perfectly Fine defensible card in the deck. forty. Yeah, right. It is incredibly good, and it's it's uh, a card that you you know, if you want to sideboard down and get there, you can do that. Yeah. All right, we are going to go to break real quick while we get our interviewer and interviewee in here. We will be right back. All right, everybody. You got we've got Mason in the room. Let me apparently we didn't update our little slides. I'll do that real quick while we're here. So, the first question I want to know is, 
was your deck that you drafted what you had thought you would come into today mm. ending with? Yeah, well, I mean, so I had a lot of different plans uh, in the last couple of these. I've been in seat five, and I think I've determined that when you're in those like middling seats, you want to mm. just play something very, very left field that you don't really have to fight with too many other people over. Yep. Um, so, like, I had some, like, different tribal strategies. I know uh, on the Discord we've been talking about, I played, like, a goofy, uh, goblins deck a little okay. while ago. Uh, that was kind of sweet, so I thought about running back a similar, uh, thing to that. Mm-hmm. Um, and I had a couple different decks. Honestly, I had some different plans for, like, the 6, 7, 8 slot. Yes. Uh, where you get two pieces of fast mana. Mm-hmm. And I really wanted to go, like, double fast mana and a Mox Opal third pick, and obviously Mox Opal didn't get picked until the very end. Yeah, but, uh, the reason you do get that is because you you get the, the return, the, the backdraft. Right, right, right. right. Yeah. Um, so, like, you know, I, obviously I got second pick where I got Recall, which is great. It's just kind of boring because Recall's so good, and there are so yes. many good blue cards. You can just keep taking good blue cards forever. Yep. It know? does exactly what it's meant to do. We, we talked about also, you, you got Time Walk, and when we were talking about that originally, Time Walk is an interesting card because at a minimum, it's a two-mana explore. Right. Kind yep. of at the ceiling, mm-hmm. it is a game-ending spell because you don't have this, but you could Tinker, Blight Steel, Time Walk, and right. the game on the yep. spot. Right? Yep. Or um, and and honestly, I wanted to use it. Um, I really wanted to do some like blue-red spells, tempo stuff, mm-hmm. but between... Uh, Alec starting with Ruby and then taking blue cards and then mm-hmm. Cody directly next to me just slamming like Tinker, Urza, and then Ragavan, yes. which didn't make a lot of sense to me, but I was like, oh yeah, because you want to tinker the treasure away, I guess. Well, that's, we mused about <laughs> that, that Ragavan just makes treasures, so it works mm-hmm. with both Tinker and Urza because you don't have to sacrifice the treasures. You can just tap them for blue so they become a perennial mana source for that deck. Yeah, that's that's fair. That, I personally, I probably wouldn't be that high on Ragavan in my like underworld breach storm blue well, red the other fact th- combo deck. Yeah, right at the beginning of the draft, though, though we don't have anybody immediately that is on red. You are the closest player at the start of the draft that could mm-hmm. branch out into red. So we weren't sure if that pick was yeah, let's tinker away a treasure token or just make some perennial mana sources or steal one of the best red aggressive creatures from yeah. somebody else to put in yeah. maybe put in my deck. And mm-hmm. When we were watching your draft, we were there's so much value in let's see Mystic Sanctuary up through like Venser, right? So up through pick fifteen, there's just so much value. At sixteen, yeah. Thought Scar, we thought maybe we'd see Merktide Regent mm-hmm. out of your deck. Uh, right. That was a pick that was for me a little quizzical because we had so many mill players. Nobody took that, and I thought at that point, okay, mm-hmm. this signals a tempo deck. Yep. And Eric thought. Well, yes, but could also be Regent, right? So, which is a much more... it's like, could be less a tempo deck and maybe just a control deck that ends up killing your opponent with a large Regent. Sure. Yeah, um, you know, I wanted... I, I There were other color combos that I wanted to go into, so I wanted to go into blue-green mm-hmm. and do some, like, Vile Command where you've got, like, Eternal Witness and Aether Vile. You're rebuying your cryptic commands yes. and you're rebuying your Mystic Sanctuaries and you're kind of cycling through your spells. But obviously we had someone picking up the blue-green color fixing. Mm -hmm. Same thing goes with the blue-red sort of tempo aggro, you know, heavy spells, turn through, play a bunch of cantrips. Yes. Trigger your Deathrite Shaman or your uh, Dragon Rage Channelers and Prowess creatures. Mm -hmm. Uh, But then, you know, Cody kind of stole away some of the blue-red fixing. And at that point it's like, okay, well, then I guess I'm just going to keep taking down the line. Uh, Eventually, uh, Murktide Regent was a little tricky because, A, I've got... Um, Treasure Cruise, Snapcaster Mage, uh, so I've and you know like Mystic Sanctuary, those things. So yep. I'm I'm kind of wanting to use my graveyard to do some of those things. I don't want to want to delve away my entire graveyard every <laughs> single turn. Um, however, I think in a lot of my post board games where I have where I have more sort of pointed answers, mm-hmm. that I'll be able to use Murktide Regent as a big you know hammer finisher. Yep, it doesn't really play as well. It with the rest of my deck as far as, like, the Aether Vial and everything goes. Correct. Um, the Aether Vial and the... The Aether Vial is really more of a concession to the fact that, like, there are multiple players trying to play, like, a lot of counter spells. Yep. Uh, which I didn't even have a ton of counter spells. The other blue players really wanted to snap off on a lot more of them than I did. Yeah, you have a, a ton of value here in your kind of uh, tempo slots. And 
in, in all honesty, it was very interesting to see what, what was going to happen. We originally thought there was going to be fair. We just getting the giant pizza on stream. The yeah, Brontosaurus. Yeah, every time, the Pornosaurus. That's that's a big <laughs> pizza pie. <laughs> My God, he literally can't fit it through the door. Yeah. He's got to turn no. it to the side. Yeah, I wish... If the camera Slide wasn't effectively out. bolted to this monitor, we would show you the 45 degree angle these two pizzas are leaving the like room. Like moving a couch yeah. in here. Yes. My God. It, it was, I actually think it brought up the temperature of the room. It did. You, not only can you feel the pizza, oh my God. you can smell it. The the one interesting piece about, about Raging, you said coming out of the sideboard, is that you could also play a longer game, at which point your treasure cruise just kind of synergizes with the Regent, provided you drop the Regent first, because there's mm -hmm. that extra clause on Regent for people who haven't seen it, which is whenever a card leave, uh, leaves your graveyard, you put counters yeah, on it, right? Yeah, You know, this draft is a weird one. And and looking at what your decks are going to look like post-board, so we've got, like, number one, you've got Brandon, who's playing, like, the... I would describe his deck as sort of, like, a mid-range deck with mm -hmm. sort of a combo element to it. It's like a lands combo mid-range deck. Yes. And then Cody's got, like, a sort of artifact combo deck, but it still looks a lot like sort of just a mid-range deck. Mm -hmm. Jeff's got a mid-range reanimator deck. Yep. The punchline here is that, like, as you go down the list, like, almost everything is like, well, kind of this, but mostly it's just like a mid range deck. Yes. So I was very happy with, like, my Archmage's Charm and my Cryptic Commands and, like, all these, like, draw card counterspell type things. And then I was just worried about, like, okay, well, what about, like, Alec is going to try to counter every single spell I put? Let me try to figure something out for that. Mm -hmm. Uh,. Or like uh, what Swifty is trying to like interact with the graveyard, though not a lot of people are doing that. Let me maybe try to find something that I can do, you know, in that matchup. So uh, honestly, I think most of my cards are pretty versatile, and most of my cards are pretty flexible. Yeah. And I'll just have to figure out what the sort of exact right combination is for for each of my opponents. Yeah. But for the most part, this draft came out like really, really grindy and mid rangey. So mm -hmm. I wanted to make sure I at least had some kind of a mid rangey plan, like with Riptide Lab. That would really go along and grind yeah. really hard for my opponents. And we weren't sure which direction things were going to go because we have Snapcaster, we have Venser, we have V Click and Spell Strutter, Spell Stutter Sprite above Riptide Lab, as well as Spell Queller. And that, as I just straight shot on stream, that's a spirit. But everything else that you picked up to that point mm -hmm. really works well at Riptide Lab. So it was kind of curious where exactly you were going to go with the Cavern of Souls. Yeah, I think the Naming Wizard is fairly I, safe, and I think like. There are some times where maybe I'll want to name something else. Yes. Yeah. Like, maybe I'll need to name, like, Dragon or, you know, Spirit or whatever. Yeah. But I think for the most part, naming Wizard will be safe enough. Exactly. And that's kind of, like, where we settled. We were, we got to wax poetic with Chad about the extended Wizards deck and, like, where Snapcaster yeah, and, like, yeah. that kind of deck. When we talked about, you know, how Fairies isn't really Fairies anymore. It's just Spellstrider right. Sprite, V-Click, and Bitter Blossom. That's <laughs> the thing. Yeah, I thought about actually picking Fairy Seer. Uh, as the one drop, but I was kind of thinking it might be a little too low impact. Yeah, I, I like it for the sort of tempo plan where you're playing a one drop and then you're like ninjing it back to your hand. You're playing standstill on turn two, whatever. Yes. Um, I think Thirsty correctly called Jason correctly called that you were going to have standstill at one point, and it didn't even like click with me that standstill was an option when you picked factory and then wield mutavault in my mind. I was like, why would you pick factory and not mutavault? And then it was just the back to backs, and then I was like, oh yeah. Because standstill is going to happen, and you want as many uh, low mana value activation creature lands. So there's right. a sea fairy conclave in the list later mm -hmm. on. Yeah, I honestly, I think I wouldn't describe standstill as like a a super great card that you should like really have on your radar. I kind of think it's like a fun card to play with, and like I'm trying to do something funny with like an aether vial and stuff. Yes, but then uh, Brandon <laughs> tried to pick it like pick thirty six or whatever. And uh -oh. he's like, standstill, and Jeff's like. Nope, Mason already picked that one. Uh, and I was like, what? Excuse yeah. me? I don't think anyone picked that card. So the fact that he was trying to snap it off is pretty yeah. funny. I, I really think liked that. I, I, was out, I was out there sleeving cards, and I think the only card that really put a puzzle look on my face is is this one, Engulf in, in mm. the Shore. So this one is a little bit... I'm I'm a little worried about my matchup against Sam and Swifty. Yes. I feel like I might need something to help me deal with the number of creatures they're going to put on the board if I can't sort okay. of counter them as they go. Yep. Um, I'm not 100% sold that Engulf the Shore was the correct pick. I was kind of down to the end of the draft, and I'm, like, falling asleep because I was up at 4 a.m. to drive here this morning. Mm -hmm. But uh, I thought this would be okay. Uh, also, it can bounce a bunch of my own creatures back to my hand, which is fine, I yes. think. Yes, yeah, you reset. Um, I'm a little worried that I took too many non-island lands, but we'll see. Okay, um, I, yeah. I, 
I think I'm still going to have like 12 islands in my deck or something. So Engulf, I think, should probably be fine. Okay. Yeah, it, it, it speaks to a longer game plan because you have the Cryptic Command loop with Mystic Sanctuary. So you could essentially keep tapping the team down, but if they come out too fast, you need yeah. something to do in a Gulf of Shores mm -hmm. kind of... No pun intended. Sure, is that up? A <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, yeah it's going to be kind of tricky. Uh, on the one hand, I want to get some creatures down early. I want to, you know, attack and try to tempo my opponents out. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, I'm not so sold that I'll be able to do that every game. Yep. And with the number of counter spells that I have, I don't have a ton of just like the two mana, you know, counter target spell spells. Yes. Um. So I'm like a little worried. I'm like, you know, I'm definitely going to have to. I'm definitely gonna have to try to figure out how to grind my way into those into those mid games. Okay, yeah, and in, Spell Seeker does help a little bit with that too because mm -hmm. it, you can go fish for a lot of what you got going on. Yeah, I mean, fishing for recall is great. Yeah, casting recall a couple times and casting a treasure cruise or something should be yeah should probably be good enough. Yes. I'm hoping that's good enough against a lot of yeah. my opponents. The the last question that I have is because I saw this happen in real time and I was like, "There's no way we do this." Like Venser Shaper Savant. I had uh -huh. to verify that was Creature uh -huh. Venser. And then the next thing I said was, are we going to get Karakas shenanigans? And Eric <laughs> kind of, yeah. I think that was the first break, and Eric was like, I don't know. And then you picked Karakas. Mm -hmm. And at that point in time, we didn't have, I don't know if we, we still might not have Leovold. We didn't really have a lot of great targets mm. for Karakas. So. Yeah, not a lot of my opponents are playing a lot of the things that Karakas are, are su is typically super good against. Which, I think I, I picked Karakas somewhat early. Like, I think before I yeah, yeah, before pick 20. I kind of assumed a few more legendary creatures would come out, but like I said, it's a weird draft. I don't think, you know, I don't even know if Jeff is trying to reanimate Gristlebrand. Is yeah. he trying to reanimate little shitters? I think it's just the little ones. Yeah, just little weird little weird duders, which is fine. I mean, I'll, I'll bounce all my own Okay, stuff we say little mind. weird things, then we have Phyrexian Dreadnought. So, you know. Which is a type of little weird thing. Yes. Really. Based on mana value, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. I, I yeah. saw sleeving cards. I, I wasn't looking at what sleeves I was putting things in. But I saw, I, I put Dress Down in a sleeve and put it in a mm -hmm. pile. And then we printed out Phyrexian and Dreadnought. And somebody's like, Dreadnought? And I was, we've never had that before. It's like nobody's Hell played Stifle Knot yeah. or Illusionary Mask. And then I remembered Dress Down just went by. Mm -hmm. But they're in two different. Yeah. Um, so I actually just did a VRD with some friends of mine uh, back in Chicago. And I drafted a Phyrexian Dreadnought Stifle Dress Down uh, Uro. Because okay. you can stifle the Sacrifice Dream Uro. Right, right, yeah. Which is kind of sick. And then uh, I was playing Scroll. Uh, Scroll of Fate, mm -hmm. which is you manifest cards from your hand face down. So you can manifest the Dreadnought, flip it over, it over for one mana, and then you know beat your opponent down with it. Yeah. Same goes with Uro, flip it over for three mana, attack. Yep. So I actually think that's a really sick package. I think that combination of cards is really strong together, and mm -hmm. I, I want to mess around with it more. The deck that I played, I had like Ephemerate and some different elementals, right. stuff like that, like little goofy stuff to do like yes. that. And it ultimately wasn't a very good deck. I just It didn't come together. But mm -hmm. I think that package of cards, if you can figure out where it sort of slots in, should be really strong. I, I really like Dress Down and it, some of the interactions that Jeff's got going on. Yeah. I, I, if him and Dan could have crossed their decks up a little that's, bit. <laughs> somewhere after the first break, I think we got to a point where it's just like, we have two, two or three really good decks that are trying to do the same thing, so if we could just combine mm -hmm. those decks, we would have some like amazing... Oh. like. Yeah, and let me just... I don't mean to cut you no. off, but this is outrageous. Okay, so like we've got Alex and Jeff... Fighting over Thassa's Oracle combo. Only one of them can have Thassa's Oracle, okay? And it wasn't Alec. So why the f fuck would he ever be picking inverter combo cards? That's insane. Splinter Twin is still open. Second, Alex over here talking about like, oh yeah, people don't fight over cards enough in these drafts. It's like, no, obviously they do because no one's drafting red, no one's drafting white, no one's drafting green. Like... Over and over and over again in all these drafts. I just wanted to play tiny little dumb creatures yep. and beat everybody to death with them, and I got second pick, so I get the yeah, you know you, the recall. Fine. I'll take I'll take that yeah, bullet. Your while your path was unclear to us, it once we look at the finished product, yeah. we see exactly what you want to do. Yeah. Similarly with Sam. We, but we did a, I, I understood what Sam was going to do fairly early because mm -hmm. like I, I keep saying on this cast, uh, like on mic and off, like having played Legacy and Vintage for so long. I know Dead Guy L when I see Dead Guy L. Sure. Yeah. And you know what? I respect that. And Sam's pretty new to this format. I think this is her third draft. So yeah. I, I appreciate that. But everyone else should understand that, like, Stoneforge Mystic and Thalia should be getting picked early, like within the first five picks of the draft. And mm -hmm. someone should be doing it every draft. Same goes with uh, all the tiny red creatures. Like, Cody 
if he wanted to play Ragavan and these these dorky creatures, he, he I mean, you don't have to put yourself into this awkward blue red combo deck. We'll see if he does well today. Maybe he. Will. I'm very I'll curious. My words, but I guarantee you, he would have done equally well if he just jammed a bunch of red creatures yeah. and like stole Lutri away from me and fire blasted Lutri into people's faces or something. Like, yeah. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Or, That's or so pop, strong. Yeah. Pop Lutri or something mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. I think the the lack of a red deck definitely shifted the way this draft panned out because you didn't also like you don't have to worry about drafting chill and you don't have to worry about trying to stave off the incremental burn from mm -hmm. the red deck so it also allows people who are playing blue to really lean in on stuff like that the white player doesn't need core firewalker or what have you to, to get away from the red deck yeah i just i think people get a little too narrow in the types of decks that they want to try to explore mm -hmm. in, in this format specifically like there are so many decks in Magic, and, uh, you know, like, I decided to go with this, like, uh, fairy ninja still thing. Yep. But, like, there are a million different ways you can play, you know, tiny, good blue card deck. Yeah. And there are also a million different ways you can play. Everyone always winds up falling into these, like, weird mid-range blue decks, which is fine, but, like, there are so many good decks out there. There's so many good so decks. Many good, I think one of the interesting parts about this is people think about old magic, legacy, vintage CEDH, and a lot of what powers those formats is blue. But when you actually take a look at things like power cubes that are small at 360 to 540, you actually see green have very good representation because there's so much that green does that people either forget about or just don't see or exactly. don't acknowledge. Exactly. Like, one mana mana creatures are like one of the most powerful things magic has going for it. Yep. And it's super consistent. You can get a million of them. Why doesn't Armageddon get played? Why does no one play Ravages of War? Why is no one playing... Why is no one like first picking Thalia? It's one of the best colored spells in the game. Yeah. It's absurd. So, you know, I would say like... I wish I was in one of the six through eight spots and I could have mm -hmm. gotten Mox Mox because I would have loved to play Affinity. That's uh, the deck. Like a, like the, a... the artifact deck generally exists in those spots, which is something I'm surprised I didn't see today. We do see Kappa Cannoneer, which is the card that I thought actually wouldn't go in Urza. I thought mm. that would be in the mm -hmm. artifact slot later on in the draft because yeah. you, know, you just get to pick up... I don't want to call it the chaff, but mm -hmm. there's so many artifacts you can pick up in that slot yeah. because while other people are arguing and fighting over colored mm -hmm. spells, you just fall into artifacts. And granted, Brandon walked away with Walking Ballista. Mm -hmm. That's not the card you need in that spot with Kappa Cannoneer because Walking Ballista, Sacrifice... Right. Sorry. Uh, Hangerback Walker sacrificing to Arcbound Ravager mm -hmm. puts a lot yeah. of thought for They just the made play. a new Arcbound Worker, uh, which you can use. No, like uh, City of Traders, Ancient Tomb, Mox Opal, all went super late in this mm -hmm. draft. You can pick up. You can use your first ten picks just picking up like random one up because you're playing a five color deck. Yep. You can take Mana Confluence and City of Brass, and you can take Spell Pierce and Thoughtseize, whatever, and you can draft all these like goofy colored spells. And then when you get down to the meat of it, all your stuff is just one and two mana artifacts. Yeah, it's super super good. Super, Absolutely, super strong. that's what the deck that I would have loved to play okay. today. All right. Um. So last, last question yeah. before I let you go, though. Okay. Uh, Hit me. So. Is there any card besides the lands from mm -hmm. Kamigawa Neon Dynasty that mm -hmm. you expected today that didn't get picked? For instance, yeah. we don't have Lion Sash in here. We don't yeah. have the Uncommon yeah. Kappa Cannoneer from the main set. We don't yeah. have um, Umazawa who gives creatures in your hand ninjutsu. Nobody wanted to ninjutsu an Emrakul or a Blightsteel. Yeah. Um, I honestly would have expected someone to pick the Blue Black Ninja Planeswalker. Um, oh, I think just the planes. That, I think that card's actually decent. Okay, me, um, it me. also just seems like a card Kaito. people would play. Okay. Iko. Kaito oh, Kaito. Yeah, Kaito I actually think this card's pretty decent. I've seen it in in some spots, and I think it it's a little tough because it's a little mid rangey, mm -hmm. and people don't generally think of their decks as very mid rangey in this format. Even though a lot of them, wind a lot up of them turned that, out to be mid rangey. Yeah, even though they wind up being that way a lot. Okay. Um, Kaito is not I, a card I had on my list, so I'm. I'm interested to hear that. Yeah, I also think the... Um, I mean, there were a bunch of cards that probably should have gotten picked today that didn't. Did, did oh, Swifty absolutely. pick Guy's Cradle? Uh, no, yeah. I don't. Yeah. yeah, go figure. Like, stuff like that. Just... Um, also, I, I know they talked about it, but uh, that Black Red Hidetsuku Consumes All. That yes. card seems pretty cool. Yes, that's a, another I card I had on my uh, list because that card just reads Destroy All the Power on the Board and then Exile yeah. All the Power on the Board. Yeah, the second... Tick being exile all graveyards seems pretty easy. Yeah, so this, yeah. this is Kaito. So it's got a passive at the beginning of your end step. If it entered the battlefield this turn, mm -hmm. Kaito phases out. So you can plus a draw card, then discard a card. Unless you attack this turn, you can minus to create a, a blue 
ninja mm -hmm. that can't be I, blocked. I actually like this card quite a bit, but I, you have to really sort of pay attention to what you're doing with your drawing and your discarding yep. and your... I mean, it makes really shitty creature tokens, so you need yes. to figure out what you're actually going to do with them. And the obvious one would be use ninjutsu cards, mm -hmm. but the blue-black ninja lord that came out uh, in whatever modern... Modern Masters 2 or Modern Horizons oh, 2, yeah. where whenever you hit with a ninja, you get to draw a card. Yep. That card's super good, should get played, probably, mm. but, you know, obviously it's kind of tough to find a spot for it. Um, I know sometimes people play the blue-black creature deck, like the blue-black, like, beatdown deck. Yep. And I think that deck's very good, um, but in this draft, instead, we had black-white and, like, an infect deck. Okay. Mm. And Jeff, who is in the like blue black beat down deck, but he wanted to go inverter of truth combo instead of just the. That's pure, the deck I actually expected to be the blue black punching. beat down deck. I mm -hmm. thought it, I expected a little more creature based from that deck. So mm -hmm. yeah, I and I think you could use Kaito. Like you could have used Kaito to like power out a Murktide Regent or something. Mm -hmm. um, you know, all the cards you're getting off of your factor fiction, your intuition, your Kaito, whatever, mm -hmm. and then you just okay. bang, smack bang. people with a big uh, Murktide Regent and finish yeah. them off. Right. So yeah, thank you for the uh, thank you for the chat. No problem. Thanks for coming in and talking about oh, yeah. the format in general. I'm about to win all my matches in a row. You want to see? Yeah, <laughs> please. Really all right, yeah, we do have match one coming up shortly. I have been Hell informed. Yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Can you get my tumbler? I'm literally gonna win every single match. Today. Yeah. Can you let Mark know we're, we're ready? What's up? I was telling Mason. Thanks for coming back. I'm glad you're next to me for matches because I. Having all the information is great. I am a great player when I have all the information. <laughs> but when I don't, not so much. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to have a lot of fun today. I'm very excited to see this first uh, this first match coming up. Uh, we've got Cody Owen versus Andrew Swift. Uh, so we've got the Battle of Artifacts versus Alluren. Should so be very interesting. Let's see if they're set up if we go over I the gameplay. I believe they are. Let's go over the gameplay. Here 